파이팅! KT 롤스 파이팅! 예! 예! 파이팅! 파이팅! 와! 대원 파이팅! 성영 파이팅! 대원 파이팅! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, LCK Spring 2024. I'm Atlas. I am joined today by Chronicler as we dive into our very first telecom war of the year. Didn't have to wait very long. Absolutely fantastic that we get it in week two. We also have another match happening today, but that's not what we're going to be focusing on right now. We'll get to that when we get to it. We have to get through this first. This is going to be... A, game, a, a match of League of Legends. I have no idea what to expect. Uh, I flipped a coin, uh, landed on heads. Um, that means KT should win, but they got a tails against Quandong, so... But if I'm, if I'm following you, Atlas, and, and I know you're a big... A uh, dangerous KT, move, uh, yes. <laughs> aficionado. A dangerous move, certainly, but uh, every KT fan knows that the match against Quandong, the loss, it doesn't mean anything. Because every KT match stands on its own, and I'm just happy that the KT versus T1 rivalry really is alive again. I feel like yeah. there were a couple of years where, you know, we talked about it, but it was it was there, kind of. But right now, uh, particularly after last year, it is back. That series in the playoffs, uh, the lower bracket finals, KT versus T1, probably my favorite LCK series of the year. Absolute oh, yeah. insanity. And right now, for T1, the opportunity, T1 strength of schedule is insane. Uh, the first weeks are, are filled with Genji, KT, and Hanwha. So taking a win here would be a really, really big swing up for them. Absolutely. Of course, uh, T1 had a pretty busy offseason. They also did that winning Worlds thing, which meant they were playing until the very end of the year. You can understand if they're going to take a bit of a slower start uh, coming out of the gate. Uh, but first Telecom War of 2024, and this means a lot because this was hearkening back to the decisions made by KT deciding that perhaps T1 was the best choice. And perhaps the butterfly effect flow on from that is what you see on the right here, which is a world championship victory. Um, prior to that, though, there were three of the players on KT that won. Also, if we remember back when KT was on, uh, when Deft was on KT, sorry, uh, the last time, that was 2018. And the Telecom War that year was boring. Do you know why? T1 wasn't very good. So maybe there can be a few things that KT can bring together from this particular roster and use it to make a battle here in this Telecom War. Because if we saw anything in the Quandong series, we saw maybe KT aren't necessarily as good as we perhaps thought after week one. <laughs> imagine, uh, you know, imagining KT in the first place. Some of us could go there. Uh, me personally, not so much, but some of us yeah. uh, on the LCK. Oh, some of us, uh, Rookie yeah. Perfect versus God Zeus. Zeus finally ascended in 2023. Uh, was at times already looking like one of the best top laners in the world, but at that tournament, undisputed. Because he dealt with everyone oh, <laughs> that yeah. reasonably could be expected. Perfect has really been embodying the spirit of KT. I think a couple of really, really <laughs> high highs. Yeah. And then also some games where you're like, oh, oh, oh man. But within the same series, and I think that always bodes well when the player is able to bounce back. And on a roster like this, there's going to be some games that you're supposed to win that you're not. Yeah, that uh, absolutely happened, of course, against D-plus. That was a whirlwind of a series, probably one of the better ones that we've had so far this year, and we may not even get better. Um, the fact that it happened so early is kind of annoying because the sample size was so low, and I normally like low sample sizes. Yoshik with a big grin on his face as we do welcome KT to Low Park first off. Some serious faces uh, at the back end, though. Yoshik obviously is never serious. Um, him and Peanut, the junglers that just uh, constantly smiling, but you can see BDD, he's ready to get down to business here, and Deft and Beryl, a very similar story. And perhaps the biggest surprise for me in looking and, and evaluating this KT roster is that, is that Beryl genuinely looks good. You know, there's none of the, none of the, the, the meme. he has just been good. His picks have been great. Yeah. He's been able to showcase a couple of new strategies. Uh, we won't talk about the pike. Maybe okay. we'll leave that out. Okay, leave out the pike. Yeah, okay, okay. we're going to do a little bit of nick. But even <laughs> that, I think th that that used to be a thing for Barrel always. But overall, he has been super consistent, which is something we haven't really been able to say of this player. On the other hand, we have T1 uh, took a loss yep. against Genji. What you going to do? 
Yeah, not a lot. Um, of course, we've seen that Genji has only gone from better to better. Uh, seeing them yesterday against Bro, a um, little bit of a victory lap. Uh, let's be honest, Bro aren't exactly in the best position right now, but that team definitely looks like the one to contend with so far this spring, unless T1 demonstrates otherwise, because we could be looking for round two, waiting to see that Genji versus T1 match once again, because it could be just a big old ramp up here for T1, who have been outspoken, saying they're going to take it slow. They're not going to put too much pressure on their players at the beginning of spring. It's going to be when we move towards those playoffs, which they're almost guaranteed to get to off pure player skill alone. Um, let's be honest. They can pick a few Belveth AD Cannon uh, Zia compositions. If they yeah, play, that's, you know? that's the real giveaway is, is these stats are with T1 also facing off against Gen G <laughs> yeah. and, and, and losing the series. And Zeus in particular. Uh, and these stats for Perfect are with a 2-1 scoreline. Yeah. Um, um, he just really has been struggling um, there towards the top side. However, he's been good enough to be allowed to be carried by the titans that are around him. And, and when evaluating new players, it always comes down to, uh, would you rather get a, a player that comes in and is, performs very consistently, or a player that with enough practice can really hit the high highs? And we've already seen Perfect hit the highs, right? We have that play with the Gnar where he yeah. just went, absolutely crazy, was able to get a really big team fight win off of the back of hopping on top of a couple of the enemy carries of DK, was yeah. I think a really big contributing factor. And then also, again, we think back to the Udo game where he went, what, zero and seven. And the Cassante game where yep. he managed to take a POG from Barrel. That was pretty cool. I uh, enjoyed never that one a lot. Ne never gonna let it go? <laughs> never, absolutely never. never. Um, Faker going for his classic reset here. Downloading the latest patch uh, for Faker. This one, I think, sports a bunch of new things, uh, new developments. We'll see whether BDD can handle them in the mid lane. Because we have seen, even though we haven't moved to a, a new patch just yet, I believe that will be next week, um, there have been developments in the meta. And I think uh, what Trophy did yesterday may um, contribute to what we're going to see in the draft here at the beginning of today. Um, because he made Corky look completely yeah, so like so, completely. So what you mean by that is Corky will get will get banned, so we don't have to absolutely hope so. see and, Corky. And for those out yes. there that aren't a huge fan of you know Oriana or Azir matchups, we might just see both sides of that coin removed. You know, uh, that would it, be nice. It could be all of those, and then we could see Faker's Yone versus BDD's Zed, and that would be the best, wouldn't it? A little, a little bit it's of, going back a little, a little bit, of little bit stretch. It might be going back but a little I bit. I would love it. And uh, unfortunately, one of the things that hasn't really changed in Prio is the Lucian, which I also expect to be B1 here if it is not taken away. Yep. Given that I think Def individual actually has looked great on the pick, has also been able to have more of a mid game impact than many other Lucians that we've seen. And Guman Carrier, it's self explanatory uh, with the. Uh, huge bag of tricks that they have available to them, uh, giving them the power of Lucian, particularly with the double support items still in the game, is a risk not many teams are willing to take. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. First ban is going to be the Varus aimed at Gumiyushi. A lot of flexibility with that particular pick at the moment, uh, with the fact that you can play on hit, you can play crit, you can play uh, lethality, do whatever you want really. There's the Corky ban that we were talking about. Um, developments here in the LCK, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Udia taken away from Perfect as well, and Zeus wanting to keep that an honest matchup towards the top side of the map. And if I was a KT fan, uh, which I have sometimes been described as, uh, I would be getting nervous. Um, because Zeus is really, 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 really good. Yeah, and Perfect is very new. And that is definitely going to be an angle, but for T1, there is also always the R5. They can keep that Zeus pick up until uh, KT actually commits. What I love here is that we see very strong target bands for the specific teams. KT, uh, outside of maybe the Lucian, I think they always want a first rotation a zero, at least second rotation, given that it's BDD's comfort pick. So preemptively taking it away from both Faker uh, and also not giving Faker the opportunity to pick Corky is quite big. Then the Senna uh, really enables Barrel even more so than usually would be the case. So taking that away means that him and Deft can't go quite as crazy. Um, so the acronym for the bands for KT, I know there's some superstitious people out there, so you're gonna have to bear with me for one second. VCV, which stands for very clean victory. I don't, I don't know. 
He's reading the signs already? <laughs> That's all you can do. It's a, you can't actually analyze. It's KT, so I have to figure out a different No, we way absolutely can analyze it, and we should, Atlas. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, okay. The Callista is going to be locked in, though. This is definitely one of uh, Deft's m more famous picks, and will work out very well in the mid game. We'll see what the T1 answer is going to be, because if it is just the one two punch of the Rumble Azir, this is what they were kind of taken down by uh, against Kwandong. Uh, KT. Looks like it might be the Orianna instead. Of course, has a uh, better lane matchup into the Azir. They would like to play that. Does mean that they can only pick the Melio or the Lucian. And one of them will be banned. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the Poppy come out here. Poppy to me is like, it's really good uh, for setup for both your Rumble and your Azir. It, it synergizes well with the Azir. Well, we've seen the Poppy Azir combo come out a lot. It's one of Ona's best champions, and you're playing into Kalista. So, yeah. Poppy on free here to me is an absolute smash hit. I, I wouldn't even mind if KT ends up picking it away here. Uh, Piyoshi can play it. For all I care, you let Barrel play at support. I'm Ooh, sure. I love I'm that. sure he's Kalista able Poppy to. Poppy works. Um, That's a thing. Uh, BD going to take his Talia, though. So, they are going to leave support up in the air to allow a potential counter pick for Beryl, although difficult to get on the blue side. And they will allow Ona to pick his Poppy if he would like to. Yeah, Poppy to me is, is the no-brainer. Another thing that has made it through the draft is Ash. True. And Ash is obviously insanely, insanely strong. Now, this is a really interesting pick because we have seen the meta shift Ooh. away. Outside of some Zinzao, it's mostly been just Maokai, Sejuani. You know, we've seen uh, a lot of Rel as well, which I actually think would be my uh, my expected picker, if, if not for the Poppy being as good as it is, because the setup that you give to your Rumble is amazing. But owner obviously has an absolutely ludicrous win rate, is a really strong Lee Sin individually, and has already had... Uh, I, I lost count of how many <laughs> team fight winning kicks. Uh, there is definitely a lot. I do think, though, that now for KT, there is the opportunity to throw a bit of a curveball. With this Kalista still being available, you could even end up going for something like a Kalista and an Ash. Let's not forget that Barrel was the one who back, way back in 2022, uh, was the he one who really skin. pushed that. He has a skin. Yeah. On the Ash. Well, yeah. I, I mean, he could have. I, I, I still think he, he, he should have gone for Heimer, but he, he knew where the money no, was. Yeah, no, that's that's, that's <laughs> not a financial <laughs> decision that Beryl would make, okay? Smarter man than that. Only the best decisions from Beryl. Oh, yeah. Is it a failure or so is it Melio? That is the question here for KT. Uh, of course, Melio does hit a few more bases, um, but if it's not picked, then maybe you could play Emilio Callista there on the bottom side. Uh, Beryl has been decent at it. Zaya is instead going to be the takeaway here. As Gumiyushi, I would expect he might end up on uh, something like the Aphelios, but no, the Draven hovered for now. This would be a far more aggressive option. And man, this composition in the mid game looks absolutely terrifying. And there are two answers, right? What to the Callista? You can either meet them uh, where they're at their own level, which is what Guma is looking at here with this Draven pick that he uh, if I oh it's so good as well because you remember what Bull did on Callista to Death's Draven hey. only two days prior to this oh, that, that could be salt in the wound that, Chronicler that, that, that still is the biggest plot twist for me we don't have time to get into it but that, is that, Bull actually good that is the real question were we wrong um, all we're along trying, well here's a Bull as well Beryl of course Ooh. one of the more famous uh, Alistair players uh, 2019 I believe was the year where we were saying he was undoubtedly just the best Alistair in the world, and he was absolutely incredible. Um, has since uh, had some times where things have been a little bit more difficult um, on his Alistair, let's be honest. Uh, but the Viego going to be locked in here for Pioshek, something that he found a lot of success on as well, and they already did have a fair bit of CC, what with the Alistair now being picked up and Talia Cassante, so you can kind of do that. Poppy being a consideration, that would be support Poppy. Um, yeah, it or, does su mean or support Rumble. Like I'm, I'm, I'm Ooh, trying to think. There, there's a Lee Sin. Carry has done that before too. Yeah, I think that, but that with the Lee, I, I'm not too sure about. I really want to see what actually is going to end up happening. Oh, okay, so Got it on. was actually the, uh, the Poppy the which, switch. Yeah, as you mentioned, or as we already mentioned, Poppy always going to be really good into the. Callista, I think the Nautilus it allows you to have a guaranteed way to set up for the Draven. I do think that the, into Alistair specifically can be a little bit awkward because Alistair does have really solid disengage, but a surefire way to lock down either a Kalista or a Talia in mid to late game teamfights. 
and, and set up for Guma to then throw some access, I think is, uh, you're never going to be too set about it. And also T1 didn't really have any engage, and Nautilus definitely is a better option for that than the Poppy would have been. Yep, and uh, I do really like when Beryl is on an all-in engage support like this and has Fate's Call. It's like he's on a leash, and having Beryl on a leash is sometimes very important. Um, and also, being able to get into a position where he can play that extra level of aggressive and start off some of his crazy plays, I think the Alistair could really, really help out there. And having BDD on a roaming champion that he's very, very famous for when you're so reliant on bottom lane not going boom. That is pretty important. Yeah, yeah, but you can't, you can't let Draven run away with the game. And we'll see how the mid game plays out. The one big advantage that I do think T1 has and the KT has to deal with is specifically uh, that Lee. I think that Viego can do decently into Lee Sin, but Owner in particular has just been so consistent on this champion. I think for T1, they've played a comp like this a million times. Oh, absolutely. It's looking like they're bread and butter. But KT, they picked a bunch of new stuff. See how it goes. We hop onto the rift. I like the difference in the fan chants, because you can hear the KT fan desperation, even in the chants. And we're on the other side of the, of the, of the, of the venue as well, um, and we could still, we could still hear it. T1, I think, sounded a little more confident, as that's cute. Having a bit of an emote off. Uh, this is where the emote offs generally happen. But Zeus instead, in his brand new little pixel brush here, won't be able to demonstrate his emoting prowess, as this would be sad if B uh, BDD immediately had to use his flash. But he doesn't, and he's able to surf away, things like that. Zeus also already, because uh, of course we do have uh, Mr. Hoon himself on the desk today, already passing the first test. That's an ignite. Yeah. And I'm sure given uh, the relative lack, as oh, oh, wait, if we can care. Yeah, okay, so BDD might, uh, might have to go a little bit further. Yeah, the flash does come through. Uh, Zeus was moving down, perfect, was in position to protect his mid laner. But that is flash for flash already, and Carrier has the better version of it at the ready. Also has allowed Zeus to take some very early control here and get uh, both damage down on BDD as well as perfect. Start proccing that first strike very early on. The one downside of this is that Carrier, I think, will just be in time, but maybe... Uh, I think missed at least yeah. one minion, so uh, does mean that one of the big weaknesses of Alistair generally is that his level one is not real. You know, he's not. Yeah, he, he's he's there technically, but but not realistically. So that might be an angle here for Deft and Barrel, uh, not having to be too afraid of getting rushed or engaged on, uh, and. As we can see, they already take control of the lane, so it's a sacrifice that Carrier, I think, is happy to take, but a small win for KT in that they'll at least be able to start setting the pace of this bot lane very early on. Definitely good news, because as soon as that gets out of control, it gets out of control really, 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 really far. Carrier experimenting with his Hex Flash. Love to see it. It's exactly what you need to do, um, because it, pretty much what Hex Flash do does is it unlocks your Flash oh. to be used at any time as Owner is looking to punish the new guy. Some hazing here. Doesn't have W yet. Yeah, this is this is very, very rough. In he comes, and Pyoshik is nowhere near. The Ghost has been used. First Harpoon doesn't land as everyone chasing after Perfect, and he is really dead. There's First Blood, and it goes to Zayas. Bad news here for KT. And that's why you go Ignite. And we have seen this up from a lot of teams, really, is find the one member on the team that is the easiest to take advantage of and then really hammer it home. Literally, it's just a full clear topside from owner into immediate gank. Now, I do like the response from KT here. This is really important. Perfect is able to teleport back to the wave. Zayus is getting fed, but at the very least, there is a price that has to be paid by T1 for this really high level of early aggression. Yeah, um, gonna be done. Oh no, it's still taking a bit of damage here as they do have the ward in the brush. The rend is going to be available here. We'll see whether it can be stolen. No, Def not going to be able to do that. As he continues to throw some sticks into Carrier. Bumushi trying to find something here, but there's the Pulverize onto the Draven. Three versus three here as Beryl has to flash very early on. And this is dangerous for KT. Another hook is going to land here as Pyoshik has to flash as well. Def hopping mad. And KT just throwing their summoner spells around like they've got them for days. And T1 
Strike back immediately. KT are looking for as much as they can possibly get. But you've got to respect the early power of this Nautilus Draven. And you can see as well that the burst is definitely an office. In we go, free versus free. Yeah, Pyoshik is here. That is a decent stun on Takaria. He's still burning death, should be able to grab it. And the Ren sets are starting to come through one to one now as KT have answered back towards this bottom side. An overconfidence there from T1. Think that because Owner is in the area, they can actually take this. But Karia goes too low, even hooking out. Not going to end up saving him. And that is a first kill for Death's Callista. And I think crucially there, they still the summoners available. So this play initially from T1, really like it. Big wave that is being crashed here. Perfect is only level two. And the amount of damage that are available for Rumble and Lee at this point, particularly with red buff, absolutely crazy. And then here, trying to go in on Barrel, but he has Aftershock available. Even with Guma uh, canceling, I think, one hop there, not enough. Deft still takes down his old teammate, and that was really necessary because KT was actually falling pretty substantially behind, now feeling a whole lot better. Exactly. I think very important for Pyoshik as well as, oh dear, Ona just caught out of position, does look to try and safeguard his way out as Pyoshik. He does not have the ulti yet, and he doesn't have his flash, so Ona will survive for now. But that is a decent little one-two punch, and I think Pyoshik should be able to collect some shellfish for himself after that one. Pioshik, man, has been at the right place at the right time. Wasn't able to help Perfect, but immediately goes for the counter punch. Has now been instrumental in a lot of these plays. The Pioshik upgrade, what? the hyperbolic like, LCS time chamber, man, it is and, insane. And we saw it at Worlds, and we didn't trust it, right? We saw him yeah. against T1, and we're like, wow, that was a, that was a fluke. That was a one-time. This is Pioshik after all. Yeah. But, I, I put it down to Spawn's influence, and, you know, he doesn't have that anymore. No, I mean, I don't know how powerful he is. Maybe all the way from... Oh, he's all powerful. <laughs> all the way from uh, an A. All I promise you. Um, definitely very, very powerful. As, yeah, BDD underneath this turret. But I think Pyoshik in that one game versus T1 was... He was enough to give me some... He was some mythical. Hope. He really was. And so far, seeming like he's carrying that through. Because I thought that maybe... Like, Pyoshik is a big game player, right? We know that about him. He, when he does have those big stakes, he plays to the crowd and uh, can make things happen. Here in the regular season, it's a slog, right? You have to be consistent. You have to continue going. And so far, so good here for Pyoshik in the first couple of weeks. Because I don't think it was necessarily him um, that was the issue first. <laughs> there are a few other things going wrong. Oh, Pyoshik actually has his ultimate available this time around. Are sums available? Owner is in the area, but Pyoshik does have a level advantage. Six to five, obviously, really big. BDD, though, could be the difference maker. Does have his ultimate, and it wouldn't be surprised if KT want to try and play towards his Drake. We'll see. They picked up one of the Void Grubs right now, not uh, more being taken just yet. As in, they go. Yeah, there's the headbutt. Ah, uh, Pulverize hasn't been used just yet, and yeah, Carrier, not a lot of places to go. Does still have his Flash available, but is he just going to be CC'd to death? Yes, is the answer, uh, and so is Perfect. Um, yeah, he's not having a great time there towards that top side. Yeah, does, the Flash has to be used there by, by Zayas, but that is, uh, he's on the ground once again. Faker just going to spend some time here in this mid lane, looking for some plates if he can get them, as BDD makes his way back up, able to skate on these walls. That's going to make him feel a whole lot better. Or surf on the walls, sorry. Uh, wrong board, Atlas. And you can call Zayas uh, T1's insurance policy. If, if, you know, a skirmish on the bot side of the map doesn't quite work out, BDD has a great roam towards the bot side. KT picks a dragon. That's fine, because you are not diverting resources to uh, the one rumble that I think we have always seen deliver in, like, the last... Oh, yeah. I don't know uh, how many months of League gameplay, and that is Zayas sitting on 20 CS lead. Two, I know. Looking to go Leandri's first. Picked up early. Sork Pem boots as well. As oh, dive. that! Q the W flash pole is beautiful from Barrel. The Fates call to get him out of dodge. The hook from Carrier, though, and that will be able to get the counter kill. Pyoshik should be able to answer it and is able to get himself out of there as well. Minion still... Oh, never mind. He's dead. Hey, that's going to be the double. And Carrier turns it around beautifully. Two for two in the end, but... I think we might make it an extra one as the Whirling Death comes in. Barrel not going to be taken down by the Draven. They want to try and cash in at least a little bit there. Faker is going to be able to lock that down in the end. So T1 with the advantage. And KT continue trying to keep the pace of this game very high. Dive bot again. 
But crucially, Carrier is able to get the hook on Deft, who is still tanking. And then uh, Faker shows up as well. As All right. Uh, Pioche is going to get kicked away, but not before he secures his own red buff. He wins, though. It's been, uh, been really good on the smites thus far. As we take another look at this, this is uh, this is a while back. This is the play on Carrier that ended up working out really nicely for KT. Even though on the other end of the map, we do see uh, Zeus is able to 1v1 perfect. But these kills on Deft, I think, still are going to be quite big. As... Huh. Yeah, he's just... He's just dead. He's just dead. Yeah, I, 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 I would love to say more, but he crashed a big wave, and that's the end of it. And again, I want to draw attention to the hook that is found here. Oh, we are going to have a little bit of a fight here, though. Carrier with a lot of sticks in him. Def not going to be able to find a kill with the Rend. Just a bit of softening up of that Nautilus. Gumiushi moving around. Does right. have his serrated Dirk. A fair bit of damage there as Beryl Hex flashing forward. Both of these supports, just Bloodthirsty and on the right champions to do so as well. Um, I just prefer not to watch this top lane, guys. Um, this is just, it's just unfair. Uh, Perfect is going to die. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, zero yeah there's, zero. There's, um, there's, there's not a whole lot to say on that one. Um, Perfect really struggling. One of the techs that we used to see from Cassante's inter... And I don't think it would have made a big difference, but I do think that there could have been some value there. Is the, uh, we used to see a lot of Aftershock into Rumble specifically. Like what, eh? But again, I want to draw attention to this hook, because if this dive goes well for KT, actually could have been really, really big. So what happens is, is it's Barrel tanking the aggro initially, but then because of the Fate's call, Deft actually takes aggro, and then Carrier is able to get the hook, ensure that Deft ends up going down. The only downside for T1 and a big win for KT is that the kills uh, do go to Carrier, right? And not to the opposite. Oh, no, no, please. Why are we replaying this? We didn't want to watch it. The worst Why? part is I'm like, maybe he lives. No, and then no, no. He, he, he was overheated. He couldn't ult couldn't just yet, uh, and then he did. And it's not going to get better. He's Leandris now and a Dark Seal. Oh, no, it's it's over. It is completely over. We'll see where the Perfect can just avoid uh, everyone and uh, try and get a little bit of farm here in this game. But the gameplay part of it is pretty much over for the Cassante in this one. BDD hasn't really been able to do too much. Uh, so far this game, him and Faker have been trading waves back and forth. Faker getting the most of it, uh, as there was that one Weaver's Wall play that uh, BDD was able to make. That did oh, no. some minions. Um, and yeah, yeah, he got he got dove on level two. He and did. Then, and then and then after that, I think also playing into Zeus, which you see uh, pretty pretty sizable player gap there, unsurprisingly. But the first kill was in of itself not the end of the world. From this point onwards, though, uh, it's a two point one k gold lead. No, it's absurd. Like and uh, it's 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 like the gold lead in itself is all for Zeus. The rest of the map kind of evens itself out. Some uh, advantages here and there. Deft in the lead against Gumiushi for now, but that is pretty much one cash in away from Gumiushi being massive in this game. T1 does still need to orchestrate that, but with this huge rumble, could be an opportunity for that one to happen. Uh, Spaker is going to get shoved back. Fred and Volley working out here for BDD as well uh, as he continues to evaporate these minion waves. Has the opportunity to slink into Fog of War. Is important for this guy. Wants to be able to keep his influence high around this map is perfect. Yeah, we can see just continuing to have a difficult time here in this top lane. We'll find at least a few of these minions, but he is dipping further and further behind. The Rookern could not come soon enough. And this is also a conscious team call being made by KT, right? Where they're like, we need to keep down Guma and Carrier. Pioshik has been spending his entire time just towards the bottom side of the map. Has led them to pick up an early Drake. But unfortunately, even with Deft picking up a pretty sizable lead, has not led to the bot lane being completely out of the game. As yeah, the moment Zayas decides to join, oh, it's you got yeah. you got to let it go. And and KT are looking like they might not if they can burst down an individual target right from the get go. There might be an angle, but I don't think T1 is going to walk into the trap. Although Caria yeah. just walks up and ward, and that'll be the end of it. And just the threat of a rotation from Zayas is enough. Actually, I like the play from KT, though, because I think as soon as Zayas is moving, then you're not winning a fight. It's just never happening. Uh, the more they can convince him to stay in the side lane, the better it's going to be. So Beryl helping Def to clear out this minion wave. Still has about a 30 CS lead himself. And that lead in the bottom lane is still there. It is still a thing. It's not as sizable as what Zayas has over Perfect. Um, but it should still help KT 
uh, keep themselves in it, at least for the next little while. But we've seen Callista struggle to carry unless it's Bull. So we'll see whether Deft can do his best Bull impression and uh, really close out this game with the Callista. Words I never thought I'd hear is perfect again. Oh, dear. Uh, oh. Well, Zayas is just going to let him live. He is a benevolent god, as it turns out. Very apt, as uh, Deft will be able to, on the next wave, take down this turret. And, and the key thing for KT is that it's not over just yet. I do think they're really fighting an uphill battle. The amount of uh, team fighting power that's going to come from Zayas is, is really going to make this quite hard. And for KT, I think it's going to have to rely on either Deft having a really big team fight. Outside of the Nautilus, there aren't that many ways to reliably lock down this Kalista. So if T1 over invest onto another target and, and Deft is able to... Um, wait, what happened? Yeah, Pyoshik got that blue somehow. Oh. We were looking at Deft have a bit of a farm. Uh, and in the meantime, Pyoshik just walked up and pressed a smite button, I guess. Nice. Good for him. There we go. Yeah, Pyoshik smites. It's the little things. It's sometimes. been great. You, you got you to gotta, you gotta cherish those. Uh, but, but that, I think, is for KT mainly what you're going to be looking towards. Or, and this is something where I think T1 hasn't really shown any signs of this yet, but we have seen them do in the past, is uh, some classic overaggression in side lanes. With the Talia, especially with level 2 on the ultimate available, able to rotate very quickly. When you have a rumble this fed, is overaggression in the side lane ever a thing that's really possible? Because I think that, like, you can kind of do whatever you want. At I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for angles here. All right, sorry, sorry, um, sorry. I didn't uh, mean to cut the, you. The, act, no, 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 the actual answer to your question is, if they don't literally 100 to 0 him, they will lose whatever fight and choose. Yes. And they might lose someone even in the best-case scenario. Because one of the problems is, is that Zayas often uses his ult pretty well. He isn't uh, he, one of the yes. players that throws it into a different video game um, at the beginning of every it's team quite fight. quite impressive when you which think we have, about it. Yeah, we have seen that actually occur uh, more times than you would expect. Uh, this faker comes on over. Bit of a parting shot there onto Pyoshik as he slinks away. Finally, the Rookern has been put together here by Perfect. It's not going to mitigate too much here, but it should at least help him uh, and not die instantly. He'll be pretty tanky. You know, he's up against double AP and then a a, a Lee Sin that isn't really going to be looking to target him and then a Draven that is behind. So there you go. It could be worse. True. Hey, that's what we could do. We just do the could be worses. Well, it's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've... The, the, the main issue is just you need to find a way to deal with the rumble reliably. And I find it hard to see a way in which Zayas doesn't toast you before you get the opportunity to do so. These type of traps, though, could be something. Yoshik is on his way. Yeah, there's a seismic shove. Now on cooldown, Faker not going to do anything aggressive. Moving back towards his turret, and oh dear. It'll be this, big. This could be the catch. As another seismic shove could be available, he is going to not. He's not there. He's not there anymore. A little bit late but very, very close. Hey, they didn't see Pioshik, so that's nice, at least. Yeah. Uh, no information being given in that regard, but not able to actually get the pick on Faker. Really, a pick on any out of Zayas, Faker, or, or Carrier would be good. Pick up those shutdowns. Yep. Uh, Zayas, of course, the best one on that front. 500 extra gold, feeling pretty good. He has a Shadow Flame now as well. Uh, <laughs> that's um, that's very scary rumble. Extraordinarily scary rumble. Uh, Bidity has his uh, Seraphs complete. Let's see where else he goes with this build so far with a fair bit of mana. Has that extra shield as well. And Deft, kind of the star of the show here. 4KT. Wanting to see whether he can be the one to carry this. And the single target damage, I think, is still really, really good as we do see some stacks. Barrel! Right, in goes Barrel. There's the flash pole. Oh. They're looking for it. He pushes back the rumble, and he's just dead. Couldn't they even did equalize it. They them. him. They did exactly what you said, Chronic. I thought it was impossible. Who is this Barrel? Where did they get him from? They even poured him from 2019. What's happening? And that's the one member on T1 that if he goes down, there is zero chance of a contest. If Guma goes down, he'll still try and something. These breaks against Rumble are about the best ones you can get. Okay, and let's see. Let's see uh, it from the mastermind himself. It's just a blast cone diff. Yeah, finds the blast cone flash. Gets the knockback. 
and still has Fate's Call, still has the uh, Unbreakable Will. Yep. <laughs> Takes a bow. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together, Atlas, when we're like, yeah, just kill the Rumble, and then they do. Uh, it's not enough by itself. No, it's not. But it it's is. not. Look, it's good. Gold lead. It's like 1.5k. You got a second dragon. That's going to buy you time. Exactly. Well, uh, Barrel is now just he's, playing he's with hiding. Fog of War here just a little bit. I was a little bit frightened. I'm not sure who for um, at that point in time. But nothing is going to eventuate. And Death back into the farming. 211 uh, at 19 and a half minutes is not too bad. As far as that CS number is concerned, Spiershik will find a stun onto Carrier. Carrier takes that as a welcome. And in goes Beryl. Looks for another Pulverize. And here are the two sides of Beryl. The Fate's Call is going to come through and save his life, though, as they get the knock up onto Ona, who just explodes, pops like a balloon. But look at the equalizer damage once again, though. Hit by Pulver, and he's dead. KT have won the team fight. It's two to one, and T1 are just gonna back away. What? KT? No, not no. going down. But not KT. Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it, yes, it's, KT. It's yes, KT. KT. So starts off looking a little bit, little bit risky with Barrel going in very aggressively, trying to play around with the vision very nicely, using the new map architecture. But to me, the big difference maker there was that flick that BDD was able to oh, get yeah. back on Zaya. So initially, Pioshik not wanting to take any risks, really good buffer there. Barrel goes in and this looks disjointed. But then you see BDD actually flashes forces, Faker's flash, and then owner goes just a little bit too deep. And see one thing, like, this is it's free. We have the the equalizer, but they're actually able to get off of that. And Zayas steps too far forward, doesn't have his flash, because, or actually flashes at the end of that play, rather, still ends up going down, even with that. And now the gold, 1k at 21 minutes. This is exactly that's, that's the telecom fine. wall we wanted. And I didn't, I, I, was, I was beginning not to believe. We were getting worried. I didn't think that it was going to be quite as competitive as we may have initially tried to sell it as. It still uh, might not be Atlas, we don't no, know. It, precisely, however, I think it's, it's done enough. It's done enough. It's game right? like already. If, if someone just the wins stamp. the team fight and it snowballs out of control from here, it's fine with fight. it. Stamping. Absolutely fine Stamping with it. Stamping game one. Stamp of approval, Stamp Absolutely. game one. 300 blue blades um, really occurring here for Grimushi to, to coin Papa Smithy's phrase uh, that Teddy suffered from quite a few times when he was on Jinna all those years ago. Uh, he's wanting to cash those in as soon as possible. Needs to find a bank. Um, not sure who will provide one of those. As, oh, okay, they don't, oh. this is sneaky. That's a classic. Yeah, let's see what they can do here, though, as Faker over the wall. Getting a lot of damage down. Perfect. Will be able to poke his nose in. Does see that they've started at Pyoshik in the area. And he has got a really good smite button today. T1 do not want to risk it, but I love the attempt. Just test it. Test the theory. Keep them on their toes. Make sure that they don't get too comfortable. The early damage that Faker has available with Nash Void stuff second, actually. That's, uh, that's kind of crazy. Usually... Yeah, it's not like a third come. item these days. Yeah, and also we've seen a lot of Crypt Loom as well. Yeah, I do really trick. like the uh, Void stuff. I assume Zeus is going to go for Crypt Loom instead. But uh, KT, they've dealt with T1 before, particularly, obviously. I, I mean, I say particularly, it's really anyone but perfect. BDD has plenty of experience playing oh, yes. against T1. And as especially well. in spring as well. I mean, yep. T1 are the kings of spring, right? The last two years, they have absolutely dominated. They've had but one. But BDD's Gen G was the spring team. Yeah, just to put it in perspective, I think they've had one match loss. Yeah. In the last two years in spring. Yes. <laughs> in, um, in regular season, obviously. So it was um, undefeated, and then what was it, like? 16-1 or 17-1? Yeah. Yeah, 17-1. 18-1? Uh, but... I have, the, I have it in oh, somewhere. Death? Edge of... I actually love this, because one of the big uh, things I was worried about for Death specifically is that even if he's able to get off of it, Zayas ulting him might just be enough to take him out of the team, but with Edge of Night, that's not going to be the case. And outside of that, T1 doesn't really have a great way of procking this. Also provides you with extra safety against the possible Nautilus engage. Yeah, and he needs to stay in range and because Beryl's going in. Yes. You know, so oh, you need to owner. be able to face owner. Him. Owner's on a ward. Let's see what he can actually get done here as, oh, they tried to time it. Yoshik looks for him. Beryl doesn't get the headbutt in the right spot as he gets Owner away? is able to get away. 
Man, that was so dangerous, but uh, he just sort of so, wanders his way out. Yeah, so what happened there is uh, they gave away that the newer owner was because of the preemptive E from BDD to ensure that owner couldn't kick Death back into the team. And then uh, th they tried to engage with that point. Owner already has a, having a presence of mind, know that he was going to get collapsed upon. As KT does have control of the river right now. Gamushi was able to actually press W. Runs out of the seismic shove nicely, and the Drake is what both teams are focusing on. Soul point here for KT, and another stack of mountain would be huge. Mid prio for them, they can move into the river first, but we do see owner still off to the sides looking for a possible angle. The range of engage is just so huge here for T1 as well, with that equalizer up and available. Vision now being gained. They don't flash. Have an amount of those exactly. And Ona will find Kyoshik there. There's the face. Call the flash forward and he interrupts the blast cone. Headbutt Palm and he's dead. Kyoshik able to avoid the equalizer damage as well. That is a huge cooldown for this fight. And KT, they should be able to get themselves the Mountain Drake here as T1 scatter. And that's going to be Soul Point for KT. Another insane pick being found. Last one, I think, was all where this time Deft actually uses Fates Call, flashes forward just to I ensure. Don't have, I'm, I'm struggling to fathom at the moment. There was not a, the, the fathomability of the outcome because this was. Oh man, okay, let, let's check it out one more time. The flash Fates Call and then the interruption, the timing. Absurd. And with no jungler. Immediately, no opportunity, 41, soul point now. And if there is one thing that I, I don't think a lot of members on T1 can reliably deal with, it's, it's when we get to the mid to late game, even though I don't think that, you know, Kalista, you're not going to be super excited about. Uh, Viego kind of the same, you know, they can be strong if they can pop off, but realistically it should be tough. But if you are able to withstand the initial brunt of the T1 comp, it's really only Faker that is able to do yeah. a lot of output, especially because Guma still hasn't gotten a kill. Still sitting on all those stacks. The blades are turning purple. At it's this point. it's rough. Yeah, it's it's uh, certainly. I mean, he is stacking and stacking and stacking. He hasn't died recently. Oh and no, he is. Look he at is. this gold advantage. It's so Deft versus Ace. Fine, just one one Draven kill, and then we can get rid of all that Atlas. Yep, 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 yep. Well, I don't know about all of it, but it's a fair bit. You actually would put a dent in it. As Pyoshik now going to face check Zayas. That does not seem like a positive thing. Um, he is going to get over the wall, and he's burning, 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 ticking, 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 and alive. I don't know if you should recall there. Zayas has his ult now. Didn't have it just at a second, oh. but now they're going to immediately try T1 Baron. There it is. And KT, they know exactly what's going on here, but can they actually do anything at all about it? That's the question. Deft is hoofing it no as Pioche. best he can. And Carrier, yeah, moving on forward. Perfect, not going to be able to find too much here as Carrier gets over to the wall. And Perfect still going aggressive, still going in. Faker is going to get pulled back by the Q as the equalizer goes down. Not exactly the greatest one we've seen, though. And KT still looking for more, Chase. still looking for this team fight. As Face Call comes in, there's oh. that flash pulverize, but he's not the target. It's Pyoshik the locks down carrier, but can they find the team fight? Perfect went so incredibly deep. But T1, they still have the Baron. It's a one for one. And the flash hook from Pyoshik just barely misses the backside of Gumiushi as he makes his way out. And T1 will say, all right, that's fine. We got a Baron, we're fine with this. Oh, I hope I'm wrong, but it almost looked like Perfect was actually the one who saved Faker there. Oh no. I hope really. not. We're going to see in the replay KT really trying to get something out of this because, um, you know, in, in a, in a, in a Pioshik fashion, face checks a brush, almost dies. So this call from T1 is without risk initially. Securing this Baron was always going to happen, but then it's the follow up. They are able to take down Faker, gets very low. The equalizer doesn't actually do that much f uh, perfect, actually does do a good job of providing a reliable frontline. And this is where you think the turn is going to come through. And there we see... Oh, it was the headbutt. The seismic that, shove yeah. would have got so, Faker. Exactly. Seismic shove would have got a Faker, but also because of the headbutt, the redirect on the ultimate actually drew Faker all the way over the wall. So an impressive bit of uh, anti-synergy there. Unfortunately, it was a, It was a cavalcade of errors. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. Oh, a lot that didn't go all the way. But they still have a fighting chance. In about a minute, that Drake is going to come up. It should be much harder to fight because of the uh, look at the wave that's being stacked towards the bot side of the map. Yeah, Already see huge. level 16 available for Zayas as well. Level 3 ultimate, Crip Loon is there. But no death cap yet on Faker. Oh. 
Yeah, dash it forward. There's the pulverize from over the wall. Empress Divide hits everyone though as Faker is burning, but I think he will survive. Carrier may not be so lucky as Deft picks it up. So Carrier is going to be taken down. Faker has to go back and doesn't have teleport. And now Perfect. there's an all out on Zeus. The Weaver's Wall coming in. Zeus trying to be the hero as BDD almost just dead. The Honey Fruit not quite there. And another Q. Owner is delivered. And that was a weird interaction, but Perfect is once again dead. Owner is also, though, as Dev cleans it up in the pit. Not quite the kill from the Draven. What? That was chaos. Who won? Telecom War! Oh, no, it didn't baby. matter. It didn't matter. No, oh, okay. it's Dragon. Oh, it's yeah, fine. Right. Oh, yeah, it's 40 seconds. Yeah. yeah cool. All right. Uh, no, T1, T1 probably is the winner because they're the one that still can push on us. And also, Pyoshik might just be dead. Yes, he is. Uh, okay. Yeah, T1 won. T1. Uh, T1 won that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they the, won the play. The extent, when we were confused a bit, thanks, Pyoshik, for letting us know exactly uh, what the outcome was there. Uh, is Faker going to be interrupted? There's a fate call. Oh, Faker could just be dead. Another pulverize, and he's thrown around like a ragdoll. Sticks are ripped out, and Death locks that one down to, K to KT. We now, like, what is I happening? Can't keep up. We can't breathe. Oh my god. And now, they're going to get Soul. Yeah. Off of that play. Right, so now it's not too late. Now it it's KT is fine. winning. Yeah. All right, well, um, I, think? I mean, Pyoshik's still dead. Yeah, but I don't care, you have death. Yeah, that's true, he's got a decent... No, they can't, they can't, they, they need more. And, and Faker, I don't know what a teleport uh, cooldown timer is, but probably going to be up when his Might death timer enough. times out. Okay, so back to a T1 victory on this one. Uh, I'm going to call 50-50. All right, when in doubt, just look at the top and count the gold. 1.6, T1 are in the lead, okay? There we go. Yeah, okay, but dragons, though. <laughs> Fake, Fake is going to TP in 8 seconds. Look at the item breakpoints. Faker does actually have a death cap now. No death cap available oh, for me. They don't find the seismic shove. As Pyoshik dashing on forward. They could just uh, do that though, I guess, because of the uh, the blast cone. And now the teleport from Faker gets him in here. It is an honest 5v5. As Deft is in that mid lane, trying to clear things out. Vision now down. The prior found. Carrier is on the ward right now. Oh, this is dangerous. Deft can. He doesn't have Fate's Call, so never mind. Not going to be able to make that one work. They want to stack up this rend as much as possible. The Rage Blade also there. And the sticks are just increasing. Oh, it whoa. should be Mountain Soul. Yeah, the Weaver's Wall comes in. Can Ona do something heroic? And the answer is no. There's Mountain Soul. Carrier also potentially in trouble as Ona doesn't quite find the Sonic Wave. And KT just wanting to get out with their prize, and they will be allowed to do so. And that's going to be the Mountain Soul. I'm going to have a heart attack this series. Yeah, no, I, I think I this might. Is, this is game one, Atlas. Yeah. Um, after this, I'm sure BDD also going to have his death cap done as well. And this is where, you know, the Void Staff for Faker, he's going to feel great about this. Gumishi also has his Lord Dumbs already. So at least they have a decent amount of items in place. Black Cleaver, Crypt Bloom. So there's a decent amount of, uh, of, of armor reduction or, or magic penetration uh, available here. Um, or T1, but I don't know if that's going to be enough. Does this give, like, perfect the uh, complete getting obliterated by run? Like, if they win this, if KT managed to win this, is this two games where he's gone, like, 0, 5, and 1? Because Kingen did, like, the same thing. It might be. I mean, I mean, it, it's true. If they do win this, that, that is the case. Has he lost to a Rumble yet? I believe. Yeah, they did. They did against uh, Kwondo. Yeah. Yeah, Dudu. Dudu was able to Dudu do it. Got him. And, 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 and still, T1 has a gold lead. Uh, but I do think that they are actually behind when it mountain comes to Mountain Soul values pretty high. That's, that's the point, especially with three Mountain Souls. But at, at this point, it's just going to come down to who finds oh, yeah. the angle. For T1, their most reliable teamfight carry at this point is going to be Faker. Guma, you know, even without any cash ins, he's sitting at free items, but compared to Deft, who's at four and a half, he's still not going to be feeling great. Guma doesn't even have the money to finish his boots. This is a sad portrait. Yeah. He still has a 250 gold bounty <laughs> on his head. And and um, just dinged level 16 as well, but. Gojik once again, aggressive position. Um, it's scary because he has been punished multiple times. Not happening this time, though, it's Baron up and available. KT. Doing oh, their homework. No. As owner gives away his position. And Perfect is much tankier now. And this is the thing. Like, you can put a tank down, but the longer a game goes, the more he's just kind of okay with being a punching bag. And he's putting items together. You know, he's trying to do it. He's getting there. Oh. As all oh, barrel. 
Well, T1 actually are staying really far away. This is really nicely done. You can see with the vision control they have, the, uh, the path that they took is relatively safe. Yeah. BDD looks for it, finds Faker with the seismic shove. The flash has to be used. Faker does make his way out. Big cooldown. Deft? Yeah. Oh, that's Beryl. That's yeah. a Beryl flank. This is definitely a Beryl flank. It's both of them. And Beryl doesn't even need the Fates Call to start this one off. Carrier. Oh, the seismic shot not going to be there. Beryl not able to flash on top of Zaius, who has a... Oh, dear. There's that Fates Call we were talking about. And he is going to be taken away from this fight. T1 now find themselves on the wrong side of this battle. And the Equalizer now on cooldown. He's not in there. Ono looks for the kick, but where's the follow-up? The Empress divides. Kind of massive, but Def able to take down Faker. And now it is just an oh. all seismic shove on turn two. And KT might find it. The cash in. It comes in, but it comes too late. And KT with four up and available. They're looking for the end. And the first game of the Telecom War delivers ah. Atlas. Oh my god, man! And I feel like we were saying it all week that this was the, the outcome, but it's honestly not how I was feeling there moving will, in. There will be justice there for it will, this time. There will be, it better be a 12 out of 12, otherwise it's not justice to me, Chronicler. This guy, this was vintage Beryl Alistair. He was the Alistair guy. Somehow Carrier finds depth with that hook, but they are still going to have enough to take down this Nexus, and KT will play Woo! game one in the Telecom War. But it was not easy, Chronicler, and it involved Zayus having an absolute obliterating performance on this Rumble, but once again, it's the young man in the top lane who kept respawning and kept just getting back in there and doing it one time after another. All that matters is an unbreakable spirit, Atlas. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and as, as, as we, as the players, you know, we're going to discuss, as we cool down, because we, we need a little bit of cool down. Oh, yeah. It's game one in the Thank best of goodness three. Thank goodness for the space. That's all I, I'm saying. I can only hope that this goes all the way. And I can only be so happy that we are a best of three league and we get oh, to watch two heck more yeah. games of this, hopefully. There, <laughs> there are times to rub in the, the best of three or not situation. This is one of those times. Oh, Absolutely, yeah. Chronicle. You, you took you took it and uh, it was exactly the Look right Look at that gold graph. Yeah, that's uh, it's kind of like the heart monitor, but it's also all red. It's peaking at the right time. A hundred percent. Deft, absolutely massive. And his Callista hasn't got across the line. I can hear it like, I feel Wolf, right, who saw the Callista pick and he's like, ah, we've seen this attempted I mean, so many so times, but it doesn't actually work as you get later and later. With Beryl on Alistair, I and, guess it just does. And, and obviously it's, it's Beryl POG, but Deft his Callista game. Oh man. man. He was nuts. This was just a completely ridiculous game one. Absolutely amazing stuff. We're going to go to a short break, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back with the space and then game number two. Stick around. Apenas, apenas. Vale, antes me escuchan. 
그럼 되죠 아 어, 캐리 곰 감사 아, 어. 야 우리 실수 많이 했는데도 이 정도면 그냥 아 롬블 잠복하고 있다는데 갑자기 홀린 홀린 듯이 붙이 들어가는 거 뭐야 어 잠깐만 타워 어어 어. 아, 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 끝났어 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 타워 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 럼블 로플 럼블 로플 아나 죽었다 럼블 로플 럼블 로플 나이스 And welcome to the space. We are here after game number one, which was quite the banger, actually, between KT Rolster and T1. I'm Valdez. With me is Huni and Wolf today. And guys, that was uh, 
That was kind of intense, wasn't it? I mean, very back and forth, but eventually KT rolled over them. In terms of the draft, we'll talk about the draft first, right? I don't want to get too deep into what both these drafts mean, but there's one conditional factor that both drafts share and that the 80 carry needs to actually win in order for the draft to function properly. I think more so this is a problem for T1 if the Draven falls behind because Cassante will eventually build resistances up. It's pretty fortunate for KT Rollster. It also ended up being Mountain Soul uh, that they ended up collecting and stacked three mountains on top of that. But even though Perfect was able to get massively ahead, the rest of the map was always under KT's control. Yeah, I mean, this is like we've seen even like a few times actually having the double AP. We also criticize that actually want to rumble Azir. Like it is good. Like you have a mid pro, you do have a top pro, and it just get that strong jungle. You can actually lead the early game all the prior and actually just run all the map. But the thing is like it's a game. You just can't really make a mistake. Like as you said, like the Kasante will eventually really be tanky. And being ends up they get Mount Soul as well. Like it was a become like even more problem. So like it's just like whoever actually have a less mistake, it's just got an edge on the draft at the, the advantage, I'll say. But this time, that's why, I, that's why I think KT had a great win. Yeah, absolutely. They started off a little bit shaky. We were talking about Perfect in that top lane having some struggles. And then they just barreled them. And we can take a look at highlight number one, which is essentially just a bunch of clips of Barrel being Barrel and just killing them over and over. I mean, this was kind of insane how he took over the entire game. And they always had one deep ward in this area of the map. And this is consistently the place that they constantly found these angles of attack, right? And in this moment again here, T1, this is a very close fight here that I, I can't fault T1 too much for this, but Barrel actually helps turn this one back around and even with you know, Rumble in this choke point, it's ultimately not enough damage here because Guma and Draven super far behind and then Zayas with an overextension. Yeah, I mean, Rumble could have ulti, but he actually chased way too far away. And see this one, also Owner, and he has a flash as well. They actually open to just kill the Owner really badly with actually using Death to Flash. You have to respect them. Like, actually, even the first was first one, even the Zeus has a flash, and he actually didn't respect it. They knew actually where are at they, and the, I think the T1 member were not actually prepared enough, like, just react right away. Then it's like, the, but the thing is, like, this quality of the team fight actually just ended in one second. Yeah, I feel like the gold made it look like it was a close game and Zayas's lead made it look like it was a close game, but actually I think fundamentally this was a KT Rolster stomp where the bottom side of the map and of course some of those skirmishes were completely in their control and Zayas's lead just couldn't save it for T1. Absolutely, and you can never disrespect Barrel's Alistair. I mean, this is part of the reason why this guy gave himself a big name just on that old like 2019 Dom one. This guy is so good at this champion. He took over the game as uh, Deft helped him out as well in that last clip. Just really incredible stuff. We can take a look at the last highlight, which is essentially the final fight of the game, which is like, okay, maybe they've got an angle here, T1, but starts off really well for the side of KT. Yeah, I mean, just eyes on where actually Barrel's at, and also actually Faker's just getting interrupted already by, by BDD Talia, like it's burning his flash. Like it's already bad, really, really bad for T1. Just eyes on like where the T1, they're so separate, and actually just KT had a, such a really good the flanking position, and they walled it, and Rumble got so separate. It's fine to actually burn flash, but he walked back into the Death Kalisa ulti, and you just, you just have to respect it. Like I think it's just like, this is like the game that it, it actually happened more than three times that they're using the Kalisa ulti and Alistar combo, but they were actually just until end the game just didn't actually respect single one. I mean, Faker has a really nice ult here, but it just doesn't matter at this stage in the fight. I have to give T1 credit for trying to sneak this Baron and rush it down with the damage they had. This was really their only hope. But KT were just one whole step ahead. The angle that Barrel and Def took to wrap around, knowing they could push T1 out with this Cassante that has Mountain Soul, allowed them to guarantee not only do they deny the Baron, but they get the wipe to end the game. So KT already having the forethought to think one step ahead, have that flank angle there. And KT, brilliant game here. What a bounce back after the loss to the Freaks. <laughs> that can happen sometimes. You know, you're preparing for T1 all week, and then you have to go up against Kwangong, and you're like, oh, we'll probably beat them, and then you just get totally surprised. Bull comes up. But KT, I mean, they're still a strong team. They have proven that here today in this first game. It's not over yet. We still have a best of three to play out. And I believe we should have this POG here in a moment as well to see who does pick it up on the side of KT. I would imagine has to be Barrel. And there yeah. it is. It is Barrel. I mean, basically, it was like top against the bottom, but I think the barrel, like, and the death, like, both of them, like, I was actually keep rewatching the replay, and it's like they actually had no mistake at all. 
it's crazy that he has 94.4 kill participation in a game where he's 1, 2, and 16, by the way. Like, he has... And it's not like, you know, as long as you'll see an Enchanter support get a kill participation like that because they, you know, constantly healing people, constantly just stealing those assists. He is just involved in every single important moment in this game. And he and Dev set up so much of this. I wouldn't be sh shocked and I wouldn't really hate it if Dev picked up a few himself, but to me, it was really the barrel show. Yeah, I mean, KT play really, really well around, like, actually, both deal, like, their strength and also the making play, like, starting from just barrel and death, like, that's, like, it's no matter what, it's no job the death or barrel. Well, let's see if we can get everyone. Okay, we do have a couple of death votes, and that's fine. I, I think especially that third clip, like, death really setting it up and barrel, you know, it's kind of just the combination of those two at that point. So really good stuff there. Barrel, kind of the obvious uh, winner of this POG this time around, so... That was game number one, and we have potentially two more on the way. Do we think T1's going to bounce back from this, or do we think that KT is just on a roll right now? I mean, going into this series, I said if KT is going to win a game in a weird way, it's going to be game one, right? Before T1 is fully settled in, I think we'll see some adaptation. I think this is definitely going to three. Yeah, I mean, especially the KT, they lost against the Gondon Freaks, and they actually used that actual advantage. Like, they know, like, what at, were at the poor thing, and it's like actually playing against T1. They kind of recover like most of it so it looked pretty good so i think that t1 should be able to do the same thing should be able to is our expectation t1 are going to move on to the blue side for game number two so maybe no azir rumble uh one two pick on the red side could be pretty interesting and guys we are done here on the space let's hand it back to the casters for that game number two Thank you so much, gentlemen, for the breakdown of game number one. Some understandable frustration uh, for our resident um, Rumble enjoyer, uh, but sometimes Beryl. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, sometimes he does it. And if you came to me in, like, when would be the best time for the, the true Beryl moments to really be coming out? Was it, like, middle of summer last year, perhaps? Would that be, like, optimal, like... When, when, when you Recent really stop barrel believing, timing. yeah, barrel. I think there were two periods. One was around like spring 2021. Remember yep. the MSI, the Nautilus, the Nautilus incident? Oh, spring 2022 was definitely not a great time. Also, yeah, okay, but you know, that one, at least they won one world, so. Yeah, they did do that. But there was a lot of that as well. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously there was a lot. So really, every year, there's a <laughs> moment where you're like, this guy's done. Yeah. Um, not today. Definitely not today. Fantasy is not today. Some different bands to come through here as we do see a swap of sides. Uh, T1 have uh, moved over to the blue side this time around, and now no AD carries are allowed to be played. We're just uh, we're banning all of them. The Ash is still up and available. Slipped through the draft entirely in our previous game. Uh, we have, you know, Beryl who has an Ash skin. Carrier who has played a heck of a lot of Ash. Gamushi and uh, Def, both of them, have played a lot of Ash themselves. And it has been banned a lot. It did lose one game here in the LCK outside of its, uh, you know, trip to the ban list most of the time. And Ooh. I love this. So I think BDD, absolute unsung hero. I think Beryl 100% deserved the POG by a country mile. But BDD was so good oh, a lot of on Natalia. You yeah. are right. A, a couple of really big... Um, uh, is he? You know, the, the one with the pebbles. On the oh, ground. yeah, the rocks. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Uh, I, I play a lot of Talia. I don't know why I'm blanking on this. I've, never, I've never actually call, Unraveled Earth. There you go. Called, but actually, I never call it that. Add, add, add a couple of great uh, Unraveled Earths as well. And I, I would... Oh, I was actually going to say I would expect oh, that they one opt into the more uh, obvious one, which is pick up the Azir. But this is a very clear signal of something we've seen Gen G say as well, which is that... In the Corky Azir matchup, doesn't matter who you're playing against, because BDD obviously is one of our best Azirs. Uh, it's hard on any given day, I feel like there's, you know, between Fake or BDD, uh, they can all make the claim. But right now, uh, uh, Corky, Corky's the guy. Corky yeah, Corky's is the good. Yordle that uh, haunts everyone's dreams, and picking Zaya into it generally does not bode well. No, I'm uh, feeling like that could be a negative as the Vi is going to be locked away here by Pyoshik. Does give them some hard engage um, to try and counteract the uh, the Corky, but not if he has package. Uh, and uh, we're just sticking with the range. The Jinx is going to be locked in here for Gumiyushi. We've no we know that this works very, very well. Into the Zaya, added protection with the Tom Kench as well. And Rakan, pretty obvious. 
to have those uh, the Lovers Duo there towards the bottom side. Could be an opportunity to grab a Renata too, in theory. Uh, has worked into Tom Kench in the past. But you could imagine that wanting to get that synergy would make a lot of sense. Keeps things pink as well, which uh, color coordination in draft is important, I think. But uh, I am entirely not that pleased with uh, KT's response to this Corky draft thus far. No, already T1 are in a position where they have an incredible amount of range, two really strong hyper carries, and there is a decent amount of engage for T1. I think the Rakan helps a decent amount, but particularly the Vi into Kench, you're just going to be neutralized. Like, Corky has a great way of getting away of a lot of your influence with his, uh, with his W, and then Jinx isn't really going to be as bothered as long as Karia is able uh, to maintain his position near Guma. And let's not forget that Karia, his Kench, is uh, the battle the battle variety of Kench. Oh yes, it's an engaged support. It, it really is. And we do see the Jarvan Man. I really like these. These are two champions, both of which we have seen owner have insane amounts of success on the Lee. It was fine. It wasn't really the problem, but it also didn't really uh, fix anything as mid lane pool really getting pinched here by T1. Now, the main thing is obviously is that what are you going to do? Corky is such a safe oh, champion. Oh. Wait. Opting out of range. It's not about opting, range. You're, so you're opting out of range and also you're you're picking Akali into Kench. Uh, K KT is taking some risks in this game. Number two and yeah, slam that poppy. Oh, Against Rakan, poppy feels Akali, so good. And Vi, please do. Oh yeah. Should have done it last game. The most comfy poppy angle that we've seen in the history of the world. And owner's going to let it tick down, but I have a feeling that this is almost a guarantee. Oh my goodness. Okay, where does Zayas go? He can lock in an Udyr if he likes. An Orn would be fine. This is the most. Okay, so we lost last game. Let's draft scaling, play safe, and win draft. Oh yeah. This is, this is a pivot, Atlas. I would. I actually love the Orn because you, I we mentioned the, the the like battle catfish for for Carrier. I mean, the Orn is a battle blacksmith uh, oh. for Zeus. The also, amount of solo kills on that champion he's got is actually kind of dumb. But it's Cassante instead. Yeah, and I, I do understand Cassante is a lot less uh, prone to uh, being punished, right? And that for me is a big difference maker. These is are that some fun champion? There, there are a lot of fun. I, I imagine Gwen makes sense. <laughs> um, do think that oh Kate there we go going to be so reliant on Barrel and Pioshik to work in perfect tandem to start off these fights, and and starting fights into Cassante, Poppy, and Kench, it's about as unfun as it gets, and you will have to engage because you have no ra no no range zero. zero. Yep, yep. You have the longest range thing you have is Needle perfect work. ult. Yeah, it's perfect ult. That's it. That's all you got. So. I think T1 are looking at this draft and they're like, no rush 20. 100%. And then and then we win the game. And you win, I think, quite hard. Yes. Uh, this is, um, so it's still possible for KT, but they're going to need to do some really Barrel's incredible gonna things. Barrel's going to have to barrel perhaps even harder than he barreled last game. Yeah. And he he barreled, I think, to, to about a degree that we uh, hadn't seen for many years. But... Uh, KT decided to do this. Um, that's all I got. As they um, often do. They do they, this to themselves. They did this on purpose. Um, a draft is not randomized. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, there, was a, there was a very interesting sign, but I'm not going to read that one out. Um, T1 are just going to wait and then win. Uh, if we learned anything yesterday, it's that Corky is completely broken. Um, we'll Just see whether... wait and win! Yeah, the BDD Akali, see whether that is going to be the answer here as we jump onto the rift for game number two of the Telecom War. Oh, I can hear some of the manic cheers from the KT fans, and I can understand it after the draft. <laughs> Because this is looking, yeah, it's uh, 
when you have a look, like often we do adjudicate based on range, based on what a team fight is going to look like in the later stages of the game. This could like because you can't do the same thing in solo queue, right? You can look at drafts in solo queue and think, oh yeah, this is going to do this and this is going to do that. Most of the time, it doesn't matter at all because a champion gets fed, champion doesn't get fed. Thing, uh, people do their jobs, they don't, um, and it doesn't quite work out that way. But T1 are a well-oiled machine. They've been around for a very long time with exactly this roster, and I have a feeling that they can just bide their time. Owner will be able to stop KT, most of the players, from doing anything that they want to do. There's a lot of dashes. And then they sit back and Faker delivers rockets and packages and stuff like that. And then it's over. I can't help but feel like that is going to be the outcome here, and we're just going to have to see whether KT can perform a miracle Three of these players pretty good at miracles, as we remember back a couple of years ago. But uh, they're not the defending champions anymore. It's in fact T1 that are in those shoes. Let's just see how it's going to go. As Rakan does have that 8 and 0 record that we illustrated, uh, and they're also already going aggressive. Uh, Gumiushi with the rockets actually fighting back very nicely, though. And the aggression will be thwarted. It's actually uh, uh, going to be used by T1, but not by KT. Yeah, so a uh, favorable summoner trade, but I do think Karia and Guma will have prior over the wave, although Barrel does seem to be helping on contesting. Um, Lovato is about to get hit, guys. I, I'd be a little bit careful. Yeah, um, Karia is not. stacking. One more minion, and now we see uh, KT back off. Yep. So we got to grab that melee minion. Deft gives them the good old thumbs up. As, of course, Deft yes. and Karia are pretty good friends. And Ona coming for the early gank. Deft with that ward down does spot Ona moving up the river. And there is the Tom Kench aggression. Beryl going to take that rocket back to the tower. Yeah, I don't think he's died. going in any further. Yeah, exactly. Beryl's level one. Yeah. Um, can he finagle a way out of this is the question as Ona throws a buckler at him and he's just dead. Uh, the answer is he cannot. Uh, Deft also may not be able to, does have to flash as Pyoshik walks over a ward. So they know that he's on his way in. The Vi at level 3 just not able to offer too much here. And T1 are uh, already stopping KT from playing League of Legends, which is what they're here for. T1 is not happy. Yeah, um, is he about to get solo killed? No, he's just going to flash. It's going to uh, at least keep him alive. But this lane is also looking a little bit dire. They're proxying the wave. Yeah. And why not? Oh, Pyoshik is rotating around. I don't know what a level one barrel is going to be able to do about this. He has, he has, he has E. He does. He doesn't even... <laughs> Pyoshik is soaking the... Uh, oh my goodness, Faker wants in on this. Teleport towards the bottom lane here what from BDD as well. I have no idea. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's B, B, B Ram. Uh, uh, a, A, R R Rab. Uh, it's, it is, it is, everyone's in the bottom lane. Um, that's what's happening. Uh, the top lane is also going back to base. We'll see whether they also teleport to the bottom lane. <laughs> oh, no. They're, they're not committing. Yeah, they're going to go back to the top lane. Uh, as Beryl at least has found a minion wave that he can spend some time with. 31 to 8. That's fine. Pyoshik salvages these. Easy. Uh huh. Surely. He has flash. Um, Owner is there, though. Yeah, Owner is here. Uh, as the Abyssal Voyage does come through, Pyoshik is going to pop out of that brush. Ona taking a fair bit of damage. No one's dead just yet. And yeah. T1 are still going to win out, I would assume, from this Guma position. is still full health. Yeah. We have, we have seemingly just committed to free v freeing in bot as well. And it, it has worked out very well for T1. So basically what happened is they won the level 1 trade really hard. A barrel and Deft overextended. Uh, then after that, owner. Didn't even, I, I don't even want to call it the dive, because he no. just walked up and killed Beryl. It, it was a wander forward, uh, is what he went for there. Now this, this is Beryl. Uh, yeah. <laughs> go from the game one to, he also went E, which I think he actually even used at level one to try and get as much damage in as possible, if I'm not mistaken. Might have done it afterwards to try and get away, but definitely not going to be feeling super good about that as, oh no. Yeah, this is not looking great here for BDD. Steadfast Presence is going to be there as Faker down very low. And that means that BDD is able to get himself out of the way. And Shroud, pretty powerful. 
Yoshik does have a slight level advantage, but as you can see, Vi into Poppy, ladies and gentlemen. Not exactly the most fun, as there's a heroic charge. And Pyoshik realizing that uh, this is not the kind of fun that he's looking for. There's first blood. Oh, sorry, second, as Perfect is also going to get solo killed by Zeus. Uh, it is it is, um, it is, is a complete catastrophe all over the map. It's, it's a very different game, Atlas. It is. Well, I mean, the early game was kind of like this, to be honest. Um, but not I, quite I don't, this. I don't, I don't think it was like this. No, the top lane Weird. was. The top lane definitely was. The uh, so, rest of the map was not. I think what we're learning here is that the problem was, in fact, not picking Poppy. Yeah. That's 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 what I'm learning. Uh, so, Pyoshik died, uh, disrespecting owner. Barrel died, uh, and, and had, Deft had to give up, and is now literally being doubled in CS because of uh, Barrel disrespecting. And then Perfect got 1v1 in a counter matchup, but I'm not going to harp on the Perfect thing too much because he is a rookie playing against uh, one of the best top players in the world. Well, as now maybe he can get carry out. There he's going to have to flash as Pyoshik walks. Um, the Abyssal Dive does come on through here as the Blade Caller coming down for Deft. But uh, Kerry able to walk it off, still had the Grey Health, still had a whole lot in order to keep himself alive. And so another visit to the bottom lane is going to go uh, unsuccessful here for Pyoshik as we have a look at this one more time. So what's really big here is that even the owner is a level down, he actually does a really good job of having Pyoshik tank. So, th because the Raptors are actually aggroed onto Pioshik, uh, he takes so much more damage than realistically he should, as here, just a level timer. This is just fundamentals, right? Yeah. Uh, perfect, gets read perfectly by Zeus, pardon the pun, and you need to be very cognizant, particularly in top lane like these. Le level 1 to 2 spikes is not only we talk about often, the level... Five to six is perhaps the biggest one in the game, right? Having an ultimate versus not having an ultimate is just absolutely ludicrous. And Zeus really finds a uh, small timing there. These are some good win rates uh, for both of our mid laners. They're good players. Yeah. Um. Okay. That's a, that's a lot. That is a lot. I, 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 given how the early games played out, I feel like we're reason feeling reasonably good about that win streak continuing. Because yeah. KT is one thing I think was trying to find big moments in mid game. And if they don't, then they can always win. I think there is a lot of scaling. Like Kali, Gwen are obviously really big threats. Zyra Khan, it's self explanatory as in how these two can team fight mid to late game, but you get outranged so badly. Even with the hard engage of Rakan, even with the hard engage of Vi being available there. You're, you're trying to hard engage it to Kench and Poppy and, and Kasante. It just. Maybe the answer is side lane. Yes, if if not for the fact that Perfect is getting solo bolo. Yeah, that's not that's 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 not great. As Carrier is also taking a fair bit of damage. Nice square, dig that. Uh, but he is just going to be able to walk it off. And this is all based on the fact that Carrier does not have a flash available. Deft has been able to at least pull himself somewhat back into this lane. Has himself his World Atlas as well. Kamishi has opted out of uh, picking that one up. KT still just trying to find a foothold. And Ona is back here once again. Another Abyssal Dive going to come down as there's the knockup. Yoshik does have level 6. Now they might be able to turn onto Ona here. Doesn't have the steadfast presence for the Vault Breaker that time around as the late caller was good. Deft is going to stop the aggression. So this time they answer. Oh, look as well. Faker was actually hovering there. In case there was a play, he was at the ready. Oh, BDD get hit by a few rockets. There's another one. Certainly Hex Drinker as well. And Faker only is a Hextech alternator, so not really in a position to go back. Hmm. As they just don't see each other. And that'll be the end of it. But Pyoshik is in the bot side jungle, but there isn't actually a whole lot for him to do. But he is there. But yeah, maybe he can. they can take down Guma if they can cancel the back here. Otherwise, he's going to be doing a whole lot more waiting. I don't think he wins the one v one against Carrier. <gasps> oh my oh, goodness! They have no idea. Okay, where where are you going, Pioshik? Yeah, this is the thing. I'm looking for is like he killing Faker. I'm that would be big, upside actually. Upside for this. That would be that would be good. Well, he doesn't have BDD, a lot of mana. Yeah, BDD getting a kill would be huge. It would. And and instead. He goes to the... Okay, there's an all-out. Uh, Perfect looking to try and dash his way out of this one. He has the needlework. He's trying to dodge. Oh! Is it going to be the return? It's not. 
Zayas is going to get another solo as Ona finds some knockups here. Deft with that Featherstorm getting into the sky. The quickness is good though, and Ona should be going down. But no, the Devourer is going to be there. Ona is spat out. He's got the huge shield. Is now BDD. Perfect execution, but into the back line. That's a kill for Gumiyushi. He's been waiting for for the entirety of game one, and now this one. Super Mega Death Rocket sails by though, and Beryl. He will live for at least a couple more seconds. And Carrier gets over that wall. Can he survive is the question. Perfect STP, doesn't want to commit, doesn't look like it. Yeah, BDD into the shroud, doesn't get the backflip. And so Gumiyushi will survive for the moment. Beryl is trying to battle dance his way around. They're alive for the moment as these rockets are flying in, but BDD just going to be taken down. It's a double in the end for Gumiyushi, sort of an extended triple as he's now on that killing spree. And while the top half of the map feels very reminiscent of game number one. In the bot side this time around, T1 is able to generate a large, large lead for Gumayushi's Jinx. Three and zero now. As, again, take a look here. Zayas which doesn't miss with these Qs. He does not. Sets up perfect. And he almost turns it around as well. If the solo kill hadn't happened, maybe would have had enough damage, but yeah. Not gonna be enough. Sometimes he just has too many buttons. Does uh, good old Cassante, and this was crazy. And it looks like Ona overstepped. So much damage goes down into this puppy. You then get saved by Carry. And look at look at Guma. How much ordering is actually able to do here? And then Faker teleport actually really big is able to make sure that Barrel also doesn't get to escape. And then this is just uh, very leisurely played out, right? As BDD hits that E, maybe they kill Guma on yep. the back end of it, so I think the flash investment makes sense, but Guma finds a sidestep, and then at this point, Karia can just take the aggro. Yeah, very, man. very smooth. And Faker, I uh, will need to get some translation as to what he actually said, uh, but probably feeling a whole lot better in this particular game. Perfect finds himself under the turret once again. And Zayas with full health is very scary. Def not going to get hit by that one. Good knock up there on Takeri, who's taking a little bit of damage. And Ona and Pyoshik once again back in position where they live in this bottom lane. 3v3 ensuing. Some more plates. Still a minute left before they fall down. Kimushi not going to opt in for it. And KT licking their wounds as best they can. In the end, it is a 4,000 gold lead for T1 in this early game. We mentioned that they also have the advantage in the late game. Uh, and so the story does not really have that much improvement as we get further into it for KT. The T1, they should be able to just cruise on forward. And Corky can be now played with all of his Timing. buttons as well, is now looking for Faker here. Is Pioshik does find the cease and desist. As Ona says, no, he would prefer it if they just left. BDD wanting to get this kill off on the back end as in goes Barrel. Doesn't quite get the quickness onto Faker who just walks. He just gets himself out. Ona not going to be so lucky as BDD, oh, the gleaming quill heal is going to come on through. Able to block out there as well as the tongue lash comes in. Good vault breaker as now Carry is moving away and BDD aggressively moving forward. I thought maybe he'd just take another casual turret shot just because he could. Gumiushi should be able to grab this turret at the same time. Def not going to be able to do too much to stop it. And the investment that made, it made pays off a little bit. They're not able to kill Faker, but they are able to at least get something. But they pay for it very heavily because Guma, uh, oh, they're going to test. Teleport yeah. coming in. Yeah, Faker teleporting forward. Doesn't have the package. Is now Carrier looking for the opportunity. That's Faker that takes the uh, Cloud Drake. Not sure how that one happened, but it happened. And now, Deft is just running for the hills. There is the Featherstorm. Bagumiyushi still looking for more. BDD might be able to find him. Pyoshik is dying here in the jungle up on the back end. That is Faker collecting that kill. Um, BDD is now walking around and things like that. And there is an alive Gumiyushi. So something happened. Gumiyushi lived in the end as Zayas doesn't take damage. And Perfect is really wondering how this champion is allowed to be this incredibly fed. Um, and the turret going to be taken down here. Zayas is just, he's too good uh, in this particular game. Yeah, coming into this match, I don't think any of it has any misconceptions about the match. That movement from Baker there. And also, if Pioshik hits that, actually, they 100% kill him, right? I think so too, yeah. Uh, and I think Pioshik did have his flash. Maybe flash Q could have been the difference maker there. Because without that Q hitting, you don't actually have the damage to take down Faker. And so much more has to be invested. 
And on the flip side here, getting this Drake wouldn't have really changed the outcome of the game. Two health. Pioshik smites at 902. Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> he's just like, I'm dead anyway. And so starts off the red button. He's like, yeah, it's... I, I'm, 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 a, I'm a glass half full kind of guy, Atlas, but in this case, I think the glass is empty if you're a KT fan. I, I don't... Well, Kabidi D is 2-1. That is something. There we go. Um, owner is a bit late on the steadfast presence there as well. There's a positive for KT. Um, they're looking to try and defend. Of course, this is a position that Zayas actually do form relatively well in uh, as a defensive champion. But when um, Beryl just gets eviscerated by a couple of buttons, you're thinking to yourself, why did we opt in for this? <laughs> what did? How did we end up here? Yeah. Why did we? What were the decisions that led us to this moment? Um, and there are a few of them. Um, Zayas is also absolutely massive, as we can see here. Carrier going to get engaged on one more time. He's really? pretty tanky, but there is Beryl. They are able to take down the Tom Kench. And Perfect finds himself into that back line, so no real answer here as BDD has a flank angle as well. Perfect oh. diving forward. My god, Gamushi's going to be taken down. And now BDD, the perfect execution. He doesn't get the Shuriken, but still, he's able to chase after the pop of the Ignite. It's ticking, and Beryl's able to lock it down, but the extension is so large. Zay is almost able to just clean it up, but it snip, snip, goes perfect. And the Gwen will still be able to find the kill. And KT somehow find an advantageous team fight. Farming shutdowns. That's that's what KT's there doing. There you go. Uh, it, it doesn't equalize the goal, but it makes it a little bit better. Karia gets caught. The one member that can't overextend on this team is him. And then we see them over it and BDD. This teleport, absolutely huge, because it forces T1 into a fight that they don't really want to take. Perfect actually doing a really good job with his needles there, taking Guma down low right from the get-go. And in a straight up front to back, I don't think KT's ever winning. But if you have this messy a fight with one of the biggest tools for keeping your backline safe, dying right from the get-go, that's, that's, that's KT territory, baby. And they capitalize as much as the situation allowed them it's not enough, uh, but my man Perfect, you know. He he's, did some he's, damage. He's pummeled in lane. He, there's going to be a lot that the coaches are going to have to say about that one, but he's trying his best. Indeed. It's something, Atlas. I mean, if they're able to make a positive play happen in a game like this where the early game went the way it did and the draft also uh, happened, um, I'm going to say that it's mostly positive things um, I would be saying. But let's see whether they can string a few of those together because it can't stop here. As Pyoshik, he's going in. Cease and desist down onto Gumiushi, but maybe that's what needed to happen for Pyoshik as Gumiushi's bullet follows him all the way forward. And now they are in the BDD? shooting rounds. BDD, does he have the perfect execution to try and lock this one down? Zayas is all the way underneath an inhibitor turret. He goes all out, but Perfect is kind of okay with it. BDD is real dead though, and Gumiushi, he is now tidying up as the triple kill comes in, and Zayas is still alive. He went for a journey amongst as many inhibitor turrets as he could find. And it's a clean ace. Is it just the game? Oh, Pyoshik is already alive again. Oh, it's it's 19 minutes. Yeah, maybe the death time is not quite long enough. It's an 8,000 gold lead, though, and whether the game ends right now, I think it's already over. So do we stamp this one? That's my question. Stamp it with what? Well, we have the stamp of approval in game one. Oh, uh, approval of what? Uh, that's up to you, Atlas. You're the, you're the one with the stamp. Oh, right. If, if it's the shellacking stamp, we're giving it that one. Uh, okay. I think that one... So it's that's, a different, that's it's Jake, a different that's stamp. That's Jake Spawn Tiberia approved, 100%. Um, but I don't know what this stamp is. Um, maybe it's the stamp of Gumiushi uh, just getting into an enemy base at uh, pre-20 minutes and uh, killing uh, three people. Zayas is just... And uh, Zayas doing whatever this is, yeah. Two turns. <laughs> And, and we, we... By himself! Guma's flashing over a wall! And in the last situation as well, like, we uh, didn't see what happened to Perfect here, but, like, Zayas just doesn't take damage. He did in the last uh, little engage, because there was a... Oh, okay. Um, there was almost a Baron attempt, but it doesn't happen. Gumishi's done a lot of damage, and for a Jinx, pre-20 minutes, or at least now, ticking over towards 20 minutes, that is a big deal. Gumishi probably pretty mad about what happened in the last game. This time around, 7-1-3 on this Jinx. 
As over goes Ona, Steadfast Presence gets a fair bit of value and package delivered! FedEx from Faker into the back line, absolutely obliterating them. That Baron was all a cunning ruse. And how many aces do you need? They don't have enough sleeves for all of these aces chronically. In fact, they do. That's two of them, isn't it? And they are just going to move towards the base and look to take this one down. Perfect does get some bounty gold, so there we go. But this game is done and dusted. And we are going to three in this telecom war. I think next time, perhaps a different uh, attempt in the drafting phase of this game. They went for it, it was a Hail Mary, and they sort of punched themselves in the face. T1, they'll claim it, and they'll now get themselves in a position to right the wrongs of game one. This is one of the most, um, we were not happy with how that game one went, and we will rectify the situation as much as we possibly can that I've seen in a while. Because that went from a game number one that was back and forth, that was exciting, to a SmackDown. Yeah. It was it was not close. BDD had a couple of moments that were nice. But that 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 was about it. I have to vote for POG. That's actually kind of a it's bot lane or jungle. Yeah. But Faker also did great. I don't Yeah, Faker Faker did good. Um I think um it might be the Guma Redemption arc uh for me. But Ona was I, there a I lot. I don't know. Yeah, I, um, I, I, I probably you know couldn't use it. I'm, I'm, I'm but happy. Zayas also played a very good game. Yeah, but it is. But it's a, it wasn't a about vote. We don't like those. It wasn't about Zayas, right? No, it's never um, about top lane. Let's be real. It's never about top lane. Uh, Faker was somehow online before your uh, 20 minutes with. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So was Jinx. Yeah. Jinx, Jinx normally starts playing the video game at about 27. I'm minutes. actually really happy that you mentioned, you know, solo queue where stuff doesn't really matter and stuff can just happen. Yeah. That's, that's actually <laughs> very apt for this game. Yeah, because it does matter when you've got professional players that are able to coordinate a beautiful game there by T1. We are going to take a short break. When we get back, it's our deserved game number three and the space. See you there. Ah, this pink is here. Ah, here. Ah, I'm going to kill you. Ah, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Pink. Ah, I'm going to kill you. 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 Ah, I'm going to kill 잘한다. 한 대씩 쳐야 돼 이거. 오. 빨리 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 빨리. 아이 죽여. 빨리 빨리. 잡을 건 잡아야지. 빨리 빨리 빨리. 빨리 쳐.
Welcome back to the space, everybody. We're here after game number two, where T1 absolutely stomped the hell out of KT. And I think it all starts in the draft, of course. We were talking about this a lot during while we were watching this. It just felt like T1 got a very big edge in this draft. And what did you guys think about this one, just starting right from the get-go? I mean, the draft was practically unplayable for KT Rolster because you have a bottom lane that's outranged by the Jinx. You have a Poppy who's going to absolutely control that bottom 3v3 in every scenario. And you drafted a Kali when there were so many better options available here. Even the Azir was up and then perfect. You know, he has a good matchup here. He gets the countered R5 into the Cassante. He loses lane in an isolated 1v1. He was never gonna have any assist because they have to babysit the bottom lane. KT just had such narrow wind conditions, I, I just couldn't even see them. Like, I, even with a microscope, I couldn't find them in this one. Yeah, I mean, at least if I'm trying to understand, like, what the what the, what the KT actually draft was trying to deliver it to us, is like, at least they're trying to go 50-50 with the bottom, like Zyrocon, obviously, they're just actually outscaling, and Gwen countering Cassante in theory, and also Kelly just trying to, you know, like, just trying to get away for, like, level 6 with the, especially with the level 6 jungler with, with the Vi, and they're trying to make the play around, like, probably around the objective play, like, there's a Void Burb, but the thing is, like, I think the T1, I think the play was, like, actually really, really accurate that they play how exactly they need to play as a team comm, I think they function really, really well in all the game, especially. Yeah, and that early game was kind of a insane uh, disaster for one side, but amazing for the other. T1 taking advantage of everything that works in their composition, and they dive the bottom lane. We could take a look at highlight number one, which was very early on in the game. This is like two and a half minutes in. Owners here already and looking to make some plays. And this is a disastrous situation here for the side of KT. Barrel gets caught by this, goes extremely low. Guma has so much follow-up range with his Q that it's really easy to get Barrel down super low. Then they play this patiently, crash the wave in here and set up for a very successful dive. And once you get a head down here in the bottom lane in this matchup where you have the Poppy into the Vi, the floodgates are open. You can just keep coming here. You could just keep pushing Zaya out of the lane. She's already down 15 CS here at this point. And the problem is like, it's not only one death, uh, this actual, the proxy and they're over farming this, it keep going. Like they, being ends up, they actually had to use a Kelly TP to cover bottom and even Faker TP bottom. And the proxy was kept doing it. The Vi was even farming in the turret, not, not the actual AD carry. And it's just like, it was too crazy. Yeah, and this time around, we didn't see any action around the top side, which as you guys mentioned, Never really was going to with these comps. You can take a look at the bot difference at five minutes <laughs> into the game. It's already this large. I mean, Deft ended up buying the World Atlas to try to catch up in gold. Uh, they, this is not a double support item situation where it's like, oh yeah, we'll get this nice tempo advantage. It was a emergency situation. Didn't solve his problem, but like I said, the floodgates are open at the bottom lane at this point because Guma has gold, he has range, he has a tanky Tom Kench with him and there is just nothing Vi can do. You're never going to have Pryo as a Kali to actually come down first and try to get anything done. And all the while, Owner is just constantly pushing Pyoshik out of his own jungle, so he can't do anything either. Gets a solo kill on Pyoshik as well. Uh, T1 just absolutely crushed this early game. Yeah, I mean, at least I think it's actually started from like level one traded. I think it was a way to pour for KT that both you was trying to Zyrocon, abusing Zyrocon, but it's against the Zing's top. And that actually opens up like you can't even cover bottom and just being on just waiting for getting dove. Yeah, it was definitely a big problem. We can take a look at highlight number two as well, which is essentially uh, very early on. Once again, go for a little fight here and it uh, is going to go in favor of T1 as they had already just gathered such a huge lead in that bottom side. I mean, the owner plays this so well because he absorbs the pressure, kites back down towards his teammates, has an ultimate that buys time, and then at this point you're actually no longer going to be able to win this fight as KT. Great devour here from uh, Karia to actually keep owner alive as long as possible. BDD does end up shutting him down, but now you're trapped under a turret here. Faker is here, and you're just losing so much time, so much farm here. I mean, Deft is not even here. He's in the mid lane. It's just such a disaster. And, and obviously, T1 is going to clean you up here. You lose time. Plate gold goes over. And this is the moment where the game ends. Yeah, I mean, that's the main thing. You said, actually, you mentioned the time, but the things are also, they are losing top. Like, they, he actually, they actually just the solo kill the two times in a row. And it's like, also, you bet me, like, they're already to push in the wave. And everything is like, it's so bad for KT. They actually all in about the, the actual fight, but they lost the fight, they lost the creeps, they lost the experience. You can't come back. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, at that point, the game was pretty much over. We can take a look at the POG here for game number two and see who does pick it up on the side of T1. Wasn't super obvious, but it is going to go into the hands of Guma. He did, in fact, get nine kills and ended up just becoming a wrecking ball. I don't mind uh, Guma picking up POG. I do think that a lot of this game was set up extremely well for him, um, and Faker ended up doing a ton as well. It's going to be a split vote just because it was such a stomp. Um, fastest game of the season, by the way. 11th fastest in LCK history. Uh, just very much a game that when you get this far ahead, you could really almost vote for anybody. Um, I probably wouldn't vote for Zayas, but pretty much almost anybody else. Well, I mean, still a shout out to Zayas. He solo killed two times in a row when he actually blind pick and then he got counter pick R5. But still, I think it's like the, the, it, the game was like actually not that actually it could be cleanest, but. It doesn't really matter because they were so far ahead and they make actually the game like really, really looks tom. And I think this play make probably like the POG on Guma. Yeah, well, we'll take a look at the votes all over the place as expected. You guys were the only two owner votes. I think that's fine as well. Definitely a lot of action down on the bottom side, but very split across the board and a good job from T1 overall. Guys, we are done here on the space. Let's go back to the casters for a game number three. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, chronically, if you had have voted for Ona, it would have been a three-way tiebreak. Yeah, been that, that would have been that would have been cool. That could have been cool. Um, but I think absolutely well deserved. I think we had the discussion uh, yeah. about Gumiushi as well. I think that uh, getting that far ahead on Jinx uh, is pretty impressive. But a lot of the orchestration, I think, to do with entirely the rest of the team. Zayas solo killing in That's a counter matchup, but I think so much of it has to do with nameplates. Um, it's, yeah. it's, it's, this is the toughest day um, for the first round robin for Perfect, unfortunately. It is. And as, as far as, te uh, as tests go, he's, uh, he's, not, he's not doing a wonderful job. But I also think that this game is a little bit different. Game number one uh, was, and I think, is, is very happy to take the hit for his team. And I guess a lot of top laners, you actually can get away with that. Yeah. Right? You can play a matchup where you're supposed to kind of get bullied. But you're playing into the, you know, keen, regular season keen notwithstanding best uh, top laner within the LCK. So it is always going to be tough. Does need to clean up the laning phase though, because I, I do agree. It's funny that he got solo killed twice and still Zayas was like the least likely POG angle. Just <laughs> yeah. Because it didn't actually end up mattering that much. I think maybe he was fourth. I think Carrier might have. He, he, he whoopsied a few of the engages. Yeah, he had like some flip. But the Devour was really good though. He had some good Devours and like yeah. it's, it's, it was just a, a T1 team effort really as the Corky will this time get banned away. Understand that they don't really want to just line that. And otherwise, T1 have shown that they are extremely happy to just pick that up early. Ash actually getting back on the ban list here, which to me signals that maybe KT is looking for an early pickup of that Lucian. Left as Barry very good at it. Is up and available for Could one of the first angle. times. But Melio can do both. Yeah. Melio first pick, something we were calling for all yesterday with uh, the Lucian first picks running amok, something that we don't necessarily like. Um, this also is a bit of a step away from what Beryl has been doing in the last two games, which has been Engage Duty. See who's going to be on that uh, for this next game. As Lucian, Nami could be the answer. Uh, we've seen that uh, many, many times. The Aphelios, Melio, I believe lost into the matchup for the very first time yesterday. But it was 4-0. and zero. And Nami is the expected next champion to be locked in. Uh, Probably on third rotation here, but in uh, second rotation, or rather second pick, Oriana makes a ton of sense. Oriana's biggest difference into the Azir, which is the obvious counter pick, is that her early laning phase is extremely oppressive for Azir. So while you, in theory, are able to skill very nicely alongside her, in practice we often see that teams bleed a lot of money. Now this is BDD, so I would not be surprised if he says, I don't care, I will pick my Pigeon. Yes. Syndra is another pick that we have seen come up a Warmth. little bit, um, but not going to be the case. It is just going to be BDD going back to his, by a large margin, most played. And KT, good pivot. I, I think yeah. they have the right call after what was a uh, little uh, uh, it feels like unnecessary risks taken in draft. I would say so. Um, although the Corky just being available to be picked is that part a large problem. 
Yeah, but I do think that that one is a little bit more excuse. Am I being affected by yesterday too much? Maybe. And I had bad dreams. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy Corky's bad. Let me, let yeah. me put it that way. But I do think that that part, I'm like, okay, but then the, the, the Zaya immediate follow up and then Vi into it, it was, it was, there was a lot. The Akali, I don't want to get into it again, but yeah. we saw what happened. We saw what it led to. It was a negative experience on Summoner's Rift. Um, we're going to have a final band come through here. The Udia taken away from Perfect, not going to be able to default back to that one. Uh, he could try to go for a Cassante if he wants to. He has been defaulting to that quite a lot. I imagine that you could even counterpick for jungle if you would like to uh, on T1 side and just blind the Cassante. We saw even with Perfect having the opportunity to counterpick it, it did not work out even a little bit. So a lot of options as the Jax is going to be taken away as well. One final ban, possibly aimed against Ona once more. Yeah, it looks like a R4 Cassante here. It doesn't really give anything away. Zeus has shown that he's very comfortable with a lot of the counters that are being played. Maybe Perfect's going to pull out something crazier because that might be the one angle that you do have, right? Try to really catch Zeus off guard with a matchup he hasn't played nearly as much because Cassante versus Gwen, obviously, oh, yeah. you're going to have played and scrimped a million times. Now, as far as ball delivery systems go, Rel is still a top tier one. We do see the Noxer and the Jarvan both being banned away, and it is going to be the counter pick still for Zeus. As owner says, I will just pick Rel again, I guess. It is not fun, but I am extremely strong at this champion. And, and now... And I'll make it work. Optimally, I would be saying Xin Zhao Rumble is just so good here. Um, that's where my brain would go immediately. I, I wouldn't mind that. But I don't know about the perfect Rumble situation. So giving him something that's a little bit more comfortable here. Uh, the Cassante, most notably, uh, something that he does like to default to. I think, yeah, Ramus is pretty obvious. Weren't you thinking that as well? No-brainer, really. Yeah. Viego is a pick that uh, Piyoshik has already pulled up in the series as well. I imagine he's going to go to something with a decent amount of early agency, because otherwise this comp is really relying on hitting like a mid-game. Zinzao would be great as well. You already mentioned it. I think Zinzao with a Milio is always going to feel great. It's a nice, and a nice aggressive pick. I can get you through some of these more dangerous early games. And I actually think that with the Jax ban, um, there would have been maybe some... Oh. Oh, 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 God. Okay. Yeah, that's not going to be a fun time for Perfect. It already has not been, but it's about to be even less fun. T1, Evergreen comp. We've seen them play this that, uh, comp like a million times. That Aatrox lock-in hit like a punch in the gut. It really did. Um, you know... Often, Cassantes can have an okay time into the Aatrox, but we've seen what Zayas can do when he smells blood in the water when he is on a champion like this. Uh, Perfect really could be in for it here. We'll see whether Pioshik is going to try and help him out or whether he is once again going to be left on that island trying to do his very best to just survive. I think T1 have a very well-rounded composition, spikes very hard in that mid-game and then allows you to control later game team fights, utilizing the shockwaves uh, with the added CC that they can layer on top of each other. Nice looking composition. This time around though, it is not a clear cut draft it's win. Playable it is, for, it is for yeah. playable. It is absolutely playable, except in the top lane. Um, nothing to do with the matchup. We, we, don't, we, don't, yeah, we, we don't talk about top lane, but outside of that, you have, I think, a lot more power in your composition. You're actually really well able to absorb the blow that comes in. Uh, the composition of T1 is very short range. But dealing with the mid game is going to be the tough part. If you can get to mid to late with this, and Deft can stay alive in these fights, a lot of damage being soaked by Pioshik and Perfect. There's an angle, but T1 with these type of aggressive mid game comps, I'd be worried. Absolutely. And the owner and faker uh, one two punch is going to be difficult to deal with. Let's jump onto the rift here for game number three of the Telecom War. <laughs> All right, fans very loud here in a sold out LOL Park for today's match. I uh, saw a very interesting um, tweet by Finn uh, earlier on today, uh, which was saying that queuing up for a game of League of Legends here in, uh, in Korea is often a very quick affair, no matter which league you're in, um, which, you know, division you're in. Um, but when the telecom was on, the queue times are extraordinarily long because everyone stops and they watch 
this match. And uh, that is, uh, it's definitely understandable. And if you watched game one, you're going to stay to the end um, because the drama uh, that is starting now uh, as BDD takes a little bit of damage. But that is just a little. As Faker throws an orb over, Gumiushi going to be in this little pixel brush here for a moment. Not going to get any wrap around Melios like we saw from Lehens yesterday. I feel like Lehens and Beryl sort of cut from the same cloth a little bit as far as the gameplay is concerned. You never really know what you're going to get. I think uh, the swings are a little larger for Beryl. Both ways, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, but not going to go for the craziness this time. And also, we can see that, you know, there's not a poppy here in this lane anymore. We're not going to see a uh, level one where Deft is unable to hit minions. And this time, he may even hit level two first, uh, which would be very nice for KT fans. And looking at both junglers, we have them starting on opposite sides of the map. So Pioshik possibly pathing towards top. And I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to at least give some assistance to Perfect. He's really been struggling in this 1v1. And as we have seen many a time, level one with Milio and Thalios is very oppressive. But a sidestep there from Carrier doing a good job of absorbing this initial blow. And with yeah. a W from Guma, they should be able to Ooh, clear that, that wave. Yeah, very. that was a very sad. I was waiting for that. The good old Ardent Blaze killing three minions. That thing barely does any damage. Feels fantastic there for Guma Yushi. Taking a bit of extra poke damage and not having very much control of the lane doesn't feel as good. But of course, Trying to play for getting all of your buttons. Uh, Lucian certainly does benefit from that. Everything feeling very, very needed. As Def, pressing Q with Severum, feeling very, very nice. And they do manage to get the crash. As Pioshik just uh, hoovering up his jungle. Very, very fast. Rel also not a slow jungler at all. Um, but Xin Zhao is certainly capable of getting through there. So both of these junglers are going to be finishing at about the same time. Uh, it's perfect. Let's have a bit of a check in here. He's actually. Kind of doing fine at the moment in this matchup into the Aatrox. He's not getting those level two. Exactly. So that's, that's He's a not big dead. Win. Uh, yet. True. Yet. Uh, we will see if Pioshik is actually going to pay attention towards the top side. I don't think that either jungler has been spotted yet, as we will now, obviously, owner uh, showing up with Vision should be able to clear out at least one of the wards with the Vision given by the plants, and then... We do have an early uh, Scuttler actually picked up by Owner, whereas Pioshik went for a full clear into back, I think, to cover a possible dive here. So this is uh, very nice for Owner. Now they will have the intel that he is, in fact, not yep. uh, looking for that dive, and we see Pioshik immediately diverting his attention as well. There is a lot of vision towards the bot side of the map, so I don't think a gank is likely to be successful. Ooh, nice bubble there. Getting his eye in. Carrier looking pretty Can't good there. Really as, nice. uh, Wind becomes lightning, and owner taking a bit of damage here as the knockup should be coming through. There it is. Yoshik doing well, gets through the aftershock as now BDD and Faker also fighting, but another wind becomes lightning, and there's the flash forward, and it's just a solo kill. All right. Not bad. He was swift as a coursing river. And with that, Yoshik showing again what he has to offer. Faker. All right, is this another solo kill? There it is, the clockwork, it's winding up, and oh no, Faker almost to the minions! That's why you drink your potions, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, oh my goodness, we're, it's, it's game one all over again. Um, let's pretend game two didn't happen, because that was barely a game. Uh, and this one's certainly keeping us on our toes. Is Kerry and Bar what is it, 1v1 central? We're just 1v1ing over and over again. The Tide Caller, blessing Carrier here, but he does get a uh, mega fire kicked. That is going to There's no uh, flash that on one. Faker. And he's also extraordinarily low. There's no flash on Pioshik either, as the orb does come in. Pioshik just pushing him away. And remember, BDD is also extraordinarily low. Now a 2v2, as the information of owner's position is not there. Faker kind of baiting for the moment. They might have suspicion that with Faker still staying around, I wouldn't be surprised if they think Hex Flash is available, though. Yeah, and there it is. Pioshik does come on through his BDD. Back to his jungler, and now Fake has moved forward. Owner is taking the brunt of this damage for now, though. Dissonance value huge. When becomes Lightning does spot the gap between the two of them. As Owner with his Aftershock not taking too much damage, but it is a stalemate in the end, and the intensity is once again fully ramped. Important sides up there. Well done by BDD and Pioshik. 
able to absorb the pressure coming through. Yeah, Pioshik there, when he found Owner, he'd already back, so he was sitting on double longsword. I think Owner really underestimated the damage that came through as... Uh, oh, we're back man. to Arab. Yeah, just and an Arab. Now there's a shockwave. Beryl somehow gets caught, but the fire kick is going to get Owner away. Pioshik now dashing forward. The bubble is going to connect, and Faker takes down the jungler. And now Beryl having to get out of there. He may have a campfire, but he doesn't have too much more, and he's still going to get knocked up. There's the ebbs and the flows, and Carrier locks down that one as well. I, he could have walked to his turret. Yeah, I would say, yeah. Um, right? Like... So, so this is really well done. Uh, you see as well, Faker is trying to move over, but BDD actually is able to uh, stay close. And if Faker walks up too far, he will get killed by Pioshik instead. And Pioshik, really nicely done, just has a Daniel ton of damage this oh. early in the game. <laughs> and whereas Rel can win 2v2s, uh, it's not going to be that. Faker was apparently 1 HP, like not, not a metaphorical 1 HP on that initial uh, play uh, between him and BDD. And then he really good bubble from Carry. And then here I'm like, <laughs> yeah, Barrel, you just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> you were fine. Hmm. You were okay. You were out. Well, oh, Barrel, as it stands, that is going to net T1 about a 1,000 uh, gold lead. Not end of the world or anything for, for KT, but we see the game continuing down this path. We could, uh, yeah, we could need some help, uh, the two of us. It might just be a little bit too intense. Is Kumushi going to continue that? Barrel, oh my goodness, just culled. The bubble not going to connect. If that had him, he was most definitely dead. As once again, the battle ensues between the mid laners and the junglers over this control ward. Oh dear. Barrel looking for that back. It's not going to work out here as he almost just dies. And sometimes you get caught back and. And they do manage to clear out the vision. So another attempt at Wait, going home. Is a replay? Yeah, we're seeing more replays. Uh, as Pyoshik going to get shockwaved once again. He dashes on top of Faker here, trying to keep himself up, but it does not work. And a Magnus Storm comes through. BDD a little bit late on that one as the bubble is going to get shifted out of the way of. Crash down to come forward. Does he have the Shattering Strike? The answer is no. Not going to opt in for it. They're just going to take their wins and move on back away, and T1 just taking incremental advantages in this game. And that looked to me like a really big miscommunication, because Pioshik going that aggressive when BDD has his ultimate does need to lead to them actually committing together. Yeah. If they do, then maybe at least they get a counter kill. And as mentioned, the 1v1, Zinza is always going to win, uh, just does too much sustained damage, and Rel doesn't really offer that much outside of CC. But if you're 2v2 and Faker gets to land a shockwave on Zinza, especially without ult, as we saw there, there is plenty of opportunity, and oh, I was about to say, if he steals that away in the nice level 6, that would have been huge. Not going to be the case, but that mid-jungle 2v2, you'd really hope as a KT fan that it would go more the way yeah. of Pioshik and BDD, but instead Faker already getting very, very fed early on here. So he's now ahead by about 600 gold. You can see here on this bottom side as well, Gumushi Carrier doing a decent uh, job. Getting that money together. They don't even have the double support items either. That is uh, something that Deft and Beryl have already purchased. Just the Noon Quiver done here for Kumiyoshi. And let's check it out one more time, as we'll see the moment where BD could have potentially tried to shift on over, as maybe this is the opportunity. Maybe didn't have Conquering Sands for long enough. Or something like that. Might have also been because they already had the knowledge that Carrier was roaming up. So an elongated play would have really worked out. But at that point, Pioshik, I think, didn't have flash nor ult. So uh, would have been, would not have been able to get out. So maybe they were cutting their losses. We don't know about the comms. Yeah. Could be uh, could be the reason. But the big thing is that T1 got a big win out of that. And Faker didn't have to commit any summoner. So still has flash available, which does make it a lot harder for BDD and Pioshik to find a counterplay on this Orianna. Faker now. Oh, getting swept underneath his turret. BDD finding a good opportunity, gets the flash from the Orianna here. I don't hey. think it's a kill. No, it's gone. It's a there great play though. Yeah. Fix the issue. Beautiful. Big win. So, Def now under fire. There's the flash. Magnus Storm crash down coming on through, but Owner not able to lock him down. Red White Guns are pretty good as the culling is blocked here. As Pioshik, right place, right time this time to save his bottom lane. Still, there's not a lot left available. Shockwave does find the air. As Faker now still looking for it onto BDD. Health bars very even, and this orb 
Needs to be respected. BDD gonna have to go back. Does have teleport, as does Faker, as Deft here. Still has that Crescendum Severum combo. Moonlight Vigil comes down onto Carrier just to say, please leave me alone. And now, Ona coming back one more time. The bubble just barely misses, or maybe it landed. And Beryl had the ulti just in time, but we didn't even see the animation. That's how close the timings were. And Zayas getting over the wall. We haven't really checked in on that top side just yet. He is going for the Lethality Aatrox that hey. he very much likes, though. Perfect improving. Hasn't Absolutely. been solo boloed. Hasn't lost the plate. And, and, and uh, we say it jokingly, but honestly, that's as good as you can expect. Oh, 100%. Uh, when getting counterpicked in this scenario and given how the first two games played out. Uh, looking at everything that's happened so far, though, there's still a pretty sizable lead for T1. They'll be able to get the Dragon here as well. But as long as KT can get to a mid game, with this type of lead from T1, I think that that's about as much as you can ask for, especially with your early insurance plan of Zinzao not really working out so far. Um, it doesn't solve the issue because there is still a, a Storm Razor is now done. We have Imperial Mandate for for, for carry, uh, Faker almost gonna finish his or gonna finish his item soon. Same for Zayas. There's a lot of mid-game power that you need to deal with. But I think KT's comp does have the power to like if slight overextension comes through. Oh. Might still be able to make a way through, and yeah, KT... not going to find it. Made it in good positioning, defensively. Yeah, keep it safe. That's exactly just absorb the pressure. And in the longer fights, I think that's where you have a shot, especially once Deft gets a little bit further ahead of the curve. They go for the double support item. That could be a difference maker. Well, owner is going to take the tempo advantage and turn that into stealing away this red buff. That should be gained here as uh, Barrel throws down a ward. And they're going to meet back towards this bottom side. No plates taken here for KT. T1 getting through quite a few of them. One in bot lane and two in mid. Bubble connects onto Barrel, but he's not too worried about it for the moment. And now Ona looking to try and make another attempt onto BDD. Good positioning from Kyoshik as Emperor's Divide misses. And now BDD's going to get punished for it. The Magnus Storm's beautiful. The Shockwave's better. And there is the kill on the Azir. Kyoshik will find the knockup onto Ona. They may not be able to get another one. But still, feels like damage has been done. They've just given a kill to the two main players of this uh, KT in uh, game number one as Be uh, Carrier could be in trouble, doesn't find the bubble. As the culling is going to be the answer, Moonlight Vigil comes down as owner is here. Good positioning from him. And we'll see whether they can find some sort of dive. Deft is doing his best to keep them at arm's length. And BDD doesn't have teleport. He's not going to be helping Aww. out here, so that should be... This turret taking a but whole lot of hurt, and they're zoned away from the experience. It's a disaster here for KT bottom lane. And up until this point, KT still had a, a, some semblance of agency, but after that mid lane 2v2 fails, not only do Faker and Owner get further ahead, but immediately Owner paths towards top, Fa or towards bot rather. Faker does a halfway rotation through the jungle as well. So Deft and Barrel now have to give up uh, two, waves. Any, yeah, two waves. So many plates going down just before the plate caught up as well. Now the lead, 41 growing to a solid 3k. Luden's companion done here. And still an angle. Again, the team fighting power for KT is something I think we have to hold on to. Yeah. If we want the, this game to be as fun as game number one. So far, looking a little bit more similar to game number two, but not as bad. You know, not feeling as completely over as that one was, as Faker makes his way down towards this bottom side. A little bit of a disengage there as Beryl feels like he has a target on his back. There is the Crescent Guard. Teleport. Oh, it's going to go wide there as teleports are coming through. Ona might just be dead. There's the knockup. And in goes Perfect. Can he find Faker as the all-out comes in? Special delivery as he's also fire kick, trying to go even further in. I'm not sure about that one. Um, but I like the gusto from the young man as Infernal Chains. Deft is bubbled, pulled back and destroyed. Double kill for Kumiyushi and T1 once again out on top. A big misstep there, unfortunately, for Perfect. Goes a little bit too ham. Could have just taken the win. They got the kill, kept their bot lane alive as we go back to this play. It's just with the movement speed. I actually think it's the movement speed from Rel that allows... Uh, um, Faker to, to get away there, or the movement speed from his uh, from his speed up, but as a result, he just walks it off. Yeah. Right, and without that, 
No opportunity. Here, owner goes way too deep. And initially, the punish looks amazing from KT. Right? They're able to take down Morel. Perfect. Finds Faker. But unfortunately, there isn't any follow up. Only Barrel was close. Yeah, and uh, Zayas is in position as now Pyoshik is very dead. Super dead. Uh, he is going to get stabbed there. Owner is going to be able to collect that kill. And Def trying to do what he can underneath this turret here, but it is on its last legs. B2D down to 50% as well as Faker is looking relentless on his Orianna. And KT feels like they're circling at this point. It is 4,500 gold to lead. Here for T1 as B2D once again doesn't find it, but the Shockwave goes wide as well. Good sidestep there from B2D. Orb awareness. Something that you certainly need oh, no. to have is all. Oh, oh no! Here's the jump scare. As good flashes do come on forward, but Beryl, he ain't gonna be so lucky. The culling comes through, and that is going to take down the Milio. Gumushi still has more though, as bubbles having to be avoided left, right, and center. Deft will take down the last cannon. That should at least abate some of this aggression for now. T1 with the mid-game explosiveness, really putting a lot of pressure on KT. And it's a very different game. For, game number one was complete and utter mayhem. Game number two was a absolute stomp. Game number three feels like there was a couple of plays. This one, uh, not so much. This was just Pioshik being out of position, trying to take an objective he's not allowed to yeah. in the scuttle. But a, a couple of these plays, if they would have gone just a little bit different, I think KT could have actually had a good shot. I sidestep there by BDD, but still there's a lot invested just in keeping him alive and he still gets the health bars low. So when owner comes through, they get a free kill. And so much damage is being done to the base. Or rather, you know, the, the whatever is left standing of it for KT. Baker really taking this game into his own hands here. Over double the highest damage being dealt by KT players as Gumiushi trying to challenge that with a little bit of poke on the depth here. As him and Carrier clearing up the wave and this is the thing, when T1 gets an advantage like this, they're not fighting just for fighting's sake, they're fighting around enemy objectives. So they manage to get that pick off kill, but that also leads to an outer turret going down, decent damage on an inner turret at the same time, and not giving KT any room to breathe. It's gonna be a very tough task getting back into any sort of control here, now that this snowball has really started rolling down the hill. Of course, we said that things were difficult uh, in the past for KT, and they have found themselves some miracles, especially three of the players that are on this particular squad. But it's a tall order here today in this particular game. Kyoshik, though, not huh. giving up. He is not. He's looking for Carrier. Tidal Wave does find Death to stop the Aphelios from getting any closer. Perfect has popped the Ghost, trying to find his way in, looking for the opportunity there. Gets on top of two, but he's still taking a lot of damage. And BDD not finding his entrance way either. No flashes available. And I like the fact that KT is still looking for it. Didn't find it on that angle though. That's what they got to do. But it feels like the X factor of game number one, and we all know what it was, uh, just isn't there. Because Barrel right now playing an enchanter. Eventually, Death will become an absolute menace. But I, I don't think we're gonna ever see that point. This is exactly what I was afraid of with this type of composition for T1. The mid-game acceleration generally is very tough to deal with. Oh yeah. And right now they're up almost 7k gold, two dragons. There's, it's, it's a relatively weak dragon, which is nice for KT. That's something. Uh, but it's gotta come down to getting some of these bounties. And we saw them get a big team fight from behind in game two. Don't forget, that did happen. It did. It didn't. It didn't matter, but it did happen. It'll be uh, definitely difficult uh, in this one because T1 have been just fighting exactly where they need to. That's, uh, I feel, one of the biggest things is they get that little bit of an advantage and then immediately the first round of turrets all fall down. KT haven't even be been able to get to any so far this game. And so Zayas now with his Edge of Night. Two items now completed. He is a very happy Aatrox. Not too afraid of too much. There is at least the Iceborne Gauntlet done for Perfect. He's going to be able to punch. Does have a fair bit of armor. But he's going to need a whole lot more to deal with the amount. Why of not? That they're going to do. And yeah, I mean, when in doubt, do Baron. As Carrier, just going to try and spy where everyone is. 
Gumushi moving on over. Pioshik able to sidestep the bubble as they do pull off the Baron for the moment. He's at least bought them a little bit of space here as... All right, Yoshik just going to go in. There's the Crescent Guard to try and deliver Ona into that, I guess, amount of damage. But the Shockwave is so big from Faker! And yeah, Moonlight Vigil lands, but the damage is well and truly done. Perfect trying to do what he can, but he's wondering where the heck his teammates went. They are in the Death Chamber, and sometimes Faker just finds it. And KT! I think that T1 actually commits to the back. T1 was already fully pulled off, but I don't think they really had a way of knowing. Vision was being denied. KT didn't want to lose further grip of that game, and in trying to pull it back, they uh, invited an unfortunate disaster in the form of that shockwave. Yeah, uh, another flash has to come out there um, as BDD gets Faker away from the inner turret. But he was just pushing up the wave. They managed to get the Baron for free. And T1 now moving ever closer to a 10,000 gold lead at 22 minutes. Shellackings after shellackings, as it turns out, it felt like this one could be closer. But every early fight goes a little bit T1's way, and then the mid game, that is where they just destroyed them. And this is something we saw in the bot lane fight as well. These attempts from KT to try and isolate and burst down owner. Of all the guys on, yeah. on T1, uh, that's not the one you want, but at the same time, like I don't, I don't think there's anyone else that was mispositioning that you would be able to get uh, get a play on. And now, Rebel Baron power play. It's only 1300 so far, uh -huh. which that's 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 a go as good as it gets. It's almost 10k at 22 minutes. Atlas, let, yeah. What do you say? Not a lot. Well, uh, you'd say that they, it's not over till the Nexus falls. You can say things like That's that if you classic. want to. It, yeah. is, it, is, it is a bit of a classic. Is it true? Yes. Yes. Um, is it likely that KT's Nexus oh, is the one that falls? Yes. It is, a sta is it a statement with value to say that, you know, it's not over until the Nexus falls? No, not really. Not in this game, I don't think. I don't know. It might have entertainment value if you've oh, heard it be. for the first time. We, we could poll the viewers. See whether that's something that we should just take out of our repertoire. Could opt out. Or of use it. more of. Or use You more. don't well, know. Yeah, that's Maybe the true. people love it. That's true. I'm making assumptions. And I don't know. Well, I'm assuming that they uh, do, in fact, know what, what game state we're currently <laughs> in. Well, Inner Turret is going to fall. That is the last remaining one. Six to zero on turrets. KT have managed to get two kills so far this game. Outside of that, not much more. Uh, this Chemtech Drake, not long for the world. T1 going to get themselves to Soul Point. How consequential that is, not entirely sure. It's perfect going to do his best to try and get himself some damage on this outer turret, but even that, he is not confident enough to stick around and see through to the end. Zayas will be able to get over here. Doesn't get the cannon, but I don't think he's too worried about it. And Leandri's is what BDD is looking for uh, next here. But a two-item spike is what he's chasing after. I mean, there is a Majai's on Faker. He's got a very cool-looking gun, which is apparently a Luden's gun. I thought it was a Hextech gun, but it isn't. It's the, it's the Luden's variety. I kind of wanted to call it Hextech Echo. I, hey, Ech you Echo have, is you have, Zorn, you have, you have naming rights, Atlas. You know that. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll follow. That's what you deem it uh, worthy to be called that, then I, I will... I'll think about it for a bit longer. I'll, I'll, I'll follow you. Don't uh, you worry. Zayas still has his shield. That has some tide calls. Blessing following him around as well. As KT picking up the pieces of their base. Good news. Uh, they still have inhibitor turret. Yeah, I was I, actually I was, was going to say that. That was there my you go. point. Yeah, there's no upside, baby. Uh, Serpent's Fang done for Guma here. Really a, a clear signal that he doesn't like shields. He, he does deem, in fact, that the game is over and done. Uh -huh. And uh, we do have double blood song on either side, or rather, blood song for Deft, blood song for Guma. Not we didn't even talk about it, but I think uh, Barrel also went blood song Rakan last game. Uh huh. Which is definitely one of the more interesting ones. I liked uh, Ox telling me about Bloodsong Nautilus being yes, cool. Yes, but that one I get because you, you know, yeah, there's Nautilus things you can do. Yeah, auto a lot. So like that makes sense. With Rakan, I'm like, by the time he was making a decision as to what evolution he wanted to go for for his World Atlas, I don't think the decision really held very much weight. It, it did not. No, I, w I, would, <laughs> I would, I would wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. So we're waiting for an objective to spawn. 
and then T1 will take the objective. And then at some point, they will get the next Baron and push it to the base. That could even be the next objective. That will by, by strict timer, it is. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. Get a bit of a timeout for one minute and 45 seconds. Uh, T1 are going to use this to try and get a little bit of a siege on. Oh. That is going to get them towards the enemy base a little bit. They Free know objective they... pushing. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And you can see even KT weren't quite ready for that level of uh, proactivity. Rally the troops to mid. Indeed. Uh, there is a extremely limited uh, amount of vision available here for KT. So realistically, even someone like Perfect, who is the tankiest member on the team, isn't really able to ever going to step up because if he's meted by Faker or met by Faker or Guma or even Zeus, he just kind of evaporates. So KT has no chance or no nothing to do besides just catch waves in their base. Like looking at itemization breakpoints, I don't think we're particularly close against one that truly is going to be the difference maker. I mean, Deft getting another item is probably the most yeah, but, impactful. Uh, yeah, but uh, I, I think, I, I don't know, he might be sitting on like five to 800 gold, and right now he only has a... When we were checking in, it was about 800, but he might have actually bought the cloak after that. So. Yeah, suffice it to say, don't think he's getting his third item before the, the soul's taken, but maybe you can somehow get a better Elder fight. Flip! Uh, well, that, that's six minutes in the future. I don't think we're, we're getting there. All right. Yeah. That'd be fun, though. We it would be fun. that in the Telecom fun. War Game 3. Cool. That's on my Christmas list. I guess Christmas is a fair way out. Well, I'm sure we'll get what's on your Christmas list at some point. An Elder Flip? Heck yeah. yeah. Not right now, though. It's not feeling like it. As uh, perfect. Not going to get bubbled. Is KT looking a bit frisky with their positioning? Uh, they have to. Uh, once Baron is gone, the game is uh, basically gone... No matter what, but all summoners are available, right? And, and, and we joke around a lot, but realistically, who do you try and engage on here? Lucian is mega mobile. Carry has positioning very defensively. Faker still has flash available and is such a big threat. And is Baron yeah. about to be gone? All or nothing for KT. Yeah, and they do manage to get some vision around here as Pyoshik takes so much damage here from Gumiyushi. Testing their new items. And look at this Baron. It's already very close to going down, and I don't think Pyoshik will be able to get in there. They do manage to secure it, and now Gumiyushi looking for even more. Good fire kick to interrupt the culling as in goes PDD, finds three, but there's no one else there. No one's in the vicinity, and he's taken down. My god, this Zayas damage is absurd. And it's a decent little attempt there. Last breath, perhaps, from KT, but T1, they snuff them out, and now they're looking to clear up this base and claim the first Telecom War of 2024 as their own. And it was a rough start for T1 in game number one, getting taken down by KT. But game two and game three, even though this one wasn't as fast, a completely this different one, story. I think the emotional damage of this particular game was higher. It's worse. Yeah, game number two felt like you could blame the draft a little bit. This one was more just, nah, man, we're better. And they were this time around. Incredible performance. Faker, great game on the Orianna. I think Owner's Rel, absolutely brilliant. Some great bubbles from Carrier there as well. Um, top laners matter. Remember that, guys. They do. Uh, but Gumiyushi also claiming another victory for the uh, Lucian Nami in this matchup into the Aphelios Milio that has been very difficult for other teams to do, especially in week one. A well-deserved bow here for T1. And a big win for them as well. T1 does have a pretty strong strength of schedule. Uh, we obviously have them already face up against Gen G. We'll be facing off against Hanwa next as well. And obviously, given uh, the performance of this team internationally at the end of last year, they, they won Worlds in case you missed it. Yep. Uh, they are always going to be one of the front runners for the LCK. And we saw, I think that third game in particular, that really, to me, as you pointed out, Game 2 kind of felt like a freebie from the moment that the Level 1 happened to draft. Uh, really gave uh, very little agency to KT. But in Game 3 in particular, those mid-games, man, they are so tough to deal with. And it oh. really feels like the only one that can actually withstand the brunt of that blow is, is Genji. And we'll see. Hanwa, they're going to try. Uh, I think Sunday. That's what's going to happen, and I'm uh, very Final excited. match of the week. Final match of the week will be Hummer Life Esports versus T1. 
Then next week, guess what? T1 versus DRX. T1 versus Bro. See whether they can withstand that strength of schedule, Chronicler. I <laughs> think they might be able to. Uh, things do uh, get a little bit easier uh, for T1, moving a little bit further forward. That should solidify their position towards the top of the standings. And that's why this week's matches are so incredibly important. Because if they had a fallen to KT and Home of Life Esports, then it's a battle for the middle. Now it's a battle for the top. And on the flip side for KT, looking at today, game one, I think, is really what you see when you think of this team performing at their best. Uh, Barrel being as good as he was, I think, was kind of mind-boggling, like the extent oh, yeah. to which. Uh, and then, unfortunately, I think both Game 2 and 3 in very different ways are also the lessons that this KT team is going to have to take to really hit those highs every single time. Because the draft in Game 2, we were very unhappy with. And then in Game 3, it felt like the flippiness that you kind of associate with a lot of these players did kind of come back. Uh, Mid-jungle really getting outplayed just straight up in the 2v2, even with the early kill that Bioshi got. Perfect, his growing pains unfortunately continue here, but uh, we'll see. I do think he has a little bit more, or deserves a little bit more time, uh, but there, there will have to be progression, right? Oh, yeah. Against and Deus, I think it's fine, uh, but we'll see as KT face off against more opponents. And there's also the fact that, you know, we're talking about mid-jungle here for KT. Well, BDD and Pyoshik haven't had very much time playing with one another. Yeah, They've been on a lot of similar teams uh, in the past, but haven't had the chance to really uh, oh. play with one another. And we're going to have a look at this one more time. That was BDD finding an Emperor's Divide that... If an em Emperor's Divide happens in the forest, um, and then no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound? No, it just gets three flashes and does nothing, unfortunately. Yeah. And... That, that's, that's always a tickler, right? When you play against T1 for KT, that obviously was a step too far for them. Um, can't take away what they got from today. I think that the individual performances are a little bit up and down, but yeah, game number one can be replicated against some of the major teams. I do think KT is definitely going to contest more towards the top end of the ladder. And uh, they're a fun team to watch, nonetheless. Uh, unfortunately, these last two games may be not the best example of that. No, but a good example of the team that was the best in 2023, yeah. continuing on. And we mentioned that they could be having a slower start to the season, um, trying not to go too hard, getting back into it. Um, they took a slow start in game one. They did, and, yeah. And then, uh, and then really made sure that they did not lose to KT after that one. And I think, you know, maybe some of it comes back to KT chose T1 in the playoffs. I will defend that decision. It does until... really, it adds to the drama of oh, Telecom War, though. I do does. love bringing it it's up. It's just, just another layer. It is. There's uh, so many more. But I think it's time to throw it over to the space to get their thoughts on this final game of the tele Telecom War and to congratulate T1. Thank you so much, casters, for your wonderful work here at this series. T1 able to take the victory in the Telecom Derby. Two to one. First game, you know, getting a little bit dicey there, maybe trying out some stuff, but eventually, especially in game two and then eventually game three, T1 came out ahead, kind of showing off what they're truly made of and took a little bit of time, but we did get there. The T1 victory, two to one. What did you guys think about this game? I mean, the way that we'll just take game two out because that was a big outlier, right? But in game one, we had. KT play a draft where execution was super important and they had to kind of constantly be pushing the envelope. I think with this draft, they didn't necessarily need to be the ones who were being the aggressors. They didn't really need to play this game on a knife's edge. And they gambled super hard on some of these plays they didn't have to in the early game, especially Pioshik and BDD. And with this draft, they could have just sat back and looked for later game 5v5s and tried to play around the solution a little bit more, try to disengage against Rel. There were a lot of ways this could have gone very differently for KT. But they gambled, you know, they tossed a coin on some of those early fights, they lost, and the game just kind of fell apart from there. Yeah, I mean, too, I don't know, I think the for KT rolls are for Pyoshik, I think especially he actually had a, you know, a solo kill on jungle and it's starting really, really well. But the thing is, I think when you actually have Azir into Orianna, you need to actual pressure, otherwise the Orianna will keep poking. And also Zinzo, it is a stronger in 2v2, but I think it's just like the T1 as a 2v2 owner and faker, they just outplay like multiple times and it actually ends up so it's just a really favor for T1. But I think that I really 
kind of could understand like why Pushy was overplaying because he was fed and that is the kind of has to be the win con otherwise like you know top is top is already losing this creeps is the score and even bottom were not like clearly winning so i think they were trying to be at like just fighting around the mid yeah, and it felt like the coordination between BDD and Pyoshik was not 100%. Like, sometimes Pyoshik was going in, BDD was a little bit slow, it wasn't a little bit as sure as Pyoshik was, so not quite there, and T1 were able to take advantage of that. We can take a look at the first highlight here, uh, 14 minutes into the game, down towards on the bottom side of the map, where T1 got ahead. I mean, you can just see a speed up here on the owner from Faker. They're wrapping around, and unfortunately for KT, this isn't really a great angle to win this fight, but they have a turret, and that is the one boon, right? This turret's alive. It was a great Crescent Guard to isolate owner. They think with perfect teleporting down, they can actually continue the play. It's a pullback as well onto Faker, and at this moment, you know, you could just cut your losses and say, okay, we don't have the follow-up to actually catch and kill Faker here. Let's back off on the play. We killed owner, but again, they're playing on the knife's edge. They're trying to fight their way back into this game, and then just one small mistake, one small overextension. Great follow-ups here from Caria. And it's just a disaster. Yeah, I mean, this is really sad to see, like, from the perfect actually perspective. Like, he was actually trying to better with the better angle with the delivering actually the faker, but it, the angle wasn't great. Like, he should actually learn like when he actually need to st uh, stop it. Like, he he tried it. It was a nice nice try. It was good to shot. It. And it's like if it's fail, then he he should know how when it's like has to back. And it's like it's just too overplayed, and it actually being ends up making the teammate also making the mistake. Yeah, if you make one mistake in that scenario, you know, T1 is going to take advantage of that. And I think Perfect needs some more time, to be honest. You know, he is new to the LCK. He is one of our rookies this year, so hopefully he can develop in the right direction. Let's take a look at highlight number two, which was the 21-minute boom-boom damage in the mid lane where they were trying to get towards this Baron. Teleport coming through here. You can see from Perfect again at an odd angle, and Perfect wants to isolate once again Owner. The only target he can really pull in, but it allows Owner to just simply ult, and then they have a really nice turn. Look at Guma's positioning throughout all of this as well. Really under no threat, and then Faker, he had great ultimates all game long. The follow-up Nami here, and Guma's just ready to execute Deft. The only one who's left there after the front line is burned away. BDD, no agency in this fight whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the reason why, I, even though they, the T1, they knew that like they're gonna face an into Aphelios, and they, I think that that's the re main reason why the pick actually Orianna first, so make sure it can actually zone control, and this is the reason why. And even to like Zinzao and Azir, they're gonna come in, so like just making sure that the Faker's just saving his ulti and just pressing the Q of, of the middle of team fight, and they can't actually just enter it. Yeah, we saw that many different times. You know, I think T1 were pretty heavily ahead in this game, so we didn't get a lot of examples, but that one was really a good example of what you were talking about, Huni. Let's take a look at the POG here for the side of T1 in game number three. I think I had my eyes on that mid lane, but let's see who does actually pick it up. It will be Faker after all. Seven, zero, and seven. I mean, Faker had a great game, uh, obviously staving off that early pressure with Pioshik and BDD. There were some mistakes, to be, to be sure, with BDD and Pioshik there, but Faker capitalized on all of them. And his ultimates were really, I think, the most impressive part of this game, his lack of hesitation. And even going for that kill very early on in the laning phase and trading flashes, like, he was so confident this game, and it really showed in those later fights. Look at this sidestep here as well. He just didn't miss the mark. Yeah, I mean, it is like kind of BDD and Pyoshi had like bad coordination between two, but still like it's really impressive the how the Faker to play it was like really, really solid. Like when there's like five action in all the game, but he has no single death until actually the Nexus exploded. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of intense. When you just go back and watch the replay of this game, there were like eight different fights around the mid lane, and he got through all of that. We did have a couple of votes for jungle, which I think is fair. Owner had a lot of really nice angles on the rail. He had some good ultimates as well. Did end up that Faker does get it because, you know, he had the, the big damage. He got very far ahead. He was controlling a lot of the team fights, so. You know, both of those two in tandem, just really good stuff. So T1, I know uh, Atlas was talking, joking a little bit about their future schedule, but I think this is nice. They get this win, and now they can kind of slowly build up towards the middle of the season and get ready for those playoffs eventually. It hasn't really been a new thing that KT has kind of missed the mark on their win conditions with drafts. We saw it a lot last year, especially with aiming when he was playing with scaling champions, just trying to be a little bit too aggressive. Did come back to bite them a lot. I think in this third game, if they played it a little bit slower, it would have been a much more interesting game. They decided not to.
Yeah, I mean, I think it's a really rough to start for KT, like week two. They, they, they are already 0-2 that like they have to find a way that actually bouncing back. But still, I think for them, I think it's really uh, they find the momentum that actually just playing on the bottom. I think also they find the weaknesses on perfect. Everyone we know that like Zeus will have an edge on it, but not this much. Perfect need to find a still like really need to find a consistency on top lane as individually 1v1 on lane phase especially. And also as a rookie, like there's is acceptable that making mistake, but it's like you can't really have a this major mistake that is gonna flip the series. Yeah, and we did see that a bunch of times, unfortunately, for him. I also think that BDD not looking entirely confident in himself. I think that the bottom side of the map we saw in game number one, especially also <laughs> um, just a lot of different uh, angles we saw with Barrel and with Def just throwing uh, themselves in and getting some really good, uh, nice angles on those gauges. Maybe you got to play around that a little bit more. But guys, we do have the interview ready to go. I'm going to hand it over to Jisun for the translation. Thank you very much, guys. This is Jisun for the POG interview translation, and we are here joined by Faker and Gumayusi after their win up against KT Roaster, the first Telcom War of the season and the year. How do you feel, Faker? You know, T1, a slow starter, classic T1 style. So today was a very, you know, important match for us, and I'm really happy with the 2 1 victory. Guma, congratulations on your first PUG of the season as well. How do you feel? You know, we have to win in order to have fed me today. And we kind of lost the first game powerlessly, so I was a little bit sad. But I'm happy that we bounced back in the second game, and also I got the PUG in the third game. Faker, this was a very intense series between you and KT Roaster, and it was a reverse sweep for T1. What did you focus on the most to prepare for the match? I think we have a very controlled drafting style right now in the meta, so we wanted to focus on the details, our minor mistakes, and I think it kind of showed up really well in the gameplay today. Following up on your answer, Guma, you also mentioned that. Whoa! A very cool fan sign. That kind of. That's a parody of Faker's recent um, TikTok he created with the K pop idol uh, for the context. And following up on Faker's answer. Well, game number one was not easy for you guys, but game number two, we had the fastest game of the season. What kind of feedback did you guys have after losing the first game? Draven and Kalista matchup is all about the winning the first kind of face-off. So we wanted to go back to the champion that we are pretty feeling confident and comfortable, so we thought that was Jinx. And we had the first Jinx Tom Kench duo for the first time this season. Was that all based on your confidence? Yeah, we are pretty confident in Zaya Jinx matchup. And er early on, you guys started having so many fights, and the game was pretty much over, uh, over at that point. Now, let's take a look at this highlight where you are able to pull off a fantastic team fight, and in the end, T1 got an ace. It's been a while since I last played Jinx, and I was able to pick so many kills here, so I liked it. It was really good. Are we going to see more Jinx this season? I think T1 can always pull off any kind of champions in our champion pool. It's not only just about Jinx, you know. I think you will be able to see many more picks from T1 this season. And Faker, you played Corky in that game. I'm not sure if you know about this, but your Corky is currently on a 19 game winning streak since 2020 LCK. How is that even possible? Tell us how. Well, apparently, Corky needs a lot of resources, so you need a lot, of, a lot of support from your teammates. So I think it tells that my teammates were doing a fantastic job for me. And the skin that I'm wearing is the best skin, you know, the basic skin, so it's unstoppable. 
Do you agree with them? <laughs> I think so, yeah. And then we had Azir Oriana mid lane matchup in game three. A lot of mind games going around the laning phase and even the, you know, ultimate. I think no one else knows better about this champion matchup than you, Faker. Any tips you want to share with the fans? I think game three, uh, the laning phase didn't really go as I expected. It was not that good in my opinion, but... Heading to the mid game, um, there were some good fights that we were able to take, so it went pretty well after that point. And any tips? Well, maybe you have to dodge the skills and lend your skills. That's it. And Faker, with this win, um, T1 closed out the series, so let's take a look at this highlight where T1 won a very decisive fight. Tell us about your Oriana play here. So the enemy was actually pushing really forward, so I just pressed R, and yeah, that's it. So you dodged the skill and you landed your skill, right? Yes, I pressed the R key really well, and we won the fight. And I think everyone wants to know about this. So you guys played Jinx and Oriana, the two champions that you guys selected for your royal skin. Was that a performance maybe to celebrate your skin? Or is there anything you want to tease about your royal skin? Who wants to go first? <laughs> Oriana? Well... They reflected my opinion a lot. It was based on my thoughts and ideas. It's gonna be really nice. Oh, any spoilers? Um, I think it kind of shows a little bit of a Korean culture um, items. What about you, Guma? Any spoilers for your Jinx skin? I already mentioned in my stream that it's, she has different eye color and you know, also split kind of hair color. So it's a mixture of two colors. That's my spoilers. We're super excited to see the T1 World skin this year that's going to be released. And next matchup will be up against Ha, ha Life Esports. They're on the first place at the moment. I think they are really strong. Their lineup looks really strong. Their performance is also so on point. But T1 obviously is a slow starter, so we want to make sure that we can prepare for the match thoroughly and get the win. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the HANA matchup. And HANA Life, they are performing with new lineups, so I'm really excited to find out how well they perform as a team. And this will be the end of the interview from Faker Guma UC and back to the space. Thank Thank you. Thank you so much, Jisun, as always, for that awesome translation. Uh, great to hear about the skins. We'll have to wait and see what happens with that. Let's take a look at the standings first and see where T1 lies after that victory. And also KT, as we mentioned, you know, a couple of losses this week around. Sitting at 2-2, two and two, T1 still have a match to go, so they're 2-1. and one. I still think this series should be, if you're a KT fan, somewhat relieving. Um, it was a big departure from the loss we saw against Kwangdong earlier this week, so I think if they play their Winkiness a little bit better and work on that drafting just to, just a smidge, uh, this team is definitely still potentially going to be top four uh, here in spring. Yeah, I mean, 100% indeed. And also the T1, there's one more game left that gives special against the HLE. I think that's going to be really big for on the left side, you know, left side of the changes, if there is. Yeah, we will have to see how that all does play out. Well, guys, we are done here for the first match of the day, but we are not done with the action nor the content in the break. We do have DRX versus Firex up next, but also Secret Boardroom with Reckless. Definitely want to check that one out. Also got Huni on there, and we'll see that during the break. So have a good break.
프로를 시작하고 나서 이제 첫 번째 미트라이너였는데 우승은 다음은 기아입니다 잘하는 선수여가지고 같이 해서 좋았다 이런 생각했어요 큰 변화를 주고 싶다라는 생각이 들었고 그래서 이적하게 됐습니다 항상 아군이었는데 적군으로 맞는다니까 좀 감회가 새롭고 하지만 크게 의식하지 않고 저희의 플레이 잘해서 이겨보도록 하겠습니다 오늘 이제 시크릿 보드룸을 시작하도록 하겠다. 내가 지난번에도 말을 했지. 시크릿 요원을 내가 데려오겠다. 이런 얘기를 했었는데 내가 그 친구를 왜 데려온 거 같나? 일을 애들이 못해서? 딱 봐도 바로 나오자. 오디오 채우기 귀찮아서 그런 거 아니야. 아니 얘도 진짜 1월부터 준비를 해야 저의 궁극의 목표 MSI와 월드를 먹을 수 있는 거 아니겠습니까? 그렇지. 그래서 먼저 개막한 리그 에리시를 대체 분석하기 위해서 와우! 그래서 시크릿 요원을 파견하신 거 아닙니까? 정확하다. 사실 네가 있긴 하지만 너만으로는 좀 부족하다고 느꼈어. 음. 자, 이제 내가 그 레전드 친구를 소개하도록 하겠다. Come here! 박수! 아, 언니! 웰컴! 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 엘레클리스, many many agent Banco, see you. Introduce yourself, please. 안녕하세요. 네, 마틴입니다. 음. Uh, I come from Sweden, 27 years old, and today I will go by the name 008. 007 is taken by James Bond. 와, 박수 박수. 와, 제임스 본드 이제 공공칠이잖아요. 음. 근데 이제 그래서 그 다음은 공공팔. 아. 그래서 이제 공 좋아하는 숫자다. 해서 플레임 공공팔이 됐다. 공공팔. 오케이, 공공팔. 앞으로 우리 공공팔로 부르도록 그렇지. 하겠습니다. 자, 아, 우리가 뭐 여러 가지 궁금한 점들 이 굉장히 많을 텐데 우리가 하나 하나 한번 들어보도록 하지. 먼저 이 레전드가 또 다른 레전드랑 또 인연이 있다는 이야기를 들었어. 아, 바로 데프트 선수. 아, 데프트. 아, 2014년도에 데프트에게 푹 빠져 있다고 스스로 밝히기도 했고. 음. 굉장히 또 유니크한 우정이 있다고 말을 했었어. I think yeah, it started from 2014 when I first went pro at highest level in the LEC, and I didn't really feel like I had someone to look up to. So I was looking at the Korea League, and Def was there, and he was amazing in 2014. Wow. He was maybe the first person I asked for a picture, and he met me like human to human. He did not meet me like he was above me mm -hmm. or. Thinking that I was low or something else, he just meet me like human, and I was feeling very high respect for him from mm. this. Oh, <웃음> 어찌 보면 선수로서 약간 리스펙하는 그런 느낌도 있구만. 아 그렇죠. 이거 완전 샤라우시죠. 어, 완전 샤라우시고. 그러면은 뭐 재작년에 데프트 선수의 월드 우승 때 감명이 <웃음> 굉장히 좀 있었을 것 같은데. I was actually casting this or co-streaming this mm. uh, worlds, and uh, I cried when he did his interview after mm. the game. <웃음> 
Happy birthday to you. Oh, even a cake. How nice is this? Dude, this moment for death. How nice is this? Woo. Taking it away, but I'm so happy for you. One more time. But with Deft, it was extra special because I know him for almost 10 years now. Changing teams many times, playing China, going back to Korea, almost too long <laughs> to receive this award. It really was a special moment, I think. Mm -hmm. The reason why you come to Korea, your goal right now, mm -hmm. you're trying to go to KT, take the take down the barrel job to play with <laughs> Deft. Oh. I mean, it would be amazing to play with Deft, but I actually really want to see Barrel play. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> I think he's a very fun player to watch. I feel like maybe this is perfect team for him because it's all teammates that they play with before, so he can now be himself. I think we should let Barrel in this team, and I can go to another team. Ah, but I was curious about something. What? Because ah, if he plays with Reckless, he will be the best player in the world. Reckless is. 사실상 뭐 따지고 뭐 한국이 중에 자기 제일 좋아할 거라고. 진짜 배프야? 아니 좀 민망하다. Because I was telling these guys, you were just keep appreciating to me that we just played well together in 2015. It was like really grateful. They were just making sure if I'm lying or not. So he's not lying. One of my favorite years, 2015. Huni, Rainover, and Febiven. Us four, I think specifically us four, was very close. Living together, working together, eating together, all the small things. And 2015 was very like friends, like family, family feeling. Ah, 그 당시에 분위기 진짜 좋았나 보네. 그냥 뭐 친구였죠. 또 둘이 그 당시에 커리어들을 비슷하게 시작하던 시기 아니었나? 아니 로레 클래스 완전 왔다였죠. 그렇지. 내 말이. 저도 사실 이제 그때가 가장 스트레스 없었다. 그냥 놀면서 했었냐 그때. 놀면서 하니까 오히려 더 좋은. 오히려 팀원들하고 더 분위기도 좋아지고. 18승 명패는 앞으로도 안 나올 거예요. 맞아. 그 당시에 어마어마했지. 아주 뭐 각별한 사이였던 것 같은데 그런데 날카로운 질문을 하나 할게요. 아, 피해갈 수 없는데 이건. 토니 월드 앱. 아. Choice. I would choose Huni, I think. Oh, oh, why? Because Huni is one of the only character player I play with that really can carry game. So with him, I felt very comfortable to just play safe. Because I know if enemy jungle go bot, we will win the game. And if enemy jungle go top, I can try to carry because I know. Huni will carry, so I just need to make game good for him. Huni, what? Yeah, 굉장히 극찬인데. 아, 그때는 제가 좀 쳤어요. 제가 이 사람한테 지긴 했지만은. You know this guy, this guy is a, this guy was a good Tigers head coach. I know. I remember you. Enemy, 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 enemy. But no enemy, no enemy. You play? No, I don't play. Coach, coach, coach. He's too old. He was too old. I remember you from playing. Oh, yeah. Oh, but I don't know how to play. You know, he's a Lishin. He's very famous in Korea. I don't know how to play. 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 Do you want to leave a video for Def? For Def? Yeah, he's gonna watch. <laughs> I will make sure he will watch. Mm. Okay, okay. I think, actually, I would just like to invite him out for dinner. Mm. If he wants. Maybe Korean barbecue mm. or something nice together. Just me and him to reminisce, go back memory lane. Talk mm. about 2014, yeah. 2015. Mm. Just would be nice to have a meal together. <laughs> <웃음> 아 그리고 레클레스 진짜 아까 계속 눈을 말하는데 
월드 우승에도 이상하지 않았어요. 사실 2018년도 때 맞아. 기억나죠? 음. 저희 그때 저희 진짜 그때 다, 다 짜릴 뻔했어요 그때. 아니 근데 레크레스가 그 정도로 잘했나? 내가 좀 기억이 가물가물해. 백문이 불여 의견이라고 영상 자료가 준비돼 있습니다. 오고 판단하시죠. He's out, he's dashed, he's dashed. Nobody said yet. Reagan. 아, 아야. 아, 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 오, 여. 나 토신 잡고 있고. 아, 나 이장준 그렇죠. 죄송합니다. <웃음> 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 아니 미쳤네 미쳤 유채원이라고 불릴 말하고만. To be honest, I was mostly sad for my teammates. I think especially Caps when he came into the team 2017 already before playing any LEC game. He already told me we're gonna win worlds. Every other European player was more realistic, so to speak, and thinking more like quarterfinals would be nice, semifinals might be even nicer, but never finals and never winning. So I was mostly sad for him, I think, in the finals because I knew he really fought for this for a long time, and the rest of us kind of just came along for the ride. But also a little bit sad for maybe my family also because I flew my family out to Korea for the finals to come to watch the finals, and finals was our worst game, so they got to see. us at our worst and I would have liked to show more of a good side but to be honest just very cool experience I realized when I was there on that day when we were doing the opening ceremony that this is maybe my only chance to do this so I really try to enjoy every moment 아쉽겠네요 결승까지 가서도 아쉬웠을 것 같아 그쵸 어, 준우승이라니까 근데 뭐 상하이도 결승 못 가봤는데요 뭐 소리야 결승 결승은 가봤지 결승은 못 가죠 선수는 선수는 야, 야. 선수는 임마 LCK 결승도 못 가봤어. 아, 아, 아. 어, 너 PC방 대회도 결승 못 가봤잖아. PC방 대회 못 가봤죠. 그치, 아무도 못 가봤어. 난 자랑스러워, 내가. 오케이, 오케이. 그러니까. 충격적인 소식. 이거 처음에 나왔을 때 다들 합성인 줄 알았어. 아, 이거 다 거짓말인 줄 알았어. 아, 이거 잠깐 장난. 진짜 막 마루절인 줄 알았어. 그러니까. 아, 장난인 줄 알았어. 아, 농담인 줄 알았어. 합성해가지고 장난친 줄 알았어. 솔직히 일군 스토브가 더 뜨거웠어. 그렇지. 사실 일군은 변화 없었잖아. <웃음> 아니, 근데 LCK의 일군. 아, 그렇지. 아. 갑자기 한국으로 온다는 소식이 있었고 그게 또 팀원의 2군 그냥 서포터로 Back in 2014, before Jensen went pro I used to hang out with him and do Q with him many times mm -hmm. and with him I play support many times and my feeling was actually I can be good support mm -hmm. and we could go to C9 together me as support, oh. him as mid mm. oh. but I have very good year 2014 AD carry mm. so my thinking was maybe it is too early to change mm. I have been pushing for a very long time AD carry. Very long time trying to push highest level and I think maybe I reached my peak. But with support, there's a new house. I do not know where the roof is. So when Fnatic decide to go another way, I feel like this is perfect opportunity for me to try support role. I get a few offers and T1 was one of them. And when I get T1 offer, I know I have to take this one because Korea is best region and T1 is best team. <laughs> 아니 벌써 좀 자부심이 생기는 거 같아요. 네, SK가. 어, 이거까지 아. 레전드 선수가 또 본인이 그렇게 얘기하니까 아, 이거 몸도 바로 모르겠고. 네. 그 영상을 봤을 때또 되게 재밌는 게 있더라고. 근데 진짜 음. 이게 수첩이 있대요. 한국어를 배우려고. 어? 단어 수첩. 어, 정말로? There's new language, new culture, new teammates. A lot to learn. For me, To play and no speak is okay because I play for a very long time. But my teammates are rookies. They need guidance in game. Mm -hmm. So I should learn some words that they can understand to follow me. Mm -hmm. Let's fight slowly. Chip Tom. Chip Tom. Slowly. Chip Tom. Why? So you, when you play, mm -hmm. team fight win, mm -hmm. how did you say? Nice. 
나이스 나이스 나이스, 나이스. 망국 공통화 아니, 마인드가 굉장히 좋은 게 내가 어차피 베테랑이 고 여기 신인 루키들이니까 음. 게임 어, 어느 정도 가이드 역할을 해주면 좀더 좋지 않을까 근데 사실 팀에서도 바라는 게 그런 부분이 있었을 거 아니야 왜냐면 또 레전드 선수인데 아, 네. 그건 몇 년을 했는데 지금 같이 하는 그 어린 친구들은 땡 잡은 거야 아니 그럼 너무 궁금한 게뭐 그런 단어들로 이제 실전을 해봤잖아 이미 CL 경기 쪘잖아 떴죠 음. 어 실제로 어땠을지가 좀 궁금해. 실전이 어, 실전이 어땠는지. Honestly, it was harder than expected. <웃음> oh. I think the level of play is as a team not very high, but individually quite high. At least on the same level as LEC. I think if I can share some of my experience and especially GBM can share some of his experience to the team, then we can win CL just from team play. 야, 확실히 그래도 포부가 좀 있구만. 근데 너무 필요한 인재기는 한것 같아요. 듣다 보니까 그렇지. 네, 이군 리그 선수들에게 정말 좋은 경험, 뭐 운영적으로든 음. 멘탈적으로든 마인드적으로든 아직 마인드가 되게 너무 좋은데. 어. 인 게임 실력도 제가 경기를 봤는데, 오 장난 아니. 저 위치 피크가 또뭐천 원짜리 피크다 이런 얘기 많거든요. 그런데 잡파베 잡파미 폭탄 목걸이가 돼. 네. 그래서 자 불까지 불까지 불까지. 심지어 이거 레클레스 선수가 딱 나온다고 하니까 그 시청자가 거의 뭐 10만 이상. 와. 그 내가 듣기로 시열 최초 좌석도 다 내준. 우와. 아, 이 슈퍼스타. 야. 유니온에서 오 소다. 야. 아니 이런 또 위대한 선수가 시엘에서 뛴다고 하니까 이거 당연한 거 없고 이거는 뭐 시엘 있는 다른 팀들한테도 동기부여가 되는 거죠. 그러니까 또 주목 받을 수 있고. 자 그런데 또 궁금한 게 있어. 아니 그 숙소 생활이나 뭐 이런 라이프 생활 어떤? How you feel living in South Korea? Because it's like it's not your, obviously it's not your home. It's like first time you actually living here. So far, only positive. It was always a dream of mine to play in the East. I always thought it would be China, because Korea never import before. Yeah. So my thinking was Korea is not possible, but China might be. So I try. After 2017 season, I ask EDG, IG, and WE. Only WE answer, and my feeling was. I will take Fnatic more time. At the end of 2020, no China talk. So I was thinking maybe I can never go here. Mm. But when I get this T1 offer, I know this is something I have to do because it's a dream from before. Uh, how would you say? My younger self, mm. the kid version of me, would be very happy if I do this for him. So I have to go for my old dream to play here at least one year. T1에 와서 한국에서 활동하는 것만으로도 그냥 다 만족도가 다 채워지는 거구만. 이게 내 꿈이었으니. 어, 이게 그냥 딱 위에 있네. 자 그러면은 우리가 LEC에 대한 정보를 좀 들어야 돼. 그럼 지금부터 LEC에 대한 이야기도 좀 해보자고. You know, Yankos? Yep. Yankos was here. During Worlds. Was here. Yeah. yeah. How was it? Funny? Not so funny? He's, he's very he's, funny. He's, he's, he's very really funny. funny. Yeah, he's funny. really funny. Yeah, he's funny. Yeah, he's funny. <웃음> 그 당시에 야코스가 뭐라 그랬냐면 LEC 이번에 진짜 다르다. G2 결승 갈것 같다. 근데 어떻게 됐어? 이거 그냥 성과를 바로 그냥? 그니까. 스위스에서 그냥 다 탈락을 해버렸어. 다르다. 그러니까 다르긴 했어. 더 못했어. 더 못했어. 어. 작년 월즈 LEC 뭐가 문제였는지 아, 선수의 어. 시선에서 좀 궁금해진단 말이야. Berlin. I think problem was only one team, only one good team. If there is only one good team, this good team cannot become better mm. because playing against no one. Oh. The good team is G2. G2. Actually, 그렇지. I kind of have some responsibility here because I play in Fnatic to split, oh. ah. and we were very bad. If I make better job. Then maybe G2 better. So actually, kind of my bad. 뛸 때도 누가 같이 뛰어주잖아. 페이스메이커. 어 그런 사람도 있어야 돼. 자 그러면 말아 지금 시즌 이제 LEC가 개막을 했잖아. 혹시 LEC 경기도 챙겨 보는지? All of them. Everything? Wow. wow. 저저 궁금한 게 하나 있어. 오 물어봐 물어봐. 진행해. You know Mad Lions Koi? Yep. 그래서 이제 엘리아 <웃음> 중심으로 했는데 어. 그렇지 잘한다 레클레스 시점에서 엘리아 어. 중심의 리빌딩 어. 한 선수를 위한 리빌딩 어. 이거 괜찮냐? 어떤 느낌? 아. I've had a similar thing to me in the past where I got to choose my teammate and from choosing my teammate I feel very empowered. My feeling also when I had similar situation bringing in Hulisang. Hulisang was in other team before and I get to choose support. I get responsibility to make Hulisang great support and I think Elioya may be feeling the same thing now. This is my team. I brought in this guy, I will make everything with him. I brought in this guy, I will make everything with him. I think if you trust Elioya, if you are Mad Lion's Koi and you trust Elioya, this is perfect thing to do. So I think if they trust Elioya 100%, this is great move to make. Oh. But very high responsibility for Elioya now. And high pressure. Yeah. 
great power with great responsibility. Yeah, exactly. And this is Caps every year. Caps, many years, get to choose his teammate in G2. So I think he has the same feeling that he take this player, so now he has to make this player great. In my opinion, this can be great for Elioya. And also it's great for Caps almost every year because he gets to build his team. So he feels like these are my boys. But if you have just player you don't really know or you don't really want to play with, then not same feeling. Like if you bring him yourself. Mm. So I think it can be great actually for El Elioya. Do you think they're gonna make wars? I think can happen, but can I happen? am not sure if LEC have four or three this year. Two to one, Fnatic two, and then we do not really know. I think if three seed, maybe will be hard. Oh. But if four seed, definitely possible. If Elioya can take the responsibility and make this team great, they will go to Worlds. If Elioya crumble under pressure, they will never, never go anywhere with this team. Because too many rookies. Rookie need Elioya. Mm. If no Elioya, then they cannot go. It's either G2 or Fnatic will win a game. Probably. Probably G2. Other team often if they change player, then whole team go boom. G2 have very strong system. I, th oh. I think G2 can change player, but still have success. Big coaching staff, good management, so feels like they can use many players and still find success. Oh. And I think actually Fnatic may be building this again with their new coach. I only work with him, Spring Split, but I really think he was special in his way to approach the team building. So it felt more like a team. Mm. So kind of maybe trying to do what G2 does, more team feeling that you can use many different players. You see now Fnatic, they use Yoon with Noah and still find success like uh, Noah with Trimby. Oscar Rinnen is very strong in the top lane already. So I think they have maybe good system coming in Fnatic now. It was Spain versus France. All the French fans follow Carmen Corp. And all the Spanish fans follow Mad Lions Koi. So Spain versus France. Longer going back in time uh, rivalry. So it goes back a long time. Now it is in LEC, but it has been there for a long time already. That we treat Europe like one big country, mm -hmm. but Europe is not one big country. Pretty it's pretty. a mixture of many small countries. And now, finally, I think LSE is getting to a point where they use the small countries by themselves. So they find power in Spain, find power in France, in Germany. I think LSE can grow and become so much more than mm -hmm. what it has been <clears throat> until this point. So they create the storyline. Yeah, they, they create the storylines from the countries. When you watch Football World Cup, you mm. always resonate with your country. Yeah, so we this go, is, cra we go yeah. crazy if there's a football yeah. game in Japan. Mm. Representing their country, and mm. I think this does a lot of good things for the LSE. Very exciting to follow now. Because Thank you for having me. It was amazing. <laughs> Kamsamnida. <laughs> if you want me another time for something else, just ask. Oh, you sure? You sure? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Ah. More, more is better. Remember, remember. Gongpal. 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 After the goal, the goal is to score. Goal. 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 Winning or losing, it can just be the experience as a whole this year. I want to leave at the end of this year when I go home, feeling like I am good support. Mm. Outside of game, I would like to get as much Korean culture as possible. Mm. If I go to Korea, 
some other time in my life, after my League of Legends career, I can speak Korean. This is amazing. No, no, no. <laughs> don't go, don't go. <laughs> stay, stay, forever. If I can stay, yeah. I will stay. Ah, 좋아, 좋아. 사실, 지, 물론 반갑긴 하지만 그런 얘기가 있었거든. 첩자 아니냐고, 이거 한국 시스템을. 산업 스파이 얘기를. 그러니까, 산업 스파이 얘기를 하더라고. I have no allegiance with LEC. They throw me out. I want to stay here now. <laughs> but I know to stay here, I have to learn language. So I will try very hard to learn Korean language. So I will learn Korean. Ah, good. Fighting, fighting. Legend, yeah. Oh, mind. Yeah. 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 많은 또 우리 시청자분들이나 방콕들이 음. 너무 친근하게 느껴져요. 자 아무튼 오늘 너무 고맙고 어, 연습 잘하고 또 정말 좋은 성적 있길 바라겠고 우리가 이게 끝이 아니다. 오! 어. 레클리스는 이제 시작에 불과했어. 잠깐만 또 심어둔 요건 또 레저, 레전드 또 와요? 다음 시편 요원은 월주 우승 출신. 와 말도 안 돼. 니들이 나를 너무 과소평가하지만 내말 한마디면 다 움직여. 와. 이땀이 또 굉장히 좋은 어? 월주 우승 출신 정보로기 때문에 이땀 좋은 월주 우승 음, 기대가 된다 자 다들 많이 기대해주고 오늘은 여기서 마치도록 하겠다 다들 해산!
with iron in my heart and steel inside my blood. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to LCK Spring 2024. I got a bit of a frog in my throat. It's all right. We worked it out. Okay, there we are. We're good. Fine again. Fine again. Absolutely okay. Um, yeah. Uh, but one of these teams may not be because we they, have they we are not. heading to the other side of the standings, Chronicler. And this is a this is a place where dreams don't come true as much as they do on the other side. Let's have a look at the standings here and show you what it's all about because. Fearx haven't necessarily been finding very many wins, neither have DRX. As you can see, 6th versus ninth, but these positions are pretty close. It's uh, some very high stakes stake setting coming out of Atlas. That's He's what I'm right. going for, man. No, you are. I am, I am emotionally invested already. And for both these teams, we've seen, uh, mostly in case of Fearx, a decent amount of promise mixed with a healthy dose of, oh no, please don't do that. And for DRX, it really feels like they are still finding what works for this roster, what works for their meta. And a very important match. Any of these matches that are between any of the uh, East side teams is always going to be about you want to make playoffs. And for Fairex, this is one of those matches you need to win. Can't afford to lose this one. And for DRX, if you start losing consistently to Eastern teams, things are, are, are going to be things are going to be really rough. It does not get better from here. It certainly doesn't. And uh, there are some similarities, namely their names. Fearx yes. and DRX. Um, if you watched the Pog State, you'd know. I find it very difficult uh, to tell them apart. And in fact, when the fans were saying DRX fighting, they could have been saying Fearx fighting at the beginning, and I wouldn't have known. Um, and they're also, their trajectories are also looking relatively similar. If DRX are able to pick up a win here, then they will be able to even out the scoreline between these two. Sponge versus Willa. Which jungler will boost their confidence, of course? Willa has been a bit of a mainstay here in the LCK for a while. Sponge making his way up from a very successful challenger squad. And Sponge has been one of the breakout stars for me, who hasn't been, unfortunately, is Teddy. Uh, Teddy here being uh, framed as the ace, and I want to see that today. We yeah. all know what this guy is capable of. Obviously, head to head will be favorable towards Teddy, but don't put too much stock into that. Need to take into account which the Breon effect. Play. Yes. It's yeah, uh, it, it's the Breon effect. Teddy, of course, also had a stint on T1, but Teddy to me 
uh, even more so than Rascal, hasn't really been able to even get close to his own level, and he needs to. Him and Rascal, to me, are the most important because they need to anchor all these other players, make sure that Satab and Spongy in particular feel good. But uh, no notes. He's doing great. Oh, heck yeah. Just keep it up, man. Yeah, it felt a little bit in their last loss that uh, Pleto was in ELO Hell. Uh, the guy is so incredibly talented. So let's see whether they can leverage some of that as DRX make their way out into Lowell Park here. Seeing whether they can get back on the right foot and really uh, get towards perhaps making a challenge towards the Western side. Could be an opportunity to do so. And they, there is talent on this roster. The same can be said for Fear X. I feel like potential is this matchup because there are opportunities for both of these squads if they get things together if these players can play to what we know they're capable of then there could be some opportunities there hasn't been very much sinking um with with a y maybe a bit of sinking with the i uh unfortunately for fair x to me the main story is oh no please don't Please don't do that. Do they do a lot of things? Yes. And half of them, you're like, oh, okay, Chong Hu. I kind of like to throw it at the go, wall and see what's going sticks in. Tactic, okay, though. Grand Jungle, Hannah, my boy, going big. And then the half the, uh, the other time, you're like, why are you die? Why are you going in there? Don't do that. No, please. And it's even more pronounced than it always was mm -hmm. back when they were left sandbox. I feel like this roster, and I'm gonna really fully blame Execute for this one. Uh, <laughs> have even more embrace the. We are just going to send it and uh, with with the amount of success that you'd expect from that which is varying for DRX I think you don't really know yet what kind of team they are if they can figure it out today I might be able to take a win against VRX but we'll see as uh, we take a look at the key player matchup yeah Teddy does a lot of his team's damage um, a lot of these stats that are compared to the rest of your teammates often say a little bit more about the game style that you have been playing, especially when they're paired up with more middling, middling statistics surrounding it. That is sort of the case here for Teddy. Henna is a player that we had been singing a fair few praises towards, but you can see that's not reflected at all in the stats. Uh, hasn't really been able to get off the ground so far this season, but was certainly one of the high points for uh, Gen for Genji, for Breon in uh, their matches last year. Uh, before he moved over to VRX this year. Um, I, I almost tripped over Genji because that was where Brown had their most success was in their final match. Um, weren't able to do it, you know, uh, yesterday, but that's not Henna's fault because he moved teams. Yeah, that's still one of my favorite little factoids of the LCK 2023. Was Genji just winning summer after getting mercilessly stomped in their final regular season match? It was so funny. Didn't D plus get to like the world final after doing that as well in 2021. I swear Bro just says like, all right, we will have this win, but then you can go on to bigger and better things, you know? Maybe that's just a rite of passage. Maybe that's something that everyone has to accept. Uh, as we'll see whether we get more Brand Jungle out of Willow. We did see another one uh, as Canyon was allowed to have a little bit of fun in one of their games yesterday. Um, that was cute. Wasn't it nice when he got to actually uh, play a champion that looked he like got, he was enjoying? I, I don't know. It felt to me like, you know, the animal that gets to run around just for a little bit and it's back into the zoo with you. Yes. We got to yes. take good care of you. Yep. Back to your tree. Yeah, you just need to let him out for an, uh, long enough to be able to say free range on the packet. You know, uh, that's what you got to do. Uh, and, <laughs> and then he's back to Maokai Judy. <laughs> back to his tree. You know, maybe he can play some Rel while we're feeling good. Uh, a week and a half ago. Is that better? <laughs> Rel to me is at least, I think Rel's more fun than Maokai. Because Maokai, you're not really supposed to like engage big team fights generally. I mean, right? you do, you just do it from a million miles well, away. Well, yeah, you, well, you press R, which, <laughs> yeah. like with Rel, you can do big combos. I feel Maokai, like individual single target, like yeah, skirmishes you yeah, can. Yeah. But if you go in as Maokai with W, you generally just kind of die. Um, but for DRX specifically, DRX, week and a half ago, they got bought by Nongshim. That's no shame, you know, Nongshim, for all of their uh, the mechanical faults, at times are a team that I think had a great read on the meta. Nongshim makes on. a decision together. And they do. And that it gets them very far against teams like DRX that do not have that. But for DRX here today, I want to see if they figured out what type of team they are, because we still don't know. It's similar to Breon, right? We're almost two weeks to the split. And at this point, we start. we need to start to see at least a shape of what you can become. And 
The one thing that I think is really special about this particular matchup is Clear versus Sponge and Zetab. Because they did form the core of, well, with Pleter as well, of what made DRX so good in Challenger. Uh, that top side of the map was challenging Thanatos and Lucid uh, and Pool Bay as well uh, in Challenger as they were the strongest uh, in the league. And then, of course, Clear made his way out of Challenger quite early. Uh, and then Sponge and Satab joining him here this year. Pleter also spending a fair bit of time in the LCK as well. So that team kind of split up and now we're seeing a whole lot of the players across both sides of the rift in this one. As we now have a look at some of the bands, Poppy, Oriana, and the Varus taken away here on the blue side. And then a whole bunch of 80 carries removed from Henna. Two of Henna's favorites, of course, the Draven and the Callista, but he is a known Lucian as well as Clear decides that we're going to go with a Cassante first pick. How does that make you feel, Chronicler? Meh. Yeah. I, clear, clear in general hasn't really shown a performance yet. I'm willing to trust him because I think that he came in last year on Sandbox very late into the split at the point where the team was already kind of boom. And then here, I'll give him a little bit more time. I think individually he hasn't looked that great. Was a player in the Challenger. I think uh, particularly his synergy with Peach was uh, one of the highlights of the yeah, true. Uh, Spring 2022 Challengers roster uh, with Setup, as you mentioned, with uh, if I remember correctly, Pleda was, was AD carry back then, and they were playing with June as well. Yeah. Uh, who's currently playing with Noah and the LEC. Very interesting. Pleda, also, of course, known as Becca previously. Just I, like, and also I, played in the... Yeah, and yeah. also played as support. And roles. There's, a, there's a lot of depth here when it comes to these players, how they faced off in the past or how they played together. As we are going to see DRX pick up the early uh, Senna here. I really enjoy it. I do think that Zyra Khan is quite a strong combo. But there is the opportunity to go for uh, something like an Orn. I would have loved that because I think Orn has a really good way of hard forcing Zaya ultimates without committing too much. But it's going to be the Kench instead, uh -huh. which this early on I'm not super excited about. I think that we have seen how much room there really is for things you can play with Senna, especially with double support. No, absolutely. Get away with so much stuff. And you can pretty much pick any jungler or top laner and just flex it if you feel like it. Yeah. It doesn't really matter who it is. But Tom Kench, he doesn't go into the top lane that much. Uh, those times where, you know, Evi from the LJL, for example, uh, did like to play the Tom Kench top. Uh, you know, a friend of the LCK LS liking to play Tom Kench in the jungle quite often. Um, but he doesn't get that treatment. He is a support here in the LCK, and that is where he lives. Um, there is the Talia ban. I expect a Corky will probably be banned at some point, right? No? Um, I guess not. Banning Willer's Wukong instead. And yeah, I'm, I'm with you on the Corky. I would have loved it specifically because trying to play Senna Kench into a composition with Poke is kind of a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, now, we have seen Fear X has already kind of gone towards uh, more of a team fighting style, not necessarily, but you can just slot a Corky into this and be completely fine. So, uh, Corky doesn't need a team. He is yeah, he's just Corky. Uh, I do think Whaler's Wukong is good. Hopefully, better than uh, if we do end up seeing it in this series, not in this one. Uh, better than what uh, Sylvie showed. Still a little bit hurt about that one. But yeah. it's a Senna Kench. I do think having a reliable backline threat with multi engage potential like the Wukong can be big. Now, Maokai. This is very straightforward. I, I'm liking this from DRX because I do think this is a composition that basically plays itself. And they, they really needed that. You can you can cap this off with a Gwen. Then you have really good front line. A lot of mixed damage. A little low on the AD, but eventually Teddy will be able to take care of that. And then you get a, you get good matchups. You know, you get some decent counters. And, and, and it is a very straightforward comp. Don't have to think about it too much. And Speaking I think of not thinking that. about it too much, here is a Sejuani. That's going to be thrown in. Um, Execute is hovering a Lux. Not that's, sure whether that's... that's uh, quirky, right? Is that a Closer champion? I don't think that's uh, that uh, really closer, much of a closer. Closer is locking uh, Yone here. That is true. To be full... Uh, okay, that's good. I was going to go Akali next. Uh, I, I do think that Akali is, is not good into Maokai and Kench. Um... But you do have Sejuani synergy, so that's that's something. And, and there's no Poppy Corky on the other side um, this time around. No, uh, but there, I, I do think just Kench alone would make me go like, ah, uh, yeah. Maokai as well, guaranteed point and click CC. Uh, it's not something you really enjoy playing into as a Kali. I, I'm going to give an edge to the composition of of DRX, 
Uh, we're going to have a lot of DRX and, and Fair X, very clear enunciations yes. uh, necessary here today. I might use player names um, more often than not because yeah. I feel like I do get to the... I, I skip over the first bit and then get straight into the end. Uh, and so everything is just RX of some kind. Um, it's a little bit unfortunate, but that's okay. Uh, we'll get through it as best we can. You and me together. We just have to work together. Exactly right, Chronicler. Um, just like the players on each of these teams. They have to show us something. Try and uh, get a little bit of hype surrounding them. So uh, what does the Fox say uh, sign ah, there? I love good. that song. That's a classic. What does a Fear X say? I don't know. What I think that's dark. That's, Whoa, uh, that's a that's great really fan dark. sign. That's, that's dark. I like how we immediately pan away from it. We're like, no, 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 I guess we, we're not gonna, we're not gonna do that. Uh, let's have a look at these uh, rosters now that they have come on through. There is a lot of permafrost value. So Willa getting around his solo lanes in the early stages could certainly be a fair bit of value. But having a look here, DRX, they just want the game to start at 35 minutes, please. That would be great. Give Senna a bunch of stacks and allow Teddy to really pop off. Let's see whether he can as we jump onto the rift for game number one. All right, DRX fans needing to uh, up the volume just a little bit here, based on uh, my opinion from the other side of Low Park. <laughs> it's always proximity, Atlas. Every single time, but I'm going to say it every single time. It actually, it's nice to see. You know, Low Park is really, um, really filled up well with a pretty even spread of teams. Yeah, it's quite nice. We're pretty much packed out. Don't don't always have that. Uh, the balance in particular. Yeah, and when it's the Skew. eastern side as well. I mean, Telecom War is obviously going to be standing room only. That's just how it works. Um, but here, for FearX and DRX both facing off against one another. Uh, yes, DRX won the World Championship, but none of those players are here anymore, right? So uh, it's really good to see uh, players still around them. And they do still have some with pretty dedicated fan bases. Rascal and Teddy have been around for a very long time, and fans have always really liked the two of them ourselves included in that one. Although we do have high expectations and they are most certainly the most experienced on the Rift here today. Next highest is probably Henna. Which is which is crazy, but also true. Yeah. Uh, feels, uh, feels like a weird thing to say though. And yeah, the closest one to, to any like big international thing I can think of as Rascal was one game away from World's Finals. He was. That happened mm -hmm. when he played Renekton for the entire tournament. He did. It drove me crazy. <laughs> was Bertel not also... Um... Uh, he was there and then he played against Ale once and then got uh, Flame Horizon and then they didn't play him anymore. That, um... Yeah. They I did kind of was not a good time. They did kind of sacrifice him. That was a... Uh, that was definitely a humbling experience. Bertel now, of course, in the LPL. And... Looking towards his bot lane, Senna, to me, one of the... Uh, Senna Kench in particular, like the level one is obscenely strong, so should be able to dict the lane. We see that they are able to zone Henna and execute off of the wave initially. Do have full knowledge of Sponge in particular, because there was a ward placed early on by the mid-jungle duo as Satap really struggling. Satap, to me, I want to talk about a little bit, because he was the player I expected to have the easiest time with the transition from challengers to the LCK. And for any challenger players, you know, they, they have a little bit more leeway uh, for any rookie, really, even if you come uh, out yeah. of the academy. Uh, and for Satan, I think we really have seen some of those growing pains. His laning in particular was never his strong suit in the uh, in, in challengers, but it was also never a weakness. It was his skirmishing that I think was uh, was really impressive. As Ooh, it goes X goes execute. In. Gonna have to get used to that because he does like just going in. Uh, Platter standing his ground though. You can see not really too phased about the whole situation. They do know that Willer is coming in once again. Kudos to the vision that they do have up and available. And you can see Sponge just doing some hovering. Sponging, if you will. And he's now looking to try and help his mid lane. And this is some of the advantage that uh, mid prior is going to be able to give them here is the drive by Bramble Smash. Called it Arcane Smash yesterday. Bit of a shout out to what it used to be. As Execute goes in. Oh man, I, it's, I'm going to have to figure out different words to say. But Execute is engaging. Execute's 
making a play, executes, doing every, a single on every single time. And, Good and luck with that. Yeah, I know, but I, I need to at least mix it up. There needs to be, like, I need a thesaurus, uh, like a, a few different options. Just 50, when the casters learn 15 different synonyms for going in. Yeah, but I mean, we do. that is basically our job, it's, let's it's, be honest. Yeah, okay, but I think with Execute in particular, it's... It's very nervous. Is this how people feel casting Haley? Um, yes. Say tap. Yeah, Closer is in a little trouble. Um, Will there to back him up, but he's mainly just trying to keep the goalie away. As once again, every time I see, uh, you know, either Pyoshik or a DRX player not using the DRX skinners, I'm going to have to hold my thought as Saytab flashing. Closer didn't look like he was going to go aggressive there, but five point strike auto would have been enough, I'm pretty sure and therefore only needs to be able to flash in to try and get that one to happen. As Willa just wants to push Sponge away. We are getting a lesson on the importance of mid-prio. Isn't that cool? It really is. And normally, ideally, in a 1v1 uh, pre-6, Azir should win. And uh, yeah. I do think Sponge got the big Raptor, but Willa got most of the small ones. Um, uh, Teddy. Yeah, Teddy. Oh, the heal not enough nice. for the movement speed. And Teddy gives him a good old thumbs up and says, uh, nice work. You got my heal. Yeah, trade heal for heal, but you're going to take that if you're Teddy. Not going to feel too bad about that. But also now making his way back. Teddy can safely go. Picking up the Swifties early. Going to help a lot with trying to stay out of range of these fetters as well as uh, walking off some execute uh, attempts at engaging. Yeah, I'm going to try and, and beat Ooh, him. There you go. I like yeah. it. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, there's also no World Atlas uh, completed for Pleta just yet, opting in for the Barmy Cinder completion. And clear now. Going to have to flash. The Emperor's Divide does come on through. I do like this. Still the Gusto there for Satab, even if this laning phase has not been his greatest. And Closer, of course, is a great Assassin player. Great melee player in the mid lane. He is known for his Aurelia, for his Yone, for anything basically that is... One of these more melee-focused, I'm going to kill you really fast champions. Yeah, if Zekka didn't exist, Closer would be that guy. Yeah. But instead, he's like, that guy, but not really, because <laughs> Zekka is also dead. Kind of got his kind mantle of the same. stolen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> got this, does the same thing. But Closer does have uh, moments, particularly, as you mentioned, on these type of champions. Happy to see Willer also play very aggressively. But nice uh, roam there from Teddy. Just very straightforward. Backs, gets a Swifties, runs mid forces a flash, because if there is no Teddy there, I don't think Satab forces the flash by himself. Do see that the mid lane prio, uh, as well as the bot lane prio, which is the, the more surprising part to me, does end up paying off for Fear X here. And we're seeing Sponge with an attempt to pick himself up. Some grubs, and the top lane is looking pretty decent, so it should be fine. Now. Yep, Kev, Bob, and Steve going to be picked up here by Sponge, and the Drake does go on over. So next one, going to be a Hextech. As Satab doesn't have Flash, but does have the Foresight to leave this tower. Plate's now going to be taken as there's the Flash. Execute. Executed. Right, that's what he's going to do. And perfect execution is there also for the first blood. Meanwhile, on the top side of the map, Clear is in a little trouble, but he is able to walk it off or run it off as he gets underneath his turret as well. So the Fearless Foxes coming out pretty strong here. And Ruth, Satep reads the play, but then goes in. Execute not level six yet, so he feels like he's okay, but does get caught off guard. A pick on Hannah here would be huge, but without hitting that root, doesn't look like there's an opportunity. Hannah does not have his ultimate anymore, though, so maybe they can go for a redive on the next wave. There isn't a lot of support, though, and not a lot of vision, so I don't think they can really go for this. Then with the top side play also not working out, DRX not going to get anything on the counter here. No, not quite. There is still the uh, naughty word, which is scaling, um, that they Very will true. have on their side. Is Teddy with these Swifties? I, you know, I was feeling bad about Swifties in general. One of my favorite boots, uh, to be honest. But uh, Huni is in the back of my mind. Every time I see Swifties, I get a bad feeling. Um, that is mainly a rumble thing. And it certainly worked out very well for Teddy. Uh, they're avoiding a lot of these grand entrances. And yeah, this was just um, execute goes in. And and nice uh, flash it's, W. It's a dead as Very straightforward. Not a lot to say about that one. Satab didn't have his ult or flash. Flat out trying to make sure that execute doesn't uh, yoink the wave away. 
I'm not sure how many souls Teddy is sitting on right now, but that is going to be one of the main things that DRX is going to be looking towards. And even though we've been a little bit doom and gloom, we want to highlight DRX, you know, for a full deficit this early on. It's completely fine. No, it's the... feel too bad about that. I think that uh, DRX is going to have to make a few extra moves. The Empress Divide will deliver closer over, but he does have a Shuriken prepared earlier. And that will allow him to get himself out. Oh, actually, no. Needed to use the first portion of the ult, so never you mind. That is a much less deadly Akali. Certainly good news here, trading ult for ult. Execute. Um, okay. Posturing aggressively, as he does. Indeed. He is Rakan. So going to be relatively safe with the grand exit. Willa. Oh, sneaky. And we'll just pick it up, and it's again Henna and Execute, I think, playing this lane out really nicely. Actually building up a pretty sizable lead. We'll see Closer go for the Rocket Bell there, as opposed to Storm Surge, which we've seen even be rushed many a time as well. But I expect to see it picked up second, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, if you don't pick it up at all, that would be, uh, that would be very, uh, very worrying. We'll have to cancel the nerfs, case. if that's the case. No, that's that's a, you know, not that's necessary. A, that's okay. I don't. I I liked it. <laughs> I, I I missed durability patch. I remember when team fights lost it. Oh, well, speaking of nerfs, isn't uh, Proto Belt getting nerfed as well? Oh, I'm not so sure. Oh. Not on the next patch, but on the one after. Yeah. Oh, maybe on free. I don't know. I haven't seen the patch preview yet. I know that uh, Storm Surge definitely getting nerfed. Obviously, the biggest nerf is the double sport item. Uh, yes. So we're not seeing it in every single match. We are seeing particularly the. Higher level teams utilize it a lot. As oh, we go. Fatab going to get backflipped on, but does shift away. Allow him to get there. So the bubs, couple for DRX and one going over to Fierex. And Closer continuing to look for more damage. And and Fatab doing an okay job there on the dodging the second one, but it really is just consistently this level of aggression coming out from Closer, and Seitab just not spacing really correctly, right? You do have a range advantage over the Akali, but if she just makes her way on top of you, even just a Q, already going to be tough, but if it's a Q and an auto, then see the Elvbar go down low, and as long as that ultimate is available, you really need to respect Seitab also doesn't have an item finished just oh. yet. We got the zoom. There is a cannon minion missed. Advantage to Satab in that lane for the moment, but he's down 20 CS to win Akali. And yes, the matchup does get much better post six, but I feel like normally we see as he is uh, with leads that stick around for a bit longer. You hit a key point there, post six, and, and yeah, Closer was just kind of winning it. Yeah, but I, I, I still feel like you don't, you shouldn't be in parity yet, uh, is what it sort of feels like as Closer now running the lane is. Oh, Glacial Prison narrowly avoided. Man, just not quite enough evidence. No, no, I, and, and I was agreeing with you. I was saying, like, Closer should be even. Oh, best. yes. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. yeah, unfortunately, Satap not able to really deliver on that, as we do have a flash being utilized by Sponge. It's not a Hex Flasher. Oh, so which is a bit does sad. does actually uh, put that on cooldown. As Missed all execute, as always, looking for a flank. He is potentially in. Coming. He is uh, found. As, uh, yes, he is. Uh, he's now out. Is he dead? Trying to out. Uh, he is going to battle dance over to Henna. Thanks for the extra range, he says. As, all right. Nature is grasping. Feathers are storming as well, though. So that's going to get Henna out of any Rascal. dodge. As, yeah, this could be the time. World Ender has been procced. Now a teleport's come in from clear as well. Fresh off a shop. Dawning Shadow flies in. And now they're looking to try and turn onto Rascal. They should be able to take him down. The Drake should also belong to DRX here. They are taking their time. A one for one as the top lane is go down. And now Teddy's flashing for it. That is Sponge securing the dragon and DRX on the board. And a sacrifice that DRX in particular, I think, are going to be happy with here. Rascal gets turned on, does end up going down, but it starts up a little bit awkward there for Fear X, with Execute getting found out. In general, though, uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of messiness in the team yeah. fights, somewhat of a lack of cohesion here from either side, but DRX, they pick up a Dragon, Frozen Heart's now done, and as long as they can remain close, they should be fine. Now, really big here is that Hannah does actually have to use his ultimate very early on, not able to get out of the way, 
and then uh, that means that DRX can move very far forward. Unfortunately for them, targeted finds closer, who obviously in Shroud is basically unkillable. And then we have an attempt from Clear here to kind of disrupt. It doesn't actually get over the wall. That could have been a difference maker. Instead, just kind of dies. And then Hannah is forced to defensively heal to ensure that they do get out. Teddy actually liking the aggressive play. Hope we get to see more of this um, from the good old Fountain Lasers. Execute is still executing. He is. He executed that Gleaming Quill beautifully and then allowed Rascal to walk on by. It's about the message, Atlas. Oh, and the message was, good day to you, sir, I believe. As uh, our right, Twisted event, in goes Sponge. They do push Willer away, but he has Arctic Assault. He's going to be able to get himself out of it. Execute going down relatively low, and DRX is kind of taking control of the Rift. At this point in time, not going to be bullied, not allowing DRX to really gain any more advantages than what they picked up in the early game. That is going to be the steal, though, from Willard. And now the Nature's Grasp coming in. I should be uh, denied here by DRX, but no. They are able to get on over the top, and now in comes Closer. Dash Cannon working out for him. Execute very, very low, but there is the first kill of the fight. On to Sponge and Rascal. Sort of left by his lonesome. He is still dangerous. And he's trying to zone. Permafrost going to be there as well as Hannah with another Featherstorm fighting against Teddy. Teddy not with, there with the rest of his team though. And it's just an extra kill for VRX and they steal away the Herald. You can see the split comms there from DRX trying to figure out what do we do? Do we fight? Do we go in? Do we not? Very early uh, smite there from Sponge. Kind of awkward maybe trying to coordinate down with the rest of his team. Uh, not quite working out. And I think DRX, they, they got to be happy that they only have to give up Sponge because that could have gone way worse. This will still be probably a mid lane turret going over. But I want to again draw attention to what happens here is uh, this is a very split position. Way too early on the, uh, the smite there. But then there is no cohesion. There's a part, like Teddy and Platt are like, we are out. Right? But then the rest of DRX seem to realize oh, we are not out. We can, in fact, not get Sponge out. So then they kind of commit. Kind of not really, and this goes back to what we were saying earlier. With Fox, uh, or Fear X rather, the execution may be a little bit hit or miss, but they're all going in. Everyone's on yeah. the same page. We're collectively going in, and that's what I think ends up getting them these kills continuously in these fights. Yeah, you can't you can't win a fight you don't take, you know? Yeah. You don't actually try and go for it. And that's what uh, DRX are really struggling with here, not quite with the killer instinct. We're wanting from them. However, not end of the world. 1.5k, something like that. Uh, the Rift Herald, that's a bit of a bummer. But they still should be able to hold on. And with the fact that it's an Infernal Soul, the fight coming up in a minute 20 is going to be the big one. Starting to stack these dragons. Especially for a composition like DRX that... Okay, in goes Closer. Wants to find Zaytab, and that's it. That's just a solo kill. Uh, Sponge comes on over with a celebratory ultimate, but he might just be food for the Akali as well. He's dashing forward. Sponge, going to be tanky enough to survive, is now Rascal. He's in trouble. World Ender comes down, knocked up into the sky. The permafrost is there, and he is just taken out. Fear X, they came to play today. And Closer, when given a lead, says, thank you very much. I will take that lead and shove it in DRX, their face. And they are not having a great time with it. No. Uh, attempted setup there. I was actually thinking, because what happens is the moment Sponge shows up in the ward, Closer is going in. I'm like, oh man, I wonder if Closer feels like, that's unfortunate, maybe I can try... No, he just kills... Yeah, kills him before he can really do anything at all. And then Sponge is there and he's level 9. He's like, well... Because he, he sees him and he still yeah. just goes uh. in. Hits everything, right? Doesn't, doesn't even need his rocket bell. And then the moment that Sponge shows... Fear X is like, Rascal's alone. Yeah, and he, well, Rascal's not alone. Rascal has a gray screen. That's what they discovered. And uh, Rascal, he didn't know it in that moment, but he definitely figured oh, it out. not again, not again, not again! Oh no, Satan's under his turret this time! And Close is able to tank that one up. Teddy looks for the flash forward, but the piercing darkness isn't going to be enough. Dash cannon's going to be used. He'll have another back foot, but Teddy is able to flash. close the difference. He does, the distance, sorry. He does have his flash, but... uh. He's going to use it in order to escape. So Closer is going to be fine. And now Closer's going in once again. Bramble Smash is very good. They're not finding the engages. Oh, the pushback clear saves it here for 
the Fear X. Ready and Hen is able to lock down the kill onto the tree. Pleta trying to find an opportunity. He's very tanky. As this Tom Kench and the Drake is going to reset. Maybe not end end of the world here for DRX, but DRX is still just getting kill after kill and catch after catch. And Closer took his well-earned money. What a Lich Bane. Those oh, autos are going to hurt goodness. even more. The burst is going to be very unfun for DRX. And we see the attempt there from Rascal to kind of turn it around, but it is again looking disjointed. Teddy is on a wild goose chase. It's like, I can get the bounty, I can get the bounty. But it, but it's Akali. And uh, Closer does have to invest his flash, but it's going to take the, any time. Doesn't even have the Lich Bane here yet, right? Yeah. It goes in. Uh, with his R, which he uses to ensure that he hits the E, and then the burst damage is just way too much. It's pretty textbook stuff. Looked very, very good, though, as we're going to have a look at the fight up towards the top as well. As I do want to point out Clear here, trying to get them out of all of the damage potential that Rascal did have. Manages to push them away, save them from a lot of that AoE. Worked out very, very well. Because here they might actually lose the fight otherwise. Yeah, we're going to see a bit in. of a fight though. As Teddy once again able to use those Swifties to great effect. But Pleta may not be so lucky. Nature's Grasp coming on through there. As you can see, Closer lurking to the top of your screen. And that is going to mean DRX are out of here. They do not want anything to do with this whatsoever. Execute, leaving. This time as Clear clears up the turret towards the bottom side of the map. That pun was unintentional, but I still liked it. Will are now checking brushes. We'll find some saplings there. But VRX, 7 to 1 now is the kill score. They're moving closer and closer to that 5,000 gold lead. And Closer is just having the time of his life. And do you know what worried me, Chronicler? This draft looks very similar to what KT put together against T1. And yes, DRX's composition is vastly different to what T1 had. Um, but it still was a little bit of a worrying sign. Virex is showing me that it works really well if it gets going. You just gotta get it going. <laughs> and that way, Virex definitely have a um, a more straightforward opponent ahead of them. Yeah. Yeah. Than, than KT. The comparison is completely unfair. Uh, but sometimes that's what you gotta do. Hey, it, it, we can do whatever we want on the broadcast. If we wanna compare apples to oranges, like who's gonna stop us? No, that's true. And also, I never got that. Why can't you do that? I and, don't uh, uh, just okay. fine. I mean, I guess it's like, okay, never mind. Let's uh, have a little bit of a fight first before we talk about the apples and oranges type situation. Uh, that is going to be Sponge. Twisted advancing a little bit further than he really wants to, but Execute just continuing to try and be in position. Hit by a soccer ball or a football. Uh, however you'd like to say it. Don't want to be on any one side when it comes hey. to that particular argument. Footballs and soccer balls, right? Can Apples and oranges, am I right? Yeah. as well. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Brought it back. Beautiful. I actually still, I don't, I also don't really understand it. Um, the apples and oranges comparison thing. Because I do kind of like oranges a little bit more personally. Just to kind of a Really? I feel guy. like it really matters what type of apple it is. Oh, that's true. You What's got, your favorite you got... apple? Probably Pink Lady. I like pink ladies as well. I think my favorite is a Granny Smith. A gra oh, that's a that's a that's a that's a very specific. I mean, I, I respect Granny Smith and what they mean for baking in particular. <laughs> uh, I, I would, I would a, never a granny, a granny, granny Smith, Smith. apple is uh, generally a little bit more um, acidic. It's green and tart. Yeah, that's and I like I like that. Um, the pink lady does have that extra sweetness, but does still have that level of acidity. Have you had a like. Honey Crisp? Honey Crisp is a bit sweet for me. Too much? Yeah, yeah I, I, I get it. <laughs> so oh, wow. Excuse. He still gets hit. He is. You, you might be able to change your name, but he's just. He's still Jong Hoon, right? He's still the same guy. And he is going to demonstrate it. Being chased by the ball. We'll be able to escape. Um, there is a uh, Jeju native citrus fruit. Kind of like a cross between a mandarin and an orange. Oh, they, those are great. Oh yeah. my god, I love it so much. They're absolutely fantastic. It's definitely very, very good. I am a carrot juice enjoyer as well. Um, and we're talking about juice and things like this because at the moment, DRX do have a very large advantage and they're just pushing waves towards DRX, trying to get as much space between them and their vision so that they can potentially grab some sort of objective. Clear, though, is now in 
potentially some trouble, although he is a Cassante. He can get himself out. Nature's Grasp going to use, though, and DRX in better position right now. Willa goes over the wall. They get the Cassante, but now Closer's looking for that back line. Shuriken backflip doesn't quite work, but the perfect execution is going to be there. But now Teddy has the rest of his team. He's also got the Devour Shield, and now the flash forward is coming in. Another backflip comes down, and Fear X, this is not the fight you were looking for, and this time DRX hold. But the Rx also don't fight anyone. I mean, they get clear. No, they get clear. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. That's a win. We'll take it. Yeah. Uh, clear showing again that with Ghost, your positioning needs to be a little bit crisper uh, than it is the case with a Flash. I like how you mentioned two League of Legends players in that sentence. Yeah. Uh, we uh, we try to get in this. And it's also an Apple reference. We're hey, really stacking layers yeah, keep, on layers keep here. Keeping this on our toes. Uh, clear ends up getting taken down. And the teleporter is a little bit late. I just wanted to everyone to watch what happens when Closer does find Teddy. Teddy SCU's literally everything, sidesteps both the W as well as the E, and he still has a flash, heal, and get Kench ulted. Yeah, and if he didn't uh, dodge any of those things, he, he was, was dead. He was dead. Dead through all yeah. of those buttons. That doesn't yes. matter, yeah. Uh, so, so it's still not great, but the scaling Atlas, we're getting Brr. closer. Teddy and they managed, these And they souls. managed to get position around... Dr Hang on, never mind. No, no, no. no. Uh, don't, 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 point don't, don't talk about the drink. Yeah, uh, it's it's fine. Teddy, 103 souls. He is a any second now. Any, any second now. The any second back. now, it's going to be 40 minutes. Yes. Heck yeah. In fact, I have a pretty good idea that I know uh, how long away 40 minutes is. Yeah? yeah? How long? Right now. I think it's about 14 minutes-ish. Give or take. Very accurate. Thank you. Thing. I thought maybe it caught you off guard with the little... Yeah, no, 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 I remembered. <laughs> yeah. I knew you were going to do it. Yeah, yeah, I tried. Okay. Um, you, can, you can hear we're losing our minds just a little bit because this the pace of this game isn't necessarily it's correlating uh, very well with the advantage that FearX have put together for themselves. Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting game because what happens is that consistently a team goes for something and then it just doesn't quite line up with what the rest of the teammates are thinking of at that given moment, which is a great showcase of why League of Legends is such a complicated game. And 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 really how spoiled we are yeah. by uh, by a lot of other teams in the LCK, because they make it look easy to all be on the same page every single time. And it's I, not. I do feel like when you're uh, Fear X, though, shouldn't you just say, all right, execute, what Start do we down. do? In a time like this, right, when you know you have such a lead, so much control, um, uh, this could be Closer having a rough time as, oh my god! Okay, he's going for it, there is the kill. Um, now Rascal is trying his very best to get some revenge, but going one for one, that's not really what you want. Unless you can just kill Clear after he teleports in. The rest of Fear X coming up here and Sponge clearing our vision. It's a 4v4 in the top lane. Uh, it's not, actually. My boy Sata took one for the team, okay? He needed to... Uh, Teddy got a 1k goal Pretty sure he's taken four for the team. Yeah, um, okay, the, the other ones I don't want to talk about. But this last one, yeah. that one was worth it. Because it did actually get Teddy the big shutdown he'd been looking for. 1k gold in the pockets of the Senna. Is it enough? Maybe. I, maybe. Maybe. Uh, maybe. That might allow him yes. to survive without using every cooldown. Uh, no, th I think that part... Actually, yeah, no, that's, that's going to stay the same. Maybe uh, if he goes Maw third? Because he's probably going to go Edge of Night. Closes items are very silly, and he's level 16. What What did Satan mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> he wanted uh, to crush him like Luke Skywalker in the Death Star, you know? In the garbage compactor. Ah, the trash compactor. Yeah, yeah it's the trash compactor. Uh, he was like, oh, I forgot that that mechanic <laughs> isn't in real. Um, but he wanted to squish him in the wall. That would be cool. I guess Poppy does that. Yeah. Poppy is a trash compactor. There, she, there we go. It's not in this game, though. No. Uh, I, I really hope Fear X at some point just realizes how far ahead they are and how much engage they have and how unprepared the RX is and just starts Nash. That shove, would be an idea. Shove top, shove mid, closer has TP, yeah. start Nash. It would also be good to, when closer hits level 18, realize that... You know, the advantage that he's going to have with this three-level advantage that he may have uh, in the coming minutes. Start Nash. Yeah, it could be a time to really Just execute on your on your game plan. <laughs> Speaking of which, Execute's going to get snared. Gets into the Baron Pit, gets Look, shot a couple of times. It's starting to happen. There we go. The yeah, laser no. is coming online. Yeah, we are building it. 
It's almost <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, fully uh, it's uh, alive and operational. Battle right in station. front of our eyes. <laughs> We're constructing the Death Star. Uh, but it's also, you know, 11 minutes. 11 minutes on the clock until we get to that magic number that I sort of just made up. Closer is Yoda. It oh. all makes sense. He's <laughs> tiny, he's green, he's tumbling. Oh, man. Oh. It kind of. I think Sponge kind of looks a little bit more accurate there. Um, why aren't they starting Nash? <laughs> They're just waiting. They're, they're going instead. They wanted to get the arm guard onto Closer so that they could engage a little bit more. Uh, Clear wants to get the top lane shoved in also. But the problem is is that uh, VRX haven't really spent that much time grouped on the top side to really clear out all that vision. And you can see DRX has a path that they can wander uh, towards this Baron Pit very comfortably. And so that's going to mean Closer heads back towards the bottom lane. Going to try and put on as much pressure there. And feel as foxes can move as this four-man unit try and get something done. They're they're getting mid prio. Yeah, they may lose this out of turret uh, as execute. He is flanking, but there's no Akali to really threaten. He's now moved into the fog of war and does have teleport. That is a fair bit of time as clear and get hit by a snare. And it I I can feel this clock. You know, it's it's under double digits now. Shuriken backflip could have almost got the edge of night, but does not. Uh, Fear X with a lead this big, like they can obviously flip the dragon and, and be completely fine. As long as they win the ensuing fight. Closer, it's got to get into this back line. Yeah, Teddy's looked for execute. That is going to be the steal and the bounty, and the glacial prison goes wide. Does slow down Sponge a little bit, but he's very tanky. Clear wants to find an opportunity, but doesn't get it. And now Willa, can he get through the execute? Not sure what that was. Looked cool, he pressed buttons. That was great. Now they are going to move on out. Hmm. Okay, there's an Empress Divide used defensively. Closer tried to find his opportunity. Teddy had a big old shield, and he still has it. All right, analyst guy, take me through <laughs> it's it. It's an east side game, Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> Rascal somehow gets it. I don't know why they have map presence. Or control. How they're allowed to, but they do. Maybe they typed in all chat, we've scaled now, <laughs> beware. But and I don't know if they can do this. Well, they are going to give it a try. Fox, uh, sorry, Sponge, down to 50%. Closer. Yeah, Closer is in. spotted, yeah. Came out of the fog of war there. DRX going to use this information to just take an out of turret in mid lane. That is very comfortably secured. And so now the gold lead moving back to court towards uh, inconsequential territory. This is a game. I can even hear the Korean cast giggle. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is uh, after the intensity that we had, especially with game number one in our previous series, and just the decisiveness that was utilized and by T1 in the last two games. Yeah. Um, to then have this. Um, and they, they often do say that it's good for you, right? To have like to have a, a like go in a sauna and be really really hot and then go outside and jump in an ice bar apparently that's good for you that's kind of the sort of vibe that i'm getting from uh from seeing these two series back to yeah back, you know um so is this the ice bath is this the sauna it's relatively warm in here but i uh, that's neither here nor there it's just different it's just different, it's just different. <laughs> it's just different. So uh, now we've reached a point where the gold lead that Fear X have is pretty inconsequential. Um, Teddy does not have his next item just yet. I think third item he is going to need to get through Willer uh, and clear reliably as huh. with a frozen ultimate. Man, that okay. Execute might just die here as Satab actually doing a lot of damage. Dorting Shadow does not find him, but he is a pretty. Uh, nimble and now closer is getting chased Speeding down up. by the roots does have to backflip to get away so that e is now on cooldown for a few seconds and now sponge doesn't have it available true will we see fear x push a side lane and use their five and one akali i don't know whether that's the answer chronicler yes that Right now, it's happening. All right. Okay. So, uh, closer is up there towards the top side. Maybe use that to secure some vision. Ooh. Right. Control ward Wait, over the wall. Closer still here. 
rush around. Okay, he's fine. He fine. is. And, and he's doing it! Yeah, they've actually the started the Baron. Sponge gets a ward in here. He does have a smite available, but there is a lot of damage in this pit right now. And Rascal, he's got Edge of Night. He's looking for it. They dive on forward, execute, trying to find the quickness. My god, he just melts. There is starting to be a lot of damage on this DRX squad as they do pull Sponge back. Permafrost comes in closer, looks for the opportunity as the backflip. It connects onto his shroud, but not much more than that. They take down the jungler, but the Baron has been stopped. <laughs> and uh, it's a 4,000 gold lead. That a 2,000 gold Baron power play has begun here. Construction on the Death Star has been halted. Fairax realized that they were kind of meandering uh, in, in the face of a large lead that they had hand-earned and decided, what if we just start a Baron? Uh, a couple of over-investments uh, of members come through from DRX, Teddy and Plata go up, get seen, and then with uh, Execute and Clear doing a really good job, Sponge isn't able to make it in, Execute somehow doesn't die, and then Satep truly is doing a really good job in these fights. This ult in particular means that they don't instantly lose the game, but at the same time, I'm kind of wondering if you could have used it aggressively. Maybe they could have killed everyone. Yeah. Um, the gold lead is now getting bigger. I don't know... As long as inhibitors don't fall, I don't know how much it is going to matter given how Ferex has played the map, but in 20 seconds, they are... Just push! Push the side! Don't let them try and contest you, please. On this Drake, don't let them flip again. Well, you can see Clear is the one that's trying to hold on to this mid lane. The rest of the team was moving on over as Rascal. Now considering trying to turn here as Willa kind of caught. Three members moving on up. Nature is grasping. Oh, we actually hit a Glacial Prison this time around as Willa's over the wall. Closes got on in there. He dashes a million miles away and does have perfect execution. Looks for Sponge with it, who does manage to take it here. The Devour going to be utilized on the Maokai. And Clear can tank this one up. XQ once again doesn't find the grand entrance. It's in goes Satap this time around, but he only finds the tank and then he explodes. That's Hannah locking down that kill. Execute's gonna somehow kill Rascal. And DRX, they went for the aggressive play and unfortunately, even though it looks kind of cool, they get punished for it. It backfired. Satap couldn't find enough people. And Fairx is going to, uh, to take the soul. They got the Baron. It looks like they might have finally cracked DRX. They might have done it. <laughs> Rascal gets caught. Has to use his ultimate defensively, and then now DRX is in an awkward position here. Um, a lot of flashes over the wall. They're trying to extend the fight, and because the front line is so low, Teddy trying his best to do as much damage as possible doesn't actually get to do that much. Uh, Satap, that flash force from Execute actually ends up being the difference maker. If he flash holds uh. and he gets Henna and Execute, they win the fight. Like, Teddy actually gets to clean up, and I think that they might actually turn it. So, Execute able to force out a crucial flash, denying Satap a big saving grace swoop. Not that to mention, should be it. The Zonyas from Closer was beautifully timed as well. Otherwise, it would have been both solo laners that uh, Satap would have picked up, and that could have been uh, a little bit better here for DRX. But instead, not actually able to find it. So, Infernal Soul. Now available. The Baron up again in two and a half minutes. We are still ticking down. I don't think looking at the clock is necessarily as impactful at this stage because the lead that uh, Fierex have put together for themselves to the tune of about 8,000 is something that scaling just struggles to overcome when the amount of items are just much higher. It's so poetic. It's yeah. true. Yeah. And it's it's also looking at the items on, on Fierex, it's not like they skill poorly. No, no, no. You know, no. It's, it's obviously Akali is a little bit harder to play out in team fight, but in the 1v1 is extremely potent. Let's Zaya is self-explanatory. If we get to infinite time, though, Teddy should be able to sit in hey. his fountain and kill everyone. Oh, 166. <laughs> Construction is still on. <laughs> oh, it's still ongoing. Um, but the Inferno Soul makes it so hard because we already saw how hard it is for Teddy to stay alive. A lot of summoners had to be invested by DRX to even have a chance in that fight. And right now they don't have those cooldowns. And there is an Akali that's uh, almost full build that has Infernal Soul. Yeah. So that's that's a big problem. And I don't know if just Kench is going to be enough to deal with that. Well, I do. I, I, I don't think it is. No, it shouldn't be. We're kind of figuring that out. And of course, uh, Pleta is 
Kind of required for a lot of different things is Teddy galloping out of base. 167 stacks is a lot of stacks. 160 extra range is a lot. Love this graphic. Yeah, it's really cool. We've been seeing this. Uh, the one for Draven as well that we had in our previous series. Some upgrades here in our lower thirds. Giving that information out. Uh, that's all right. Clear. Mega tanky, my goodness. That's a lot of health bar chunks that he has going on there. Willer as well does have those best items that he really likes. Uh, Thornmail and Frozen Heart certainly making Teddy's day a little bit rougher considering his uh, amount of lethality. Rascal as well on this Aatrox. Something that uh, you can just build a lot of armor into and be a lot uh, happier. Although he does have Cyrilda's Grudge at the moment. Certainly helping the more lethality that you do have built up. Um, that's a lot of damage to the turret, as we can see there. Lich Bane. Lich Bane. Hard at work. It's paying off. And in about 20 seconds, this Nash is going to... And I actually like this a lot. From Fear X, you have an, a, a side laner that doesn't lose any 1v1. Teddy, he's oh. autoing. Yeah, Hannah getting slowed down here as Teddy frontlining. One more time. You can see the flank angle there from Executing Willow. Sized up momentarily. But Teddy, with this ability to slow them now. down, make things difficult, he does have... Uh, the items. Still needs to complete his rapid fire cannon, which is looking to be the final one. And as long as Rascal can keep clearing the wave, I think particularly with Profane Hydra actually helping a lot with this, it is hard without Nash to push for closer, even with the amount of damage that he has available. Yeah. Well, you can see uh, Rascal making. Uh, it looks difficult. Does miss. The Shuriken backflip, that keeps him alive. Rascal with the World Ender, use it there as well. And maybe that Negatron Cloak helping out. You can see a cheeky one in his back pocket. So he's going to go back to base, but successfully defends his inhibitor for the minute. And closer now with that. Uh, Flash is actually a big deal moving into these next fights because every summoner spell is up here for DRX. Uh, Teddy in a bit of an awkward spot here, but does have the reinforcements at the ready. Yeah. Whoa. The pace, it's the intensity of these moments, even if not a whole lot is happening. It is feeling like it could go anyway. Teddy. Teddy is just, he is hitting fountain laser territory. He got us to coin the phrase. As Henner has put down a lot of feathers behind this Baron, that will be taken down very, very quickly, but can they win the ensuing fight? These shields just exploding to that dash cannon from Closer. Could be important moving forward as Clear's going to get snared. They take the Baron, but can they win the fight? That is the question. As in goes Execute, this time he'll find it. The center erupts into a pool of feathers, and now it's Closer just clearing it. Fear X, they took their time, but they waited for the opportune moment. And now, DRX's Nexus is in their sights. Just waiting for the right opportunity. You gotta wait till the Force tells you to go. Exactly. And right there. They went in and they got Teddy. Crucially, doesn't even get to flash a little bit disjointed there and attempt. The Arax, a valiant effort, but it's not enough. As Ferex takes a hard fought game one of victory in this best of three. Very hard fought. Very hard fought on both sides, you have to say. Certainly some ups and downs to be pointed out. We tried to have as much fun with it as possible, but. Probably feeling like VRX could have rode that snowball a little bit more aggressively. It was a little bit of like, you know, the, what is it, the, the, the leaf, the leaf tactic on the snowball. We go, yeah, go down the hill, we just, yeah, the very, leaf. very slowly. You could go for some turns. No turns. Opt for some carving. No turns. And perhaps get a few extra run in, runs in on the day. Um, but instead, just taking it, taking it slow. That way, you don't fall down. And they did find their opportunity. I really did enjoy the last engage there by Execute. That one finally working out. Some of the others not quite getting there. Closes early game, though, absolutely fantastic. And their Baron calls pretty clean uh, during that game once they happened. That's the key thing. And I think we, again, we see for uh, Fear X specifically that when they go, they go as a collective. I love that. Can, can Turn it up a little bit. For DRX, still looking, but those team fights look better than I was expecting. Absolutely, now it is time to head to a short break. When we get back, the space will break down that game number one. We have game number two ready for you. See you there.
내일은 희망일 뿐 약속된 건 없어 
and welcome back to the space. We are here after game number one of Fear X up against DRX. And that one was uh, quite the marathon we had between these two teams. Very back and forth, a lot of fighting and a lot of action. So what did you guys think about this one? Let's start with the draft because we had something very interesting happen in this one. We weren't really happy, um, to be honest, Huni and I, uh, about the Akali pick that came through uh, into a Maokai with a Tom Kent to protect the Senna. Um, we weren't really set on that. We were hoping for a Corky. We thought maybe that could be a good option here. Yeah, that's what we were kind of, we were kind of feeling like, hmm, this fits here. We expected this to come through, but it didn't, did it, Huni? I mean, they nearly banned Tali and Ukong, and they first beat Gazir, and it's like, what else could be there? And also, like, it's almost a like perfect setup. It's like, the poke is not as good against, like, Azir and even Santa Tom. There's no hard engage. Yeah, sure, there's a Maokai, but, like, they can't touch you, basically. They have... Like there's no also top laner that it will be threat. And also it's like, it's just so easy to like run the actual older strategy, but we we also kind of forgot a clo it's a closer. He loved the middle champ. Yeah, closer, he basically said, you know, he took our pregame analysis personally. He took people's preconceived notions about the early game, Akali versus Azir matchup and turned it on his head. He said, no, 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 no. This is not how this goes. There was a bit of a mid gap in this game, it did feel like. And, uh, you know, even with Corky and multiple games in a row where he just absolutely single handedly carries the game after three items with that crazy build, didn't matter. And you know what Closer said? He said, fine, let me show you what I can do on this champ. And we can go into highlight number one and show you as well because 17 minutes in and for a large portion of this game, portion of this game, Closer was just everywhere. He got a 20 CS lead in mid. We're not going to break down all of these plays because a lot of this is, is error here, but they were winning on top side. They were winning on bottom side at the same time. I think one thing to say here is Satab is a rookie, right? I mean, he did play obviously uh, a few games during COVID, but genuinely, this is not Satab's level, what we are seeing from him in, in these first two weeks of LCK. He has shown us in the LCK specifically where he picked up POG, way better performances than what we are seeing from him right now. I don't know if the pressure is getting to him. He's playing with Legends here. He's playing with Teddy on his squad, right? But he did not have a great game. And Closer was the number one beneficiary of some of his big errors. Yeah, I mean, just speaking of, I, like, we kind of briefly already said it. Like, he he just won 1v1 as the like, Closer, just in lane just burning flash into other matchup which is like that's that can't be happening like if that happened everyone's just gonna be just picking a kali into us here yeah and we have seen it before but generally it kind of goes like even and akali might struggle even early on and then you know it kind of we see akali's eventual assassination power as the game comes along but he kind of made the game about him and it did go on for quite a while and then eventually we got into the last fight of the game which did end it here 41 minutes in at the Baron. Execute decides to show up. Yeah, there were a few fights where Execute couldn't quite hit the mark, but this time he was very confident. He was very ready to get on top of the back line here. Uh, Teddy does have Flash available. Obviously, that is one of the biggest tools he's going to want in a situation like this. Also, stepping very far forward here, despite having a massive amount of stacks, just gets caught off guard. Execute sees blood in the water, goes in on him instantly. It's Henna who picks up the kill. And that's really the catalyst for what eventually finally becomes the end of this game. Fear X really struggling to push their advantages in the mid game. But ultimately, one Baron call is what uh, actually pushes them over the line. Yeah, I mean, they should have been like actually keep happening from the 20 minute, obviously. But it should have been like, as also the current color was mentioning about, and also even Rakan play. Like, there's so many times they actually failed. But still, it was like really great to see Execute actually finally hit the, the right people and the right time. And this is great, has a great turn. And that actually made the games win. So it's still really big credit for him. Yeah, absolutely. Eventually got there in the end and was the uh, the engage that they needed eventually by the end of the game. But either way, guys, we do have the POG ready to go. Let's see who does pick it up here for game number one, as I do have a certain Akali on my mind. And yes, Closer will pick it up. He has 30% or rather 31% of his team's damage here in this insanely long game. Really high kill participation, three solo kills. We didn't love the Akali in the draft, but when he dominates lane as hard as he did, this is one of those critical moments, you know, in the early game, Satab gets knocked up here. I, I mean, you got to give him credit where it's due. Obviously, he didn't have the biggest impact in late game team fights into this composition, which is why I think it took a long time to end. But his individual performance was fantastic. I, I would not be shocked if Execute picked up a few votes here, though. 
Yeah, I mean, he finally, you know, if there was no Rakan playing on Execute, obviously, it's the, the game is actually probably not end that. And also, the Akali, I think, oh, I think it's the solo kill impact was kind of pretty big. I think it actually, it dragged to end of the game because the culture was bad. Interesting uh, vote there on the Zion. Uh, he did do a, a decent amount of damage and was consistent in the team fights, I suppose. But uh, either way, it is closer 11 out of 12, and we are done here on the space either way. Let's throw it back to the casters for game number two. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for the breakdown of game number one. I do want to defend the henna vote because he used his feathers to secure two barons, and they were the two most decisive things that happened in the game for Fear X. And so just giving him some kudos. That's I respect it. I, in hindsight, I'm like, oh, I should have given one to my boy Execute. I think he earned it eventually. No. If, if he, Closer he, wasn't in the game, he, then he, yeah, maybe. He, he earned it eventually, Atlas. Yeah. He, he kept to, going yeah. in, and then the one time he did it well, it, it won him the game. Yeah, it was, it, it was, it was not um, the cleanest. However, he did make a very good play towards the end. <laughs> And it's, it's, it's about the ones that do win you the game, you know? And that one led to a Nexus falling. Let's jump into the draft here for game number two. See where the DRX can fight back here against a team that really did kind of, uh, I guess, toy with them towards the end of that last game before finally putting them out of their misery. Now, we'll see whether they can be a bit more fierce on the outset. And one might argue that it's actually worse to lose in that fashion as oh, opposed to just getting stomped. Because it's drawn up, you feel like you actually do have a shot. We had this conversation lose. about uh, the telecom war in our uh, previous series, and that was that game number two, not the most devastating, but the emotional damage happens in game number three. As soon as the first play goes wrong. Yeah. So we'll see for DRX, picking up any win here would be would be big, right? We're, we're, when it comes to the lower end of the standings, even getting individual wins uh, would be quite nice. And just to uh, remind you right now, they are 0 and 5. Have not won a single. And, and of course, uh, one of those series was against Hanwha, where you're like, okay, makes sense. But the other one were Nongshim and now Ferex. It is setting up our series on Sunday to be a bit of a banger, though. Guess who's casting that one? Because. It's Both Bro and DRX are struggling to do the victory. And one of them one of them's has gonna to win. win. One of them will have to win. Oh my wait. No, we, we had the an I thought it was disabled. We had the answer. Crazy. Well, it will be the a Cassante lock-in here for Rascal. They talked about it. Yeah, they, they did. They they found the techno I mean at the same time, like Firex is not gonna pick Corky for closure. There is no way. That's not who he is. No, it is not. He's not that guy. They are going to pick Zyra Khan, though. It's not... It doesn't whelm me, the Zyra it, Khan. It doesn't give me any emotion whatsoever. It's just there. I don't like blind picking it, because I feel like you can abuse it. You should. Yeah. I would love for them to go with something with a lot of range. I think Santa Sarah... Caitlyn Lux. Uh, Jinx can yeah, that's actually fine. isn't bad. Teddy's like, oh, I just needed more DPS output. Yeah. I don't care about the burst. And uh, this actually, we saw earlier today already how well this can do. My main issue is that Jinx compositions are reliant on not only the Jinx play, but also how the rest of the team plays around her and buys space for her. I think the best example that we've seen of them uh, has been like T1 back in, what, 2022, JDG uh, for the entire oh, spring yeah. last year, as well as MSI. Just absolute monsters at creating space. And then obviously the, the main character will be the AD carry, but really a lot of the grunt work will be done by uh, by the tank players, by the supports. And in this case, I, I'm a little skeptical of DRX, their ability to have that level of cohesion, but we're gonna give them the faith. Because I do like to pick an isolation into what oh, DRX yeah. have. No, it's a, a, for straight up lane to lane, um, this one makes a heck of a lot of sense. If they were somehow able to uh, put Zaytab on a Corky, then this composition will be somewhat reminiscent of another one that we have seen uh, already today. Uh, Poppy is banned though, so we're not going to see that aspect of it. Maokai, gonna be taken away. I imagine 
sticking to the jungle as far as the bands are concerned. Wukong going to be taken away from Willa, something that he has always enjoyed. Uh, Willa and Sylvie are our Wukong uh, players. I guess everyone was a Wukong player back uh, back in the day, but uh, there is Corky. So it exists. It's on the client. We can confirm. Now, not going to be in the game. Any uh, Centab Jace? If you're, yeah, if you're, because if you're Fear X, you're like, yeah, pick Azir. Like, we, we, we honestly don't, we can go Yone, we can go Akali, it doesn't matter. Aurelia. Both will do the same, oh, oh, no. Yeah. No. no Ozu no, would no, do no, it. No, 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 I mean, he, he would, would, but I'm just, just the thought of it uh, fills me with dread. I think you go for a jungle pick for Willow here. I think you give the counter pick to Closer. He got POG, hard carried last game. Uh, now but he's instead, playing Azir. Uh, just going to give him the Pidgey. And Saintap, this was one of his uh, stronger picks. This is Akali, where some of the picks he was incredibly, incredibly adept on. Is he going to go for the Sylvania oh my. Akali? Is it actually just the run it back in the other side of the matchup to see whether he can do to Closer what Closer did to him? Bringing us to a game six. Oh my goodness. It hasn't been locked in yet but my anticipation for the Seitab Akali. I can see it in his eyes. Oh, that would be That'll another that. option. That's a bit of fun. Also adds a bit of mixed damage, but not really. That is going to be the LeBlanc, something that Seitab has also been very, very good at. And we saw Showmaker, the execution, uh, or the, ex the executor, um, really able to take uh, people down on the more ability power based LeBlanc, which I'm hoping to see. Execute, don't don't make us think we're gonna have fun. It's not cool. No. We all know it's not happening. There we go. Well, we now have a mounted battle Man. in the jungle. Imagine if you had a champion that was really good into tanks and also into stationary AD carries. That would be good. They're not stationary. They can still walk. But yeah, relatively. Less mobile AD Less carries. mobile AD carries. Dashless. Dashless is perfect. Um, he exists. He is Trundle, but he was picked once oh. and lost. So he's not hes not real anymore. He is real, though. He's in my heart. Pillar of Filth isn't real, though. Did you know that? Is it just called Pillar of Frost? Mm. Frozen Domain. So sad. I loved old Trundle. I loved old Trundle so much. They didn't have to change the name. Pillar of Filth is such a beautiful name, isn't it? Are you a metal fan? A what? Metal fan of like the, the music genre? Uh, used to be. It's a reference, right? A pillar sure of filth. Uh, oh, uh, that's a that's a band name, isn't it? Yeah. I, 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 Cradle of filth. I think so. I think yeah. I'm not. I'm not very I don't, at home in the genre. No, neither am I. Um, I probably shouldn't be having. It's harkening back. Yeah. It's harkening back to a to a time gone by. As we can see, Fear X fans feeling in pretty high spirits after that previous victory, looking to get themselves back in a good position, maybe fighting for a spot on the western side. It is in their grasp, it's in their sights. Could possibly get there. This composition should be able to work out as well. I mean, it's pretty cut and dry. We can see exactly where the front line is, where the engage is. It works. Let's jump onto the rift here for game number two. All right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, onto the rift. We're going to try our very best not to have conversations about metal music because we are underqualified. Um, but if you could tweet to us maybe some recommendations, we can work on that and get better throughout the season because this is all about improvement until playoffs for both teams and commentators alike. Am I right? I wholeheartedly agree. You're looking quizzical. Uh, no, I, I, I've, what, what, what I, is, what is? I, uh, I'm not sure if Satap is still going to go for AD LeBlanc. I feel like AD LeBlanc, uh, yeah. really doesn't re In general, AD LeBlanc to me is obviously not going to be as strong in terms of reliable damage output, and I think that the barrier or the, you know, the skill floor is way higher. Sorry, yeah, skill to, like you need to be this good to skill floor is lower. It's hard yeah. to play. Yeah, it's hard to have an impact. Yeah. Um, then secondly, but it is this, this is alacrity, so like this is not just a I'm gonna auto attack a lot in lane set up a swim fleet, so it's kind of a given. Yeah, we're but also we have been shown 
that AP LeBlanc is perfectly fine by uh, none other than the showmaker himself. We've also been shown that Cassidy's fine. Why not just pick Cassidy? Well, and, and, and for me, the real kicker is that look at your composition and think, and then you look at the enemy tanks and you're like, they're going to build Frozen Heart because yeah. the item is really, really undervalued on the current patch. It's, it's way stronger than... And it's getting nerfed next patch. It's, yeah. it's going to be 100 gold more. It's very they're going to build a Frozen Heart. Indeed. We don't have any other source of AP. Yes. I'm going to build AD LeBlanc. Yeah, the line of thinking, now that you put it that way, does seem a little bit erroneous. And eventually Teddy will get LDR and like shred for everyone anyway. True. But it's not great. Atlas, it's not, it doesn't fill me with joy or excitement, and I really would have liked to see no AP tank. variant. Not a lot of tank. I would agree. Um, neither does uh, this is here. The win rate, um, not really looking good. Six losses in a row. And some big names on that list as well, Faker and BDD. Also both not having too much success with the champion. Maybe it's time to put the Emperor on the shelf for a little while. Also has been in almost every single game. Nobody uh, puts Nasir in the corner, Atlas. That is true. Can't be done. As here in the bottom lane, at least, uh, you know, uh, this is going a lot more similarly to the last game rather than our first one when it came to the Zaya Rakan. Of course, this is the same matchup that we saw uh, Deft and Beryl get absolutely bullied in. But that had a lot more to do with the, the person in the forest. And not necessarily as much, just the straight up 2v2. There is Sponge towards this bottom side. Thinking about taking some shellfish. We'll see whether he does try to impact the bottom side of the map. So far, not doing too much there. And We'll just opt for a full clear into back. Just barely out of range. Will not get spotted. You know, this intel is not available to Fear X, at least for the moment. We do see Sadov oh. actually doing a much better job of applying a decent amount of offensive pressure here. So, going to be feeling good at least about the opener. Does make sense, though, as mentioned. Oh, Satab going Ooh. aggressive on the closer here. Okay. I've seen this before. And of course, when he doesn't have any items, feels a lot like uh, AP LeBlanc, you know? As Execute, Grand Entrance, finds the air. But that air got absolutely punished. And that's hard. Oh, yeah. To do well. Got him. But he did do it. Uh huh. And that's a very rough first back for Closer, right? Sitting on the Dark Seal and, uh, and Ring as well. The sidestep. Yeah, fantastic sidestep there from Pleta, but the Blade Caller is still going to be there. The Grey Health does need to be consumed as the. Traps will grab Henna for the moment, so Teddy does keep Pleta alive. Tongue Lash does come through, but look at this. That's a full mini wave, and the Flash has to be used there. Pleta had to respect the fact that he could have got rooted there. And that's a pretty rough mistake there for Pleta. Loses a lot of power with that Flash now gone. And bot lane actually was looking very even. Not going to be the case. At least for now, as Satap, unsurprisingly, as mentioned, uh, kind of given away, is going for the full AD LeBlanc. And I think we saw Bulldog played in a, in a series where it actually looked pretty decent, didn't end up winning, but... Uh, that yeah, it was played once, the uh, AD variety. Yeah, I think it was like 3, 1, and well, it was fine. Although Satap... is going to connect, but Closer is going to be all right for the minute. Willa and Execute in the area. So therefore, not going to take too much extra damage. Flutter turns up as well, though. Still, Fox get the crash. Now can move off towards. Oh, never mind. Okay, in goes Satap. And out goes Satap. I am happy, and this is something that might backfire in this game, uh, might even backfire very soon. Uh -huh. But Satap is playing relentlessly aggressive in the face of having had uh, a really rough game. One of uh, the worst games that we have seen of him, I think, in uh, yeah. the LCK, but just in general. Again, this player was uh, one of the top tier mid challengers. And seeing him bounce back uh, is something that is going to fill me with at least a little bit of joy, even if it's at the hands of AD LeBlanc. Yeah. Or by aid of AD LeBlanc, I guess. And you can still use your chains and your buttons and things like that to get yourself in position in order to make those auto attacks work out. So it is still the same skill-intensive flashy champion that we know, but it just feels a little bit less sincere.
You know, it feels a little bit less fun when you're not just distorting forward to make someone explode. Um, see, that would have hit for a lot more. Uh, not actually, not at this stage of the game. Uh, that's all right. Execute, finds himself a bit of an engage here onto Teddy. Battle Dance. Back to Hannah. Testing the waters here in the bottom lane. Otherwise, and not too much more. Yeah, the biggest difference with this game and the previous one is that in this one, Fear X doesn't really need to snowball early. They are perfectly happy with this going to mid game. I, I'd greatly prefer the DRX composition if it is executed to its full extent, right? If you're actually using the rage advantage that Teddy has, oh, yeah. it should allow you to get easier mid prio. Sate up in the side lane was really hard to lock down because looking at Fear X, isn't actually that much reliable ways to lock down a LeBlanc, right? It's basically just Wheeler and even a lot of his skills will have a decent amount of wind up. Same for Execute, outside of his ultimate. Ooh, there's an Empress Divide, just to tell Satav to leave, and he's gonna get over that with a Mimic Distortion. Chains come in, that's a Glacial Prism, beautifully set up. Sponge is gonna help take that one down. So first blood going over to DRX. That looks almost clinical. Really beautifully done. Willa is gonna be able to secure his Raptors, but Sponge is not finished. There it is. That's the mounted, uh, the, the jostling. Yeah, I'm, you can see jousting between the. They two. actually, because they're both, yeah, on the back of an animal. Yeah, which is great. Uh, Satap is gonna be feeling much better about this game already. Sitting at a 30 CS lead was the one that actually set up the play, and right now DRX, at least the early game, some signs of life, and that's all we're really asking for from this team. Bringing in a. Uh, Two very inexperienced players. Plata is kind of a, you know, an edge case because of his personal situation of getting back in, back out, rule swapping. But here, the chain comes through. Sponge follows up very cleanly, and there is um, really no counterplay. Yeah, they had to flash the moment that the chain was uh, connecting or accept that that was going to happen because they did know that Sponge was there. Yeah, so Closer holds on to his flash, so he at least has that. Um, but that's sort of... Not exactly the greatest news. Noon Quiver done here for Satap. And he is returning the favor. It is close to a 30 CS gap after that first blood has come through. And DRX moving towards a decent gold advantage as we hit the 10 minute mark. Execute coming on over. We'll just throw a gleaming quill at Teddy. But it turns back up again. And everything is calming down. Level 6 is achieved. When Execute hits level 6, you know that it could be a dangerous time as this ward, high value, but about to run out. As the scan and comes in. This game is it's, it's all set up right now. Oh, Atlas. yeah. Inevitably, the payoff is going to come. They do know that Sponge is there. Well spotted on the ward. A lot of bot side vision here. Execute. They are all just wrapping around. There's the knock up. Crashdown comes on in as Pleader is very dead, but now can they answer back? Three versus two, but they're moving forward. Teddy utilizing that range advantage nicely. But Fear X, they don't want to mess with this. They wanted to get their kill, get themselves out. And that kill goes to Henner as well. It's a really good influx of gold for the AD carrier Fox. Nicely set up there. Do notice what well. Wheeler using his uh, Q there to shatter the shield that Pilot tried to keep himself alive with. And even with Sponge in there, they recognize an opportunity to take down the Kanj before he can do anything. Rascal already getting pummeled, as expected in this matchup. The 1v1, not going to be the most fun. Suffering from gameplay. You see all this gameplay that Clear is throwing at him, this big circle. I just wish people would have listened to Dundin, man, and bu buy that Leandris, oh, or yeah. buy that Riftmaker. Then you can still go full tank. You know, it's still great afterwards, but not seeing that. This is, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, still going to be the same setup. Execute uses his ultimate early on. And then, yeah, really the moment that the dash comes through towards Hannah, I kind of just have to preemptively flash. Lada attempts to hold, maybe thinking Sponge is here, so it's fine. It is not. Well, Super Mega Flash. Big. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Execute. Also going to face check Sponge here. And we'll see whether he can escape. Permafrost does come through, but it's after the grand exit. He's going to be able to make his way out, but now Hannah knows that the alarm bells are ringing. Clears out the wave, though, before he needs to worry. So nothing too much going to eventuate. And uh, Execute holds on to the Flash. Should be able to get his health bar back into a decent position, especially if he decides to go back home. Look, he's bought some pants and a shirt. Very nice. Cool. I like that. Yeah, I, I, I hope, it's, I hope the, it's the dead the, man's the, plate, Rakan. 
The pace of this game is throwing me off, particularly after what we were treated to earlier on. All right, uh, Closer was thinking about trying to find Satan, but Ooh, look the at damage. distortion. That is a lot of damage. And LeBlanc, when she is able to get ahead and is in a position like this where she can just poke with impunity, it's hard to deal with. Uh, Koenig Rooker now done as Execute just, just walks up. He's not impressed. Nope. Whatsoever. Ooh, look at this. Fear X trading two Drakes for six of these Void Bubs. And there's a Feather Storm used by Hannah. He does manage to lock down both Sponge and Pleta. Two versus three. I don't think they're going to be winning the fight. However, Hannah keeps himself up and does still have Ghost and his Flash. As now Satab, oh, connects the chains. Plays that beautifully. And Closer now. Taking the brunt of this AD, LeBlanc dashing forward. Empress Divide goes and finds nothing. And he's just zapping them. The Static Shiv working out beautifully. Super Mega Death Rocket connects this time. Not going to be enough damage there. And man, so we've seen this a couple of times now, you know. Satap doing the old turnaround. Perfect did it a little bit earlier on um, last week, I believe. Against DK. Yeah, F against King. And this is really good stuff from Satab to be able to brush off that last game. The fortitude required. And yeah, if I remember correctly, this is also something he did a lot in Challengers, particularly because uh, those kids played a lot of games, oh, right? Like yeah. Challengers, uh, b even before it took the same format as LCK last year, uh, there were a lot of games being played. I think it was like quadruple round robin, best of one, if I remember correctly. Uh, it was a really weird format. And there was a lot of gameplay. And as it turns out, uh, Satap did get forged in the fires of that. And thus far, hasn't really been enough for him to consistently get a good performance in the LCK. But I do hope that this is a sign of things to come. He as does have. Wheeler. Yeah, Shattering Strike comes down. And Satap, he's up and in here. So VRX going to have to back away. They do so. As we Herald have. fight. Yeah, top lane is moving to bot lane. They're going to hold the fort down there as we do set up for a potential scuffle. 4v4. And I wonder whether the news gets better ever for Closer, or whether he just needs to try to avoid this LeBlanc until there is a team fight that he can affect on the rest of the team of DRX. We'll have a couple of prime targets to swoop, right? Both Teddy and Plata are, are very susceptible to getting hit by Closer as Wheeler. Yeah, able to move himself away as Battle Dance from Execute. Going to save him from uh, execution. Oh, that it was unintentional, guys. I apologize. Was it really? It was actually this time. Wow. Um, I did it intentionally the first time, but I, I prefer not to double up. Uh, and I did uh, on accident. You don't have to believe me, but I'd request that you do. You know I will, Atlas. Well, there is a grand entrance. Almost was interrupted there as a Shattering Strike is going to come through. But Aftershock's pretty good. There's a Glacial Prison as well as Execute. Going to try and get out of there. Does have the quickness available. And the crash down there from Willa. Going to get him out of dodge. So, Henna now has his Ghost on cooldown. But Execute only had to use the ult. Didn't have to use a Flash or anything like that. So, might have that for the next little engage. And... What I'm liking is that DRX are just playing with so much more gusto in this game. They are staying up and in it. And DRX not having the same amount of control, uh, even a little bit, than they did in the last game at this stage. It's dead even in gold. But they're still going to teleport for this one. Teleport's happening all over the place as the top laners make their way in. Sponge, Arctic Assault goes down. That's the secure on the Rift Herald. The eye picked up by Willer as well, as Rascal thinks he may have found an angle. Wants to get that all-out happening, but the CC is good. There's the Featherstorm as now Henna. He does still have Flash, and the all-out is going to be used. It's on to Willa, though, and he just Flash crashes, and he gets himself out, and now Execute dives forward. Sponge almost just dies, but Satab gets in amongst it. Closer with the Empress Divide Flash, and how are they doing this and surviving? Satab says, well, they're not Atlas. In fact, one of them is going to die, and he does. And with a final dash forward, Flash use as well. Sata picks up a kill. That is going to be another win. For, uh, Fear X are able to pick up the Herald crucially. Might be uh, what gets them this very important up and coming Drake. As we have uh, a real back and forth here when it comes to the fight. The Smite fight, you're just never going to win. That's the reality of playing against Rel. Not really a big realistic chance for you to pick that one up. But crucially here, we see that. Uh, Fear X actually do a really good job of utilizing the power of Isaiah in a 
choke point like this. Unfortunately for DRX, a lot of the damage goes into Willer, who is uh, Rel and has Flash, so he's completely fine. And then it's just this constant back and forth uh, with basically every summoner getting used in the end. And then Satep here, watch that. Flash auto gets the damage down on closer and builds his gold lead up further. But this Drake, this to me is the break point. If DRX get this, I think you're in a wonderful position to win this game. If they somehow lose it to Fox, I'd be in trouble. And control of the river currently in the hands of Fox. Henna, relatively low though. You can see Vision getting cleared out. In comes the Udia, but there's the Glacial Prison. All oh, the dive forward, the quickness is working as Sponge taking a lot of damage, but most importantly, he survives. And Willa, he's not so lucky. It's another one for Satab. And now clear, he's in the firing line. And yeah, he's tanky, but that is three members of DRX. And Teddy gets himself on the board. That should be that Drake you were talking about. And I think we are careening towards a game three. Oh, we kind of had an idea coming in. Fox just haven't really looked that clean. But right now, even though they have a composition that in theory should be able to team fight very well as we get later into the game, it's not really looking like that is going to be the case. Very early setup for the Solium. This is an Inferno so if You think LeBlanc is obnoxious now. Oh, Wait yeah. till she finishes or gets that Soul Rider together with the rest of the team. Well, Closer and might be able to gain himself some extra money. They're not out of it, right? And that's the important thing. I do think the Team 5 power is still there, but you see there as well, Hannah already taken so low. And I think the, the, the summoners are really important here for uh, for, for Firex. They don't have those. They do lose a lot of their offensive power. Willer over invest. And DRX actually, unlike last game, doing a really good job of absorbing the initial blow, keeping their backline safe, and then pushing back. Yeah, and Execute didn't really find anyone with his quickness either. As Closer lost the majority of his health bar, but not his life. As it turns out, so he'll be fine. Did manage to get first turret blood, which is an interesting thing for Fox to be able to claim here. As Execute blocks a cannon. Oh my goodness, that was gorgeous. Love that play. Yeah, if it wasn't for the soul point for DRX, I feel like this game would still be very close. Now it's it's still possible. DRX uh, are, 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 I think, still going to be facing with a lot of internal pressure of how do we actually close out the game? I haven't been able to do it thus far this split. But they have the tools. They definitely do this one, up us. Could be looking towards a very early Elder as well. The health bars are not moving. Yeah, no, there is a... Uh, it's very funny. Yeah, it's, you know, there are circles happening. There are minions that are perishing. They are grasping. They are. Uh, just hitting one another. Um, not a lot in it when it comes to that top lane uh, battle. As Pleta will lick Execute, and Execute will leave. And it will join. Okay, Rascal does have Satab now, so some damage going to be available. Just gives him a boop, presses the Ghost button, and he runs away. Boop and scoop. That's so what we call it. Peak Udyr gameplay right oh, there. Beautiful, isn't it? Gets engaged on, runs away. Mm -hmm. Sponge gets knocked up, but there isn't any follow-up damage here. Yeah, Aftershock going to be procced here. Closer on the ward. Oh dear. Okay, he can swoop in, speaking of which. Does now know that there's probably some vision as Glacial Prison comes down. There's the crash down from Willa though. They want to deal with the turret and they are going to be able to do so. There's the flash out. Empress Divide finds two. The quickness is going to be there as well, but Henna not quite enough damage onto Sponge. They're trying to focus him down, but Teddy gets excited. Satab is just going to deny the teleport. And now they take down the Sun Disk and Teddy's still looking for more. I don't think he'll be able to get it. There we go, clear. Down here towards the bottom side was denied the TP from Satab, but not going to die. So there is at least that. Now the defense has to be put up here by Fear X. Flame Trump is coming down. Willer is very, very low. And they're just trying to get aggressive. There are feathers oh. on the ground as Teddy happy to tank up and some turret shots. That right there is why we're so worried about Ferex going to the late game, even though in isolation the champs go really well. The range advantage for Hannah, it's so hard to reliably do damage when Teddy already outranges him to a pretty unfun degree as we take another look here. Uh, even with the knowledge of where Closer is, DRX do opt to go in here, and it's this scoop from oh, Closer that Pleta. sets it up. And if Pleta didn't need Teddy there, that would have been... Oh yeah, would have been... Would have been the end of, three uh, of and this play. could have just been done. Yeah, and teleport cancel obviously really big, self-explanatory there because you see the rest of Fair X actually still posturing forward, trying to look. Um, my main question becomes, 
to what extent can DRX actually set up for these fights? Because right now, in a minute, their main win condition is going to come up. It already, look at uh, Satep's damage dealt. Yeah. And Teddy's right behind him. This uh, Jinx is starting to get some work done. Lord Doms is item number two as well, straight after the crack. I love there. that. That's really, that's, we often criticize players for not buying Lord Doms earlier enough. Obviously, second item is not ideal, but like, look at what you're up against. It's double frozen art already. And uh, chewing for all that armor is and going to feel great. Indeed. As well as the fact that he is going to spend a lot of his time hitting Willa and Clear. They're going to yeah. be the ones that will be in range. And so you may as well just accept it. That's precisely what he has done. Should be building towards something with a zeal in it and an Infinity Edge eventually. Uh, a lot of damage come later in the game. Rascal posturing, getting into position, execute, not wanting to be able to do so, but should still be able to. Closer wrapping around, has all of his buttons up and available. There is still a team fight in Fear X, especially if they can kill Teddy. But Devour back up and available once again. Flashes available for both bot laners. And Satap on the prowl, wanting to proc this static shiv. But Execute has a full health bar, so yeah. I imagine he's going to go in pretty soon. Also at Psycho Sword, which actually is uh, is really obnoxious because it, it procs right off of dashes. And, uh, Satap obviously doing a lot of that. As Ow. we see, look those trades. Very, uh, very unfun to play into. Okay, the quickness does come through as Satap should just explode here. He flashes, but that's a huge magnet storm. And now Satap's out of the fight. Empress divide onto everyone, and Henna has taken out Teddy. And now it's the story of the Zyre as he cleans it up. That's a quadra. And Fear X, they did not want to play a game three. Out of nowhere, the four for one. Closer sacrifices his life, but he is going to be immensely happy. It starts off with the almost pick on Satap. He's trying to poke, he has to, but it's then the follow-up, the I combo of Execute, Execute using his ultimate right from the get-go. As mentioned earlier, that's one of the very few points of immediate CC. That's survivable, but then this combo, Willow with a four-man setup, and I think DRX there, if they just either let Satep die or peel off together, they might have been fine. But the moment that Wombo Combo comes through, Hannah sees his opportunity and goes absolutely insane in the team fight. And Execute also just understanding exactly what he needed to do, then Willa, picture perfect, and then Closer from the start of the game that looked hopeless, finding this Emperor's Divide. Absolutely amazing oh, this stuff. Is big and though. Execute you need as well. Trade. Yeah, no, exactly. So DRX, they want to grab this. There is still a Baron on DRX. Satap just wanting to extend this fight, trying to get them lower. Some control now as Rascal dashing forward does find closer. Glacial Prison does come down. It should be the Drake denied here, but it is going to be taken by Willa. That is going to be Infernal Solus Execute trying to get himself out. Empress Divide happens once again, and Rascal goes down. Satap just trying to clean up. He kills Closer once again, but Henna needs to get these autos through the... Rockets are hitting so hard for Teddy, Teddy, and Satap is now popping off. He will be taken down, but Teddy, he just wants to kill these Baron buffs. And Clear is having none of it. He's just going to kill Teddy. Now he's going to look for the next one. Boop and scoot. That's what we've got to do. And he's chasing after Pleta. Oh, man. It's going to take a while. But I just don't think Pleta is going to be able to do anything about it. That's another kill going over to Clear. It's almost an ace. But I believe Sponge had respawned. And the big thing there for Fairax is that they were unable to deny DRX the bar DRX yeah. got the soul, and I want you to pay attention because actually the, the, the soul does so much damage to this fight. If you take a look at the health bars, how low they get, as it is much more disjointed here. Execute doesn't actually get Teddy this time around. Really good movement of the AD carry of DRX there. Like, look at the amount of damage that they're able to do, and then Satap going back in, knowingly giving his life, just ensuring these explosions from the Infernal Soul being a big difference maker here. Oh, the zap damage. And somehow, just not quite enough. When there's good old clear. Look at the mechanics. Look at the plays. Look at the moves, Chronicle. 
I, I, I have to avert my eyes. No, that I is, know. That is, it's shining too brightly. I know. It is, uh, it's intimidating. And even though uh, that fight was a little bit of a, of a hit or miss, I think DRX are still going to feel good about it. Yes, they lost Baron, and they need to be very careful to avoid another team fight like the one Fox found earlier. And that, to me, is the reason why this game still feels as close as it is. Because even with the gold deficit, I got to be honest, Infernal Soul, it is busted. It's and pretty strong. Having someone like Satep who can proc it reliably on the back line that doesn't really get to do anything about it, like Hanna, is monstrously strong. But I also think DRX, their execution has been a little iffy. Indeed. I don't think that uh, Firex can necessarily rely on getting four-man Magnet Storms and then everyone Emperor's Divides uh, reliably in no. this game, though. So that tick fight that we did see that allowed them to get to the Baron should be something difficult to replicate, but it's something that I think they might need if they do want to overcome because it's all about these engages being crisp and being very, very fast. Because you give this LeBlanc time and she will yeah. just zap you and burn you and it, you'll have a bad time. You could have said crisp and sweet and just brought it right back to apples, Atlas. Oh, we could have. Would have been good. Yeah. Sure. Not, it's not really an apples one this time around, though. I no, feel like no, the no, level not, of intensity is a bit higher. Is we don't lemon? need to go to the orchard. As Zaytab will find Execute, and Execute is probably dead. Yeah, uh, Glacial Prison is there in, in fanfare. Uh, backed on a board. So the one thing you need to avoid here is DRX. Flip that. Uh, flip Elder. So what, you, don't do that. Oh, no, no, no. That is precisely where we're going. Yep, I know that's where we're going. I just want to have given my opinion that I think that oh. it's a bad idea. Oh. And that they shouldn't. Because you're playing into Realm. Yeah, but it's, no. the, it's the spirit. No, it's not. No. How many Challenger players <laughs> from very recent times? Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, what, four? Yeah, this is yeah, a lot. That's a lot. Oh, yeah, you're, you're probably right. Yep. Atlas. We uh, get your I flippers on. I don't know you're telling me. I know, I know. Sometimes even, uh, touch. Yeah, even the, the Challenger guy needs reminding. Uh, it's clear. He's got his jack shows. He's got all of the defensive stuff. We'll see whether he builds something that can potentially do and damage. Uh, he doesn't need to worry about receiving any damage, though, uh, because Rascal also not really doing it. Look at look at him. Look at him go. He just runs. <laughs> he runs, and then he circles, and he burns. Blair actually minions, is having he a good runs game, again. though, he compared to, to what we've seen of him thus far. I think uh, stepping up in this one. 100%. Just a little bit. He's roaming free. I actually love Udia. I think if I could play it. Oh, okay. In he goes. They managed to find Teddy. Another massive Magnus Storm, but the Devourer is going to be there. And now Teddy with a huge shield trying to get something done. He flashes. He picks up the Tom Kench, and Teddy's still alive. And the Tom survives as well somehow. And now Teddy's real excited. That was a great attempt, or at least it sort of was. It just was not enough. And look at Clear. He's running, but I just don't think a boop and scoot is what this needs. They need everyone to be alive again. And that's going to be Baron gone. DRX about to bring us to a game number three, Atlas. Making their way over. Elder in about 40 seconds, but it doesn't look like... We're not in flip territory, are we? No, no, no. We, we it's will. Exoda. No, no, no. It's no, Exodia, no, no, no. right? Don't worry. We will be in flip territory. I don't know how, but we'll find a way. Oh, we'll get and there? crucial there is that you see the desperation that Firex is in and the identification of DRX as long as we keep Teddy alive. And it almost is enough. I actually think that ultimate from Wheeler might be game-saving because if Hannah gets a couple of autos off, Plata actually can't eat Teddy because he's charmed. Yeah. Execute actually doing a good job. That ultimate from Sponge might have been a difference maker. Like two free autos from Hannah and Teddy's dead. And they lose that fight. And then the Emperor's Divide That's fine. just flashed. We get a flip anyway. There are some buttons on cooldown, I guess. Uh, but here's the flip. This is what we're flip, here for. Flip, this flip, is the game. Flip, 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 flip. This is what we're doing. Okay, Satap trying to soften them up. And Teddy is now moving on over. He is a raid boss right oh, now. He is absolutely infernal. huge. And look at this. Satap dashing in and out and getting it done. They're not going to quite find it as Rascal what? gets into the back line. Empress Divide does zero. And DRX will just execute them. That's the ace. That is Exodia. And we are heading to game three. Not even going to need it. DRX. 
Gonna get their first game win of the season. And it's off the back of a bounce back of Satab and Teddy finally living his best oh, yeah. fountain laser dreams. This is the Teddy that we've been waiting for. I think Senna was a little bit late, late game. I think we hit the Jinx spike just in time. And DRX looking great here in game number two. See how they do as we move towards game number three. And is Azir just fake? Is it just not good as a champion? I, you know what, ha you know what I think happened is that we have played so much Azir throughout the years in this league that we've just figured out all the ways to do it, and it's still it can be good. You know, it's it's not impossible, but we have played every possible permutation of Azir. Yeah. So that our players are like, oh, you put Azir, Corky. That's the that's the client. Akali, Yone. You know, it just never ends. LeBlanc, there's always an answer. The LeBlanc the bird definitely is bait. works. I'm uh, with you, Atlas. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm having a feeling that perhaps we should shelve it. Unless you can already see the... Uh, see what <laughs> mid lane of your face is <laughs> going damage than clear. <laughs> Closer did. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, this Udio was kind of massive. Clear out a good uh, game. He did. Have a decent game. Uh, but this blind picking... Azir Zyrakhan. I just never want to see it again. I hate it. I, I really just don't like it. I don't think it's a good thing to do because I feel like the answers are just a little bit too out there. You cannot ban enough champions to allow it to not get uh, taken over. So we are going to head to a short break. When we get back, the space will dissect that game. We're heading to game number three. We'll see you there. ビシアだビソバケ。あ。チンダケソケ。あ、ダメ、ダメ。ベスポッキングアメンサーやれ。ヘネパクロチェコ。ヘネデリスバサフワイゴ。クリアヘアデ。ヘネパクロバケ。あ
Hello and welcome back to the space. We're here after game number two of Fear X up against DRX. And that one, another pretty drawn out game. It felt like, you know, both teams struggling to really put their heads into it and really get into the fighting. But at the end of the day, the Jinx did come out on top and DRX did tie up the series. Thoughts, guys, on this draft and the way that this uh, game went? Felt in some ways fairly similar, obviously starting off very similar to the first game uh, where we had the Cassante. Then we saw the Zaya Rakan come out, and instead of Sana, we got the Jinx this time, which I think is a, a stronger pick for these two teams. I think the execution level of Sana is quite high at the moment. Uh, but was the the really big standout for me was the LeBlanc that came through here, and we weren't sure. We were like, is it going to be a Kali? We saw the Sejuani come through. We're like, oh, it's, we're running it back on the opposite side. And then Satab's performance on this was night and day from what we saw in his Azir in game one. And then this time he's the one who's actually getting the lane advantage. This time he's the one who's got a 20, 30, nearly 40 CS advantage. It was pretty insane to see the turnaround. You know what? What's the problem? I think Azir's the problem. I think losing streak at the moment. I think whoever picked Azir is gonna lose a lane. I mean, there's even the strong team, actually they do pick Azir and then they are actually leading the lane phase at least. But this time, the, even he lo actually lost, the, he's not even lost, like he got stomping lane. And the thing is like, Azir is like so really hard to play it out like through the middle game or like later in the game, like especially against against like who actually outscales or range that there's so many counter that it's like everyone kind of knows. And LeBlanc is like actually one of it. And also he won the lane, so he was really fat. And it was like really impactful on DRX actually whole team positions. Yeah, even so, I do feel like uh, this game, it had a lot of twists and turns, right? There were moments where we were like, oh, VRX is actually going to win. They took a couple of fights in mid-game. Then we were like, no, 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 DRX are actually going to close it out and get the one-to-one. -one. We can take a look at the first highlight, which was this Drake at 17 minutes into the game. And it all started here. It's Infernal uh, Soul, which is super important. So all of these Drake fights end up being really impactful. And Execute is trying his hardest to, to carry these games. To look for big Sponge narrowly escapes. It's one or two more autos, and he goes down 100%. But then, you see the turnaround here. DRX doing a ton of damage with this LeBlanc pick, pick. And then the retreat is just very disjointed here, unfortunately, for the side of Fear X. And they just get picked off piece by piece. And Setab, you can just see, just continues to do massive amounts of damage. And this is, of course, before they secure the Infernal Soul, where he does even more later on. Yeah, I mean, the rail went in with a single target magnet, which is like, I think it should have been, like, obviously it would have been better if it was like there's a more target. As since there, I think the disengage from the DRX was like really, really clear. They had a play, clean plan that just like, oh, the rail came in. Oh, let's just get the push as well that a DPS is putting on the, uh, the, uh, the front line. And the other, the back line was like, you know, the Fear X, the back line was not be able to just put the DPSs back. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like there was kind of a, a brick wall between them and the, the engaged champions on the side of Fearx really struggled to get into that back line, which we saw them try really, really hard at the second highlight, which was like everything is going in there. They're going into the back line. They're going so deep onto this Jinx Tom Kench and the Jinx is so fed. Yeah, I mean, I think that Sejong ulti like really, really clutch here. Like it would have been really way better if Zai actually flashed or like ulti did something. Cause like, I think the Rakan engage was like actually really, really great. At the same time also the Azir, like he tried it. I mean, Closer tried it, but I think the, just like the, the Zings, the flash, the react was like really, really, really good. And Divar was good. I think this is a type of the thing that you play Zing Tom and you have so much tool that you can actually save the hyper carry and you just, Go. You just you just play a whole a whole team play around the Zinx. You have basically double eighty carry as DRX in this scenario with the LeBlanc with the build she chose, and you have Infernal Soul, and you have the mobility. If that engage doesn't actually get follow up, you actually don't kill one of these threats. You're just going to get burned down by that massive damage, especially when Jinx starts getting excited, starts getting those resets, and that was the the pivotal moment. We're going to the first six game day here of LCK Spring 2024. Yeah, it's very well deserved. It came on the back of basically Sidtab and Teddy and that uh, late game carry and doing a good job just keeping through it with the team until the very end. We can take a look at the POG now and see who does pick it up. Will it be Sidtab or Teddy? I would imagine it'll be one of those two. And let's see who does pick it up here. It will be Sidtab on the LeBlanc. I'm happy for him. I mean, after what happened in game one and what's honestly happened to him in a lot of the games this season, finally he gets his time to shine. You know, I said it after our previous game, you know, this player is better than the performance we saw from him in the previous game. And he showcases it right here. I mean, he's very talented and I think confidence plays into this, but great game from him here to bring us to three.
I mean, honestly, I'm like really impressed like as a veteran player, like when I see the rookie player actually just like they had a bad game. Oh, I like for me, like individually, like what I think is like, oh, it's a bad day for them. But it's like even Perfect did it, even Setup did it, like they had a really, really poor first game or like the, the, the game before and they just turn it around with the POG, the, you know, getting it. And it's like, it's really impressive. Yeah, you can see that uh, five votes went to Teddy. I think it makes sense, but especially after watching those replays, it did feel like time after time after time, a lot of the fights were dictated by where was Satab, how was he setting up plays, even from the very beginning of the game. So shout outs to him, bounces back, as you guys were saying, and uh, now we have a third game. So we'll have to see what does happen in this third one as we'll pass it back to the casters for that third game. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for the breakdown of game number two. And uh, yeah, I think the, the woes of the Azir continue. And I hope that we just don't see Zyra Khan blind picked again. Um, I feel like it's just it's just not really working out. And we have back-to-back -back POGs of players that abused Azir in lane. That's, that's, that's how it's happened. And guess what? I'm pretty sure he's going to be blind picked again. E I you look. Yeah. I, um, that's what you were. That's what you were building up to, right? That's, no, that's what you no, were. I was, I was building up to learning and progression. That was what I was going. For. I, I don't understand. I know. Um, I, it would make sense as well. Uh, you can see that uh, TRX have decided to head towards the red side. Hey, uh, that's that is their counterpick territory, Atlas. No, no that is not the Zia blind, blind pick territory. That's where they were last game. Oh no, um, no, 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 no! I got you. Zaya Rakan one two, and then Azir on R three. You are, you are heading the right way for a solo cast, okay, my friend? As Lucian, leave me. gonna be the first one banned away as well as the Draven there. This is sticking to the plan. Uh, we have seen these two champions banned away almost every single time. Poppy removed and the Orianna taken away as well. I wonder if, no, it couldn't be. As Callista Renata, first pick. Also removed. Yeah, Callista could be the option. The Draven and Lucian ban. The, uh, the other opportunity would be Varus. Wouldn't hate that either. Ash up and available as well, so the Callista first pick feels a little bit less fun. Maybe ban Azir, so then no one falls into the trap. They will not ban Azir. No, I wouldn't do that. I would wait until my opposition picked it. And then pick one of the, like, five counters that we've seen? Yeah. Okay. Cool. The Ash going to be taken away. So, Varus up and available, locked in here for Teddy. Hannah would have loved it, one of his favorite champions. Teddy's going to swoop in and steal that one away. Better just Zaya Rakan. No. <laughs> I even called it Atlas. <laughs> but I don't like it. Oh dear. Okay, this part is fine. This yeah, is this okay. part's fine. This is this is fine. This is salvageable. We can work with this. We got the Rakan. Execute actually played. Even that last engage, you know, it didn't work out, but it was a good engage. Yeah. He, this man is not afraid to pull the trigger. It's a valuable skill in our Okay. Oh! Okay. Everything, everything Saving okay so the Zaya for third. No, no, that's a, that's a Zir, buddy. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> so, Nautilus, I think, would be uh, not bad here. Uh, or maybe want to try and go for the LeBlanc blind. Is a counter or is a comfort pick, as we saw last game for Satab? It's a big risk. I like it if it is going to be Lethality Varus. Yeah, and then you go AD or AP LeBlanc. Yeah. Yeah. It works yeah, out quite well. I like that. I'm okay with it. I'm, I feel like Sejuani's probably not going to be at risk of a ban. You could have just shored up your bottom lane uh, a little bit there, but instead, just going to make sure that Sponge is on something he's very comfortable with. Hannah, please, please. He's doing it. Oh, no. Well. This is really good for DRX. It does give them momentum moving into their series against Bro. I'm not I'm not calling a game over in drafts. Even that game was actually more back and forth than it should have been with that heroic engage. I am a oh. I'm a bit of a Zyra Khan anti these days. I'm uh, they not win, super into didn't it. Did they win like eight games in a row? No four, because Rakan has won. Yeah, Rakan's been R Rakan's been incredible. Yeah, been really, really good. Which is it's so interesting because obviously the Ash Band does kind of save the Rakan, but I feel like there should be other picks that do what Ash does, in like as in like punishing the Rakan early on in the first few levels, but we just don't see it a whole lot because we went through this entire thing at Worlds, not not like three months ago, where it's like Rakan B1 every game. Yeah, 
And he is very, very strong, but you just don't need Zaya. Yeah. It's just uh No, but also there should be counters. We should have an opportunity, something that can try and... I'm sure it's just going to be Nautilus for Plata here. I think it's fine. Um, yeah, Nautilus is good. Wasn't uh, Leona kind of okay as well into Rakan? It's not as good as it used to be. I know that uh -huh. it used to be uh, one of the best matchups, but that's fine. I we've seen some really impressive Nautilus plays, both of the hands and execute actually showing us the uh, uh, you, you start your ultimate and then you flash and then you redirect it and you can get multi-man knockups. It's quite strong, and I assume this is a top lane blind Gragas, or sorry, this is a jungle Gragas because we already have the Cassante and we also saw Wheeler. Oh my God. Grin. Oh my god, it, I know it's, it. It's it's Gragas mid. It's Yasuo Gragas. You know what? It's the angle. No, it's 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 closer. You're hundred percent right. It's Yasuo. No, it is. Maybe. It's unplayable for Varus. I don't know if it's good. I don't think Yasuo is that in that great a state at the moment. But that is a closer champion. That's that's not. Well we'll work until long. Actually have a ton of early agency. Gragas being the sole AP source he does love. Hates Merc Treads. Just Yasuo it. Just, he's doing it! Oh, thank God! It's saved! Zyra Khan is saved! Oh, do you know what? Do you know what I just saw? I just saw the hat lift up. You know, and that furrowed, yeah, the, the like, furrowed brow, and he's exposed. Like he pulls, he pulls, like gets a sword from the yeah, ground. Yeah, and then his it's bandages like, just loosen up just a little and bit. And the wind starts oh, blowing. Oh my goodness, and Goose then he bumps. launches into the Goose LCK. Bumps. Closer saving the draft entirely so with this beautiful pick. And look at how many knockups there are as well. So, so two on DRX, right? Oh no, definitely not. No, it's safe. It's, it's, it's actually, saved. I don't think it's saved. Saved 100%. How are you supposed to poke? He's got wind wall. Can't poke. It's, it's, a, it's on like 25 seconds cooldown. <laughs> no, 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 no. You just plan your sieges around the wind wall. <laughs> around the wind <laughs> And well, then you, you just make sure you level up wind wall as much as possible so that it surrounds your entire team. We'll have a pretty good idea about how this is going to go the moment we see what happens to Gragas. Because if Gragas can get going in this game, I think there's a great shot. If yeah. Not. I. I do think there might be some. Uh, uh, there might be some problems. There might be some issues. It is a very different situation. Uh, the LeBlanc blind pick this time around, and uh, now closer is going to be taking a champion that doesn't necessarily counter it uh, into the lane. But the jungle mid synergy is what we're going to be focusing on in this game. Don't forget about execute. Yeah. He could certainly find a few of these angles. DRX, see where they can handle it. Oh, I think the Fear X fans also enjoying a bit of the Yasuo here. As Closer does make sure that he picks the edgiest skin as well. Very edgy, that one. He, w I, I imagine Closer, even though he is, as far as I can tell in every interview, mega wholesome, he would be an edgy skin guy. Like, all the champion he plays. Oh, yeah. Like, his favorite champion, Akali. He's definitely an edgy Yasuo, Yasuo player. Yone, you know, he's... It's a vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is his thing. But it... It could be a difficult laning phase, and it would it definitely was a difficult laning phase last time around. He's got something to prove now. I, I know Predator isn't a real keystone anymore, but I really hoped. It uh, is. It, it's still technically. It still technically exists? Because I was actually wondering that. Cause I think it does. That's my, that's my point. I, like, I'm pretty sure it still exists. I'm pretty sure it still there. exists, yeah. Um, it's not real. No. You can pick it, but it, first strike, kind of self-explanatory on a burst mage like Mr. Gragas. Particularly in the jungle variety, going to be looking to. Oh, look at this Steel Tempest place. stacked up already. Yeah. Closer using the tech, finds the first tornado. You love to see it. All right. That's how you avoid hail of uh, arrows, I guess, as Pleta already has to flash. It's not ideal, Atlas. Somewhat on the negative um, side of things. Uh, this cons column. Cons column for DRX. Unless here at the you are a Fear X fan, in which case you are feeling. Wonderful. Apply to the other column on the other side, 100%. But 
But Execute and Henna, probably going to have much more fun uh, in this particular lane. We can see as well it's lethal, lethal Tempo here for Teddy, not going for the Lethality version of the Varus, something that we have seen far more Ooh, often when paired I, with the Nautilus. I don't love that. I like it less in Zaya, absolutely, because I it's, feel like you're opting into playing her game. If so, yeah, so, tempo. well, it's... it's Zaya is one thing, but who are you actually hitting, auto-attacking on Fox? Clear. No, because he will grab you and kill you. All right, uh, exit. Uh, will... Uh, uh, yeah. You're hitting... Um, the P button to get into the shop, because you're dead. I really would have liked the Lethality variety here. And uh, unfortunately, not what we're getting is a oh, sponge. Yeah, going to find Willa here. Both of them getting knocked back a little bit. Uh, Permafrost is going to make Sponge's life a little bit, uh, sorry, uh, Willa's life a little bit harder. But he is going to lose out on the trade. Does have the ability to get his health back quite comfortably, though, as the Gragas. Especially as this gentleman version of Gragas Esquire. He is not phased. Oh, Sponge taking a little risk. Oh, missed the body slam. That's big. Yeah, Arctic Assault going to come through. That one will work out as Sponge flashes for it. Permafrost comes in. That is a lot committed. Not quite able to get the last few digits of damage. Yeah, if he would have actually been able to get the auto off, that would have been the end of it. But it's still a colossal win. Oh. Going to set the Gragas behind very early on here. And some buttons being pressed in this mid lane, Chronicle. Yeah, and I, I kind of wonder... To what extent, because obviously Yasuo into um, I I into generally ranged characters, into mages, can have a really good time if he gets on top of them. Ooh, uh, that was cute from Execute, Battle Dance, and then right back in there. Does lose out on the trade pretty considerably, but it looks cute. Yeah, still gets uh, Varus, unfortunately. But the AD variety of LeBlanc, you don't need to commit your skills outside of distortion offensively to win trades. Because you just need to get autos in. Yeah. So I imagine it will be a lot harder for for Yasuo to like reliably deal with the damage that comes through. And Willa getting taken this low this early on, I think is quite rough because again, to me the Gragas is the linchpin of this entire comp. I know that in theory, you know, it'll be about the Yasuo, but I think in practice, I don't really know if that will be the case because there's so much CC and, and denial on DRX their end. And if Willa doesn't have a good time, as they do very much know that this is going on, and Firax doesn't know that they know. Setting a trap here. Maybe. As Closer is going back, does have teleport, can get himself back into the lane. As uh, Rascal, being a Rascal, behind the turret here is Pleta. Oh, here's the trap set up as Willa now looking for the opportunity, but they don't know. Satap moves on over. The Windwall did a fair bit of work there, and First Blood actually goes to Willa somehow. Okay. Now Closer's looking for a kill, and he'll get it. Just stabs the Nautilus, and Firax. The plays upon plays upon plays works out in their favor. And the problem there for DRX is that they're opting into this really aggressive early game melee fight into Yasuo. It's like, I get I get to fight? Yeah. I get to do stuff? That's amazing. And, I mean, Execute, he always wants to fight. Yeah. And so he's in his, uh, this is his element. It's precisely what he wants. And if a Christian there, if they have a little bit earlier on, say, Teleport, if they actually have more damage, they would have been fine. But it's that play from Execute, even though he is a second later to the play. Uh, if it's a free versus free, they're always going to win, right? Just the power of Yasuo, I think, in these early setups. Plus the fact that a lot of the damage goes into Willer specifically. Who, even if it's the AP variety, just for the virtue of stalling with E, as well as his W, is quite... Is, wow. Wow. Really? Hunt? No. Punch and Dove were the last ones to play Yasuo like, Gragas? In my head, it's... A, it's Didn't Anion Showmaker play this, like, last week? What I think it might have been is that it wasn't... Um, Rascal could be in trouble here. I think Rascal's dead. Yeah, yeah he, he should dead. be dead. That is just clear, locking down the solo kill. Um, there we go. Was that at Worlds? Did they I, play I, it at Worlds? Well, now I'm like, it, it probably was at Worlds. Yeah. I feel like there was a more recent uh, Gragas Yasuo that we have seen. Maybe. But I don't think it won last time. No, it didn't. It's didn't. certainly been a long time since it's been played here in the LCK, and that was confirmed. Punch and Dove, though. Pfwah. Quite a while ago. But it was also the old variety of Fear X. Of course, uh, it came with sandboxes. All right, there it is. Knock up City. And Closer's going to very comfortably take that one down. 
This is what this composition does. You just stack on as many knockups as possible and find a way to layer them on top of each other and then execute someone. Execute has been on point this game. Uh, setting up the previous skirmish, locking down this one as well, even though it's closer that starts off the play. His uh, map movement, I think, really has been very impressive as we're taking a look at this. So they both start off at full health, and I think it gives a false sense of security. But the problem here is that it is a super long trades where Udir isn't actually able to get out, you know, maybe get a tornado off and uh, from there ah. continue onward. Particularly if All Out is used, he's not going to be able to get through a Satap. Does have his flash available, but oh, Fl Closer actually starts buffering it, then flashes, so there's minimal response time. A Q uh, flash, yeah. Yeah. Works very well. That means DRX do get a little bit of space. They collect themselves the first dragon of the game. Next one going to be Chemtech. We'll see what the soul is going to be immediately after that. It's closer now. Let's build that flow back up again. Ooh, that was a bit cute. Wind wall coming on through. And closer holds the wave. Just to buy some space here as Execute. Moving towards the mid lane. Teddy on a ward. And he is, he has a target on his back, especially when it's the more DPS oriented uh, Varus build. You need to keep yourself up as Satap. Just be careful. He's going to be out of the stored away. And now, Execute will slink back into the fog of war as Hennet goes for a little bit of a uh, back timer. But 4 to 1, the kill score here quite early on in this game. Fearx really making this composition work exactly the way that it's supposed to. You're supposed to get a lead and run with it. And they are doing so quite well thus far. And for now, we don't see any humongous leads being built, but a lead in every single lane. Something Fear X is always going to be happy with. Execute, I do think, can you know maybe at least soak some XP. Hit level 6 would be preferable, but doesn't seem to be currently distracted by such... Um, Yep, minor issues. Gives a bit of a thumbs up there as he wanders on in. Pleda also sticking around as well. Dash cannon now completed for Willa. He was already uh, quite a lithe uh, gentleman. But now he's going to be even lither. And in last game, Clear actually played really well as well. And we talked a little bit about Teddy. I think Teddy in this series in particular actually is uh, slowly starting to at least regain some of his form. Yep. For Rascal, I still feel like we haven't really seen any of, of good old Rascal. And obviously last year I think was really tough on this player, a player that was uh, on a KT roster where he was truly trying to fight a Herculean task of getting them to playoffs by himself, which didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, even his times on Gen G were marred by a few difficult times. And speaking of difficult times, that is a nice flash. The cast does come through as Execute tanking for about a year, but he will burn down. Pleta sends his regards as now Clear could be in trouble. That is going to be a Glacial Prison. He is Kasante, but not Kasante enough as Rascal has a circle with some heat inside. And is going to be able to take him down. Rooker now completed for Clear, but a little bit late. Would have liked that potentially for the last fight as Sponge gets to work on uh, Steve, Kev, and Bob. We'll be able to take another three. That'd be six. Some uh, Void Mites coming out. Glad I'm, man. That Very was sick. nicely done. And I think the crucial thing there is if Execute doesn't ignite, I, I think it would have been fine because he actually wouldn't have gotten the aggro immediately. But because it opens up with ignite, uh, ends up going down. Oh, he had to try and be the hero to stop the teleport. Uh, he did because his team probably would have uh, suffered more losses, but he did also sacrifice his own life, so... I and then the dive doesn't is work Rascal anyway. Just dead? Well, um, Willer is on the way. Yeah, and uh, Sponge is he's going home. So Rascal doesn't have too much of an ability to do much here if he gets back to the turret. Why a boop on his way out? Away. Yeah, maybe doing the running with ghost situation. No, that is going to be the counterplay that he's going to opt in for. Works out. Udir is warping my sense of reality, Atlas. Yeah, mine too. But it's also a six game day. It's our first one of the season thus far. And uh, so maybe our grasp on reality is just hindered. It's, it's somewhat 
strenuous? That's a word, right? At this yeah. point, I'm like... Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Okay, good. It's <laughs> we should play the game of Dutch or not, you know? Am I yeah, saying a word that people understand? The, yeah, particularly at the end of a long day. It happens so often where I'm like, ah, it's probably English. It's good enough. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Oh, ah, they tap post back in. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit cute. And he's going to have to flash his execute. He battle dances back towards Closer. So now without the flash could be dangerous times here as over the wall they go. Flash does come out, last breath onto Teddy though, into that back line, really nicely done. Another knock up here is Execute. That was not what you really wanted to do. Immediately two kills go down. And Teddy, he's saying that maybe that Atlas guy perhaps called this game a little bit early. Cause that is a lot of money going into the hands of Teddy. And this is one of the big traps that this type of composition can fall into, which we've seen many a time. When you're playing Yasuo Gragas, you want to go in, you want to go ham, and that's for teams that don't have Execute on their roster. So that already is kind of a given. What we see instead, though, is that DRX actually absorbs it. It looks like Seitap crucially overextends, goes back to the Yasuo to try and dodge. Uh, might be in trouble here, though. Yeah, doesn't have Flash now, as immediately closes like, I will, I will take my revenge. Thank you very, very much. And he will, actually looking to try and punish Henna here. Execute dives forward, he's being very frustrating, as LeBlancs tend to do, and he just dies. So there it is. Still buys a bit, fair bit of time. Everyone's able to take down the Drake and move on. And we do have, once again, an Infernal Soul. Free and it's very fitting for any Fear X game, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, Teddy. T Teddy, why are you... Well, Willow is like, why are you ganking, here? He's ganking Willow in his jungle. That's cathartic, he's just dead. I... You could have left earlier, I think. Did yeah. You a body slam? Maybe he had to try and maybe he thought he was gonna get interrupted by the raptor. <laughs> you know, like he, yeah, yeah, he yeah, got yeah. a body slam over the wall without killing it first. Or. Just standing there seems questionable though. So Satan <laughs> yeah. has to go back here, because otherwise he dies to closer. And then this sequence of plays looks like it's actually Ferex coming out on top, but then here, Sponge finds the ultimate unsuspected, then a really nice flash and re-engage on Teddy, but he has a summoners available crucially. And we see Clear is like, ah, can I go in here? But the positioning is kind of awkward because of the turret. And then Teddy makes his way over, gets his passive started, and starts firing away. As So I guess he used E to get on top of this. Yeah. And then, oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, I, I, I think he just tried to E over the oh, wall. Oh, real, 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 <laughs> he's got it. He's, he's I mean, I think Teddy looks angry. He I does. think Teddy is like, I am done losing games. I am free and Ovaris. We are winning. And he's the on-hit variety as well. He's the, I can do so much DPS in these fights. It's now not hinged on, if I press W and throw a Q into a wind wall, so we do nothing for a whole team You're fight. saying that he's unhinged, I've unleashed, he untethered? He may be a Teddy that's off the hook. Oh. And that, that may be a statement that I will potentially have to make. But not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, although he did just go kill Gragas in his own jungle, which was pretty impressive. And I'm down to 50% healthier as Satab has got his static shiv. Another oh, Kerchizis has been purchased as well. And, ooh, drifting. Not exactly the most intense of drift work there, but still nicely crashed by Sponge. I'll give it a six and a half out of ten. Six and a half? Okay. Well, what, are you, what are you looking at? Um, well, I mean, it's, it's all about difficulty and stuff like that, you know? So if I was to judge the run, I'd probably have to adjudicate it based on that. So maybe a five. Yeah, so we have, uh, we have how good the play is, which in this case is pretty mid, right? You just do some damage to the turret. Yeah. Like the play itself in the game of League. Yeah. And then we have style points. Which I guess is what you're referring to. Like, how yeah. hard is it? Yeah, Are you doing like some loop de loops? I have been watching a lot of um, donuts, slope style uh, snowboard events. Naturally. From the X Games recently. Um, so. His execute is on a mission. He is. They do know uh, that he is there. He is. It's Owen Wilson behind enemy lines. As Teddy uh, is going to get Blast Coned back. Um, he absorbs two ultimates and is going to be fine. So, I, I'm going to give that a 9. <laughs> <laughs> That's Fast and Furious right there. <laughs> um, I'll take your R button and your R button. Now I, I, I think I understand. What if there is a, what if the real reason why they keep picking Rakan is just because Execute plays every champion like this. They're like, on Rakan he won't die. Yeah. On Rakan he'll be okay. 
Well, let's see who can get a knockup and allow Closer to get in there. Yeah, that's Teddy. what he wants oh. to do is Satab find a bit of damage on to Execute. Execute does not care. Teddy does have is a flash available still, but do know there is no Kench. There's no guaranteed safety for this Varus. So Willer is ultimate can still be a really big thing. And again, for Teddy, if Willer finds an ult on you, you, you flash or you die. There is no, no dash, no other way to try and get out of it. I'm very interested in how this game is going to go. I don't know what's happening, Atlas. No, and I, I, I don't know who's in the best position right now. I know that there's a lot of minions being collected. These teams don't know either. That's the cool part. That's the best part. 30 seconds. We might have closer to some sort of idea as to how this one's going to go. Having a look at the damage dealt, mid laners winning out. And Teddy and Clear batting, battling for third place. It's not what I was expecting. Cassante, not exactly known for his massive amounts of damage, but has been hitting Udir a lot. Execute, not going to get chained. And Henna, benefit of Guardian, going to be absolutely fine. Now Sponge, moving on over. This is where we need to jostle for position. It's all about this trade. jostling. Right now, Firax not playing. They are not jostling. Not a lot of jostling. Execute once again, poked. Now they, they're moving into the river. And one thing the DRX does need to be careful of is grouping up too much. Because if they're all hit with that Yasuo ulti, that could be so much damage they have to deal with. Oh, look at the damage. Man. Huge. Almost got his magic shield. Oh my goodness. Oh, that brush. Oh, that Scary brush. brush. Yeah, it's pretty dangerous. But Willa is instead just going to waddle away. Anna eating some honey fruit. Should be all right. Satab dashing in. There's the grand entrance. Henna does find Rascal on the side of this fight. He's able to run away. He's not going to have the health bar to do that too many more times. Can Willa find that cask angle? They are kind of grouped up. Let's see whether they can get in there. In goes Execute in the last breath into the back line. Teddy trying to avoid it, but it's not going to work. The bot lane has been taken down. And now the flash from close. He survives somehow. And they can't even blast going to safety. That is everyone dead but Satan. And that's the problem right there. Who's going to keep old Teddy safe? No one. No. No one can keep old Teddy safe. And, and without him, DRX lacked the consistent damage. I think Rascal overstepping there, drawing the attention from his team away and trying to get something out of it. I want you to take a look at the amount of gameplay that is available to Teddy in this fight. <laughs> because it's not looking great. And this is where we um, were maybe hoping to see the different. He walks up to Auto. Look at the execute gameplay done by Execute, though, into that back line. And he's dead. Yeah. And then, oh, actually, a really good job there from Claire and Willer to also keep the rest of the team away, keep them CC, no damage being done. But the moment that you find that back line, the fight is won. And Execute actually sort of used the engage yeah. by Pleta to taxi his way in. He saw that as his opportunity to go for that counter engage. Really did look fantastic. And so maybe Execute's going to finally get uh, some of the votes that he's been looking for today. Has had uh, quite a few ups and downs on this Rakan. But so far here in game three, feels like he has got his eye in. Willa has a Lich Bane. That's a dash cannon and a cool fiery sword. Yeah, the, 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 the rocket belt makes a lot of sense because your main goal is just get in range to press R on Ted. It doesn't even need to like knock him into the right direction or anything. That's 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 optional. Just needs to get him somewhere. Yeah. So the closer can click on him. Lich Bane obviously gonna be nice for the E empowered W auto combo. And also, you know, Night Harvest is gone. That used to be great. Yep. The burst, but that, that item is no longer real. And only uh, in our hearts. he is the only magic damage on his team. And so, sort of need to build as much damage as possible. Oh, yeah. Look at those sword pen boots. He knows. Oh, yeah. Kind of love it. It's not done just yet, though. Is the. So, Closer is building Yasuo the same way that you build Yone. Is that the current Yasuo build that everyone is, uh, is doing? Or is I, that I a. There's, there's not enough Yasuo tape. Honestly, yeah. Because it's just not in that great of a spot at the moment. I feel like he still kind of wants a bit more Because does he not? I, I, I would, yeah, I think that using his passive maximally is always the best angle as they are starting this off. Yeah, Sponge in position. Can try and answer this. I imagine a turn is going to be in the minds 
of Fierex is clear, looking for that angle. On the Execute, pole. trying to get himself out of the way, but you can see Saitab, if he has them in the position that he wants them, it can look really, really good here as there's the Glacial Prison. Connects onto Closer, but they only take him down halfway. Now Rascal is running around, doing the things that he wants to do, but not really able to actually stop what Fierex is trying here as the Blade Caller comes oh, in. Oh, just steals it! Oh no, and now Teddy's trying to get these autos through clear. He's going to be able to take him down, but it's Satap that's the problem here. Oh, he takes him down as well, never you mind. Can we keep these Barons alive is the question. Well, Pletus is dead, and now there's an Udia running amok, and I think he will be able to run away. If you're a DRX fan, you'll take it. Good enough. They got something out of it. And if you're um, a Challenger fan, you'll take it because this is peak Challenger gameplay. That's Challengers, baby. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know why Fair X was like, let's just flip. Let's just let's just flip it. Yeah. Let's just flip it. It's what fine. could go wrong? Look at this. This could go wrong. Um, now it starts off as, as, as I think some calls from from Fair X are like maybe not go for this fully. Uh, but then at some point the chaos and shoes and they're like, okay, let's uh, it's just ambient damage at this point Let's just try and take it down uh, Lord Sponges comes in says absolutely not takes it down from 1100 nice fight actually especially in all that chaos But the problem is that obviously Teddy got absolutely boomed because his front yeah. line was busy doing He stuff. walked into a brush, saw a control ward walk entirely the long way around, and then clear said hi. Yeah, and then he got Cassandra. I mean, it's, he should have played Poke Varus, okay? Like, he had a yeah, great mid game, yeah. but yeah. It, <laughs> he doesn't get to do anything. Oh, and Sponge is praying. I mean, this win would mean the world to them, right? Like, this is a, a really big moment, I think, for DRX because. I mean, it could so be a 2 0 hard. week, right? Like, yep. if there is going to be a 2 0 week, it needs to be this one. And right now, they're still in control. They can still get this done. We're looking for that angle. Right now, we can see a 2,000 gold lead for Fear X. The sponge has to flash to get himself out of the way. Oh, really good Arctic Assault to avoid the cask. Big. If he dies there, that will be the end of it. Do know those Satep teleporting top. So I think they're going to let this Drake go. I think they're looking for an inner here. Yeah. And that's not the worst counter. There is no ultimate available for Will or, or Execute, so Teddy can step up a little bit as all oh, Rascal. Yeah, he is taking a lot of damage here from Henna. Blake Caller comes on forward. He's slowed down and just destroyed. They just lay it everything. He couldn't he couldn't run. Can't do that. Can't get caught like that. Because that now frees up clear. Yeah, and he can teleport up, try and stop this inner turret from falling down. Should be able to do so as now Willa finds a body slam onto Sponge. Just slightly overextended, but the hook is there from Pleta Teddy. He might be able to finally get some free hits in, but no, he has to turn because their front line melts. Two items are completed oh. here for Henna and Fear X. I think maybe that was a backbreaking play. Heartbreaking right there. Rascal going down. It's bad, but it's surmountable. But giving up multiple members. Sponge looking, I think, desperately for a play. You can see the faces of DRX as well. It was a moment that, especially with the teleport up, like, Fearx knows we can go really ham because there's no way LeBlanc joins this play. Teleport towards the wave top side. No ability for them to get to, to, to answer at all. And then, obviously, Rascal is taking over this here from Sponge. That's just wanting it too badly, right? Yeah. Look at Yasuo as well. He can join this fight at the moment notice. And then here we see That's Teddy. a gleaming quill execution. Yeah, Teddy can't walk up because he doesn't have a front line because Rascal already died. And just the Drake, it's rough, but maybe you can get back from it. But this, also giving up a bunch of free kills. Now the gold lead 5k here for Fear X. And for them, obviously, it's also a big match. They want to oh, be 100%. the front runner for that sixth place spot. Fifth, I don't think they should dream of. I don't think that the, this is the season where that happens. But sixth, that's doable. There's a really big gap between right now the KTs, the DKs of the world, and Foxes and the rest. Kwandong might be able to get up there if they yeah. keep relying on the Bull Brothers. <laughs> I still can't believe that. I've, Who I've, is here? I've, we were I've not completely ready. changed my we've, opinion. Oh, completely accepted. Completely it. changed. I've just accepted the Bull is the new prodigy Bull in the bottom him. lane because he went through. About as much trial and tribulation as an AD carry and challenger could, um, which was getting gapped. He saw so many Ilama times. come up and leave. <laughs> he was, was there, Atlas. Uh huh.
He had to watch Andil find his way towards the LCK with, without being able to join him. And finally, he does manage to do so. Hannah now has his third item, as Lord Dominic's regard is going to be collected. And you can see Willa wanting to put together a Void Staff as item number three. Or at least he has a Blighted Jewel. Now that builds into something else now as well. So he is going to build that one instead. Old Man Atlas just assuming that the Blighted Jewel is always a Void Star. Oh, silly uh, old Atlas. No, he's, doesn't know the Crypt Blooms and things like that. I love Terminus. It's such a fun item. It just feels great. It's a it's a really fun item to say. It reminds me a, li a lot of uh, Wind Force from Diablo 2, which uh, in it I'm wasn't not a great item. Well enough acquainted with with Diablo 2. It's also like it's very rare. Kind though. of if Gil Force got a makeover, even though the item like uh, in looks right, not not in what it does. It's, yeah, as X it's sad. He's gonna be taken for a walk and then put in prison. Oh dear, uh, he's dead. And That's DRX have got themselves a pick. This wait. might give them some map control. 18 seconds till Baron. Oh, this could be the angle that they were looking yeah. for. Teddy's going to shred through Nash. There is no way that they... You gotta, DRX you gotta cannot go. let them have any go. free time with this Hail Baron. Mary. Yeah, look Come at the hands. Come on, DRX. Start it up. All right, Don't clear. be afraid. He's teleported back. Does now have a Thorn Mail in his back pocket. That will be huge oh, into Teddy, Teddy, but he started. There's a control wood in the back of the pit. They need to try and do something here as Willa towards the top, and they don't have any information actually about where he is, but they wanted to go for a turn. They'll find the knockup. They get on top of Closer, but he's still alive, and into the back line he goes. Teddy evaporates. Sponge also unable to soak that damage as he tries to escape, but it does not work, and they are just magnetized to the carries of DRX, and Virex maybe, just maybe, that was Execute's plan all along. He knew Atlas. He knew. He, he knew Look, the ways. He's, he's, not even he's going for Rascal. the 1v1 into Rascal. Okay, so hear me out. What happened there is actually I, the, the, <laughs> the, the patience from DRX, the lack of patience, yeah. it comes back to haunt them because I think if they play it slower, they poke with states if they can kill him. But this is a, a semi-tank closer. He has shield though. He has a... He's got oh, a nice long wallet. Yeah. yeah. He's still going down in a matter of seconds. And with that DRX, they're going to take down the Nexus and Ooh. Fearx. A 2-1 victory and big grins on their faces as well. I believe that moves them to 2-2 two and two here in the LCK as well. That's a big scoreline for this team that we did not have a lot of high hopes for as well. And a move up to even. Feels pretty good. I believe they're still on negative one uh, as far as that game score is concerned. A 2-0 would, of course, even things out, but they are knocking on the door of that western side. Executes vibes are immaculate. Now. Oh, yeah. Just, oh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a free gamer. Oh, yeah, we almost lost. <laughs> I just got, I got solo bowler. I got podcast. <laughs> it's fine. Hey, but and stop the backs. This this turn, if, if this kills, that's it. That wind wall from closer, game winning because Teddy would have actually gotten him. Teddy would have gotten him with an arrow. Yeah. If he doesn't get to wind wall, you and, were right. And the wind wall. No, I told you, it's all about the wind wall. We saw it. I mean, the old man Yasuo would have been killed by the arrows, but then he wind walls. It's actually just the cinematic, dude. We just watched the cinematic. Closer living his anime Yasuo dreams. And Willer as well, having a pretty good game on the Gragas. I think it's so poignant that it was their former teammates, or at least players on the same roster of old, um, that used this in the LCK last. It's kind of crazy. Good old Punch and Dove. That's it's nutty. If that stat is is true, like that's just that's crazy. It sort of blows my mind. It's a feel-good story here for FRX. Uh, it's it's messy, but I think that this that's just how any win of this team is going. Oh, be. absolutely. We have already accepted that we're like a week and a half in. I thought that maybe the rebrand, maybe the change team, you know, the, the, the new members would change anything, but no, this is oh, it's worse it's, or it's, better, it's, it's, it's whatever just, you want to call it. Same team. Yeah. It's, like, it's it's still it's Sandbox, it's Lift Sandbox, it's FRX. Yeah, they haven't changed a bit, and nope. uh, I'm I'm happy to see it for DRX. I do think that today is a marked difference from how this team has looked last week. And I, I think that hopefully they can take that against their series against Bro, because there was much more to love here today than there was in their first two series combined.
Certainly was. However, sometimes Firex just comes at you with this uh, this Yasuo composition, and they find these wombo combos. I think that that was the difference maker, right? I think Teddy had a much better performance today, and I think he could have taken control if the coordination wasn't there, if they weren't following crazy execute when he goes in for his plays. But they were, and Firex made it work together. I think the, the coordination and the teamwork was really what set the difference here in this one. But redemption arcs for both Teddy and Saitab, I think that both teams have positives to look at. And for DRX, the loss still going to sting for Firex. This is really big. These are the type of matches that I think for them are 100% must wins because, again, this team is contesting against maybe a Kwangdong, maybe a Nongshim for that final playoffs spot. So getting a win here, even if it's a free game, even if it's messy, it doesn't matter as long as you get that win because we know we have seen over the last couple of years how close that race, particularly for sixth, can get in the playoffs. Yeah, we had what? Kwangdong <laughs> with uh, like 90% chance, okay. and then you need like one And then more Bro more snuck more in there. there. Yeah, last, last second. 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 I think that's what had, happened. No, no, we lost, but it was DRX. Yeah, last split it was DRX. We, had, the previous we, also split. The, we also had the Bro one. Yeah. Bro, Why they uh, made that they had, uh, uh, they had like the, the COVID swap out as well. It was like a whole thing. Yeah, no, we had some crazy. I think that's where the yeah. believers were built. Yeah. Bro believers, that's where they uh, that's where they started. And it was their first time in the playoffs as well. Still possible this time around, but for Firex, it is looking more and more likely with them leading the charge. And close is like, oh, yeah, close is losing God. his mind. He's like, I just showed everyone that I'm a Yasuo player. Oh, no. Seitab also doing a lot of damage, but that's what happens when you play the static shiv LeBlanc. Uh, you just tend to dash forward and zap people. And that happens. Henna, though, very impressive with the amount of output that he put in. Really, really good stuff. Whew, that was a roller coaster what a series. Day. It was back to back roller coaster series, although the first roller coaster kind of just fell off a cliff. This yeah, one oh, kept undulating. It, yeah, it was a bit this, of that. It was a lot. Yeah, it certainly was. And now, do you know what's. Uh, the, the thing that I really want is to hear what Huni, Wolf, and Valdez oh, you're have right. to say about this beautiful three game series. Let's throw it over to them and get some last thoughts, shall we? Thank you, casters, for your very hard work today. All six games felt like bangers today. And, well, that one was as well. We got there in the end. A Huni thumbs up for this one. Any other thoughts on this game <laughs> besides the thumbs up? I mean, there were definitely some head-scratcher moments throughout this series. There were some eyebrows that were raised and then raised again. More than like one. We, there was, like, some eyebrow alternating going on between which eyebrow was raised. Um, the draft was quite unique in that uh, Atlas called it out. You know, we were going to see, oh, Gragas come, is coming through. Like, it's very likely to be Gragas. Yeah, so it was. Uh, it got ahead. That didn't matter. Um, but then it mattered again later. Uh, very much a... <laughs> Wonky game where we didn't know, but Seitab's comfort pick is LeBlanc. Uh, they ran the Varus LeBlanc combo, um, which isn't really a thing, but it, it, it uh, I don't know, guys. It was a weird series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, overall, I mean, the draft, like, sure, like, they brought the, the comfort pick because it's game three, like, that's it. And it's like in the game, there was uh, so many things, actually, action happened that it's like, it was a lot, a lot of time, like, I was actually question mark, you know, like, I was like not able to fully understand like why we're there, but why it was like just goes of both team that actually happened. So the game was a messy and hectic and chaos, like everything. So it's just like Gragas Yasuo we known as like on the stage you just go like level, you know, eighteen or like at level sixteen. It's a pretty strong with the Zarokan as well. Yeah. That's what basically happened. Yeah. <laughs> we got there to the end. <laughs> We finally made it to the end. We actually had, I, I think, our sl our fastest game of the series, which was like 29 and a half minutes for that yeah. third one. It was uh, surprisingly fast, after all. We do have this Drake fight at 19 minutes. That did happen. Let's take a look at that and uh, show off what happened here. There were a lot of fights early on in the game, and it was like very back and forth. We didn't know who was getting ahead. And then this happened. Yeah, chasing down an Udir in the beginning of this fight as well, and then turning onto the objective itself. And then finally, we do have a little bit of action coming through, a little bit of knockups into Yasuo ults coming through. It's, it's happening. It wasn't just early game skirmishes where we did see the Yasuo get ahead. It actually happened in real life in combat. 
I mean, I think the game should have been over here. Like, in theory, they got four kill here, and they got the Drake, like, they got the, the carry, carry's got the kill, and then it was like, it really, really good for them. The game wasn't like, they were losing, they actually stomp on team fight. Yeah, I feel like a lot of this game, I, we're, we're being like, really, we're, we, this game kind of boomed all of us, to be honest. <laughs> A lot of like it's been what, a long night. A lot of what happened between our highlights is the parts that we are not showing, or the parts that you know did make us question uh, our sanity a little bit. But this fight was good. We did see execute get the knock up there, follow up there from closer. He, he uh, did expose himself as a bit of a Yasuo guy, uh, but that's okay. They got massively ahead, but then we saw huge overextensions, big mistakes um, from Firex DRX. Look like maybe they're coming back into the game. They're able to secure a Baron. And then, yeah, and then we had another Baron happen. You know, the execute, he got caught. We're like, uh-oh, that's, you know, maybe the fourth time this has happened. Just backing on a ward, you know, maybe thought he cleared a lot. There's a lot of room here around this Baron pit, to be fair, but he gets caught. And then DRX say, this is our chance. Yeah, I mean, it is really chance for DRX, but, like, I think the, the decision making, like, especially both teams, like, it was like, even first Baron and second Baron, like both teams, they just don't have any clear play. Like, sure, DRX actually chose to the dead they turn, but like, like it was not really coordinated. It was like so far away from the carries. I think they're still hitting. Like, at least if they're if they're on a turn, like actually Virus need to come ASAP and just yeah. try to auto. Like he's so far away, and it's like the, the also. I mean, I I think the also the wheeler actually just is pressuring on the side was good. The wind wall was good, and there are trying to expose the Yasuo, but it wasn't. So it's just it's just an easy yeah. result. And as you pointed out, the wind wall is so good, it actually keeps him alive. And that is really critical. That's part of the reason why they're able to just execute Teddy instantly there. And I think the call to turn off Baron should have been much faster, should have been much more decisive because you know execute isn't there in the initial part of the fight. You have that advantage. You have the uh, like positional advantage as well, where you can push through, but they just kind of split between we're holding Baron and we're turning. Teddy's trying to just get that snipe cue and it's blocked. And the second that's blocked, everything falls apart. This game was on such a knife's edge that that win wall might have actually been the deciding factor whether or not DRX wins this series or Firex wins this series. It's actually insane. It actually all came down to that. And it was uh, it was very back and forth. Firex did have like a nice gold lead. It was like 5,000, 6,000 gold and they were in a good spot, but 4v5 to win in that manner. Uh, really put the nail in the coffin. Let's take a look at the POG for game number three on the side of Firex after this victory. Will be closer on the Yasuo. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just today is like as a Firex, it, it is like a really good takeaway that closer is still really be able to perform it in this battle, especially like a Kelly and Yasuo, like also with the Gragas combo. Like, I think there it has a really, really good flexibility, but I think also it's shown the same thing in the weaknesses, like what. The VRX actually has it, so I think there's just so many takeaway for VRX that for looking forward to the next step to be able to go west, west team, even though they are beating the east team, doesn't. I, I don't think they're gonna be satisfied. I mean, right now, what we are kind of internally, as as the three of us are calling, is like the prime meridian of the LCK. Like crossing that right now is gonna take some time. I think some of these eastern teams maybe um, need a Christopher Columbus to, to pioneer the way across. Is ends up being a split vote here. Uh, Huni and I were kind of feeling that like Gragas was high impact. I think the Yasuo vote deserved, especially with that wind wall play. Um, some top votes. Yeah, I actually thought it was okay. I mean, I wouldn't have voted for him, but execute yeah, I think it was vote okay. From Chronicler. Yeah, the execute vote, it was good until it wasn't, so I was kind of surprised that he actually went for that. But uh, yeah, just kind of lone wolfing it here is Chronicler uh, this time around. So yeah, pretty interesting. Nice split. I, I think as a team, a lot of the fights were, you know, when you're playing Yasuo Gragas, it's a lot of like combos. Everybody's got to be in on it. So, you know, you just pick any one of the engaged champions, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, basically, I mean, also for DRX, I think it's like, it's a really tough it's tough lose, but like, I think they actually tried it. And I think I said, at least like for sets, I think he, I think he find us comfort jam. I think it's a be really important for him to be spend more time on the stage. And I think he can actually still perform and still he get pick up the one POG. I think that's kind of big credit too. Yeah, he proved it. I mean, at least he was able to ultimately prove that he can play LeBlanc. He's not going to lose his confidence. You, you made a really great point after the second game. Like, 
to actually lose that hard and then bounce back and pick up POG, that's really difficult for new players to do. He showed his resilience a lot. Yeah, I think it's a good sign. You know, I don't know if DRX are going to be on top of the standings at the end of this, but, uh, you know, development in some of these newer players is always good to see. But guys, we do have the interview ready to go, so let's hand that over to Jisun for the translation. Thank you very much, guys. This is Jisun for the POG interview translation. Today, we are here joined by Closer, the solo POG on the side of Fear X. Congratulations! How do you feel about the win today? I think like, I haven't played many matches so far, but it was like the hardest one so far as well. So I really wanted to win and I'm so happy and relieved that we managed to win out the last game and secure the series. Closer, you are actually uh, showing a very high prefer uh, preference for Azir on the mid lane, but today you decided to throw some curve balls, for example, like Kali and Yasuo. Tell us about the mid lane picks. Well, I was expecting a Kali to be removed in the second phase of the bend, but it was let through. So I was pretty happy to just lock it in. You are winning the lane and then in the end even getting a solo kill. So let's take a look at this replay together. How did you calculate this kill? I knew Maokai was not that close enough to save Azir, so as long as I can, you know, go in full combo onto the Azir, it would be really easy to secure the kill. And then, game two, Azir got another loss, so it was a back to back loss for Azir today. And Azir so far in the LCK Spring is on a seven game losing streak. Azir is known to be really strong in lane, but why do you think it's causing Azir to not actually win the game? I think Azir has a lot of counter pick, you know, and Azir is not really good at kind of fighting into those counter picks, and he's not really that versatile in terms of dealing with those picks that can shut him down. And then we had Yasu Gragas Comp on the side of Leap's um, Fear X, excuse me. Tell us about the drafting. I mean, today we were just full on aggressive playstyle mode, you know, that was the plan for today. And that is something we prepared for the match today. So as long as uh, we knew that we are in a good spot to go for that Yasu Gragas duo, we were just gonna, you know, go for it. And it was definitely a very fun game to watch. Closer, we had a very split vote in game number three POG. I think that kind of reflects the fact that all five players were doing a fantastic job. Who would you like to choose as your POG in game three? Henna? Because he was so stable throughout three games today. I thought he deserved POG. In fact, I really wished we could share POG maybe. And he was doing a, such a sustained and reliant performance today so that we were able to get the win. And in fact, just like you mentioned, this series was not easy for Fear X. What would you like to focus on in terms of improvements for the team? Because it's pretty early in the season, our teamwork is not you know, completely built, but we are all working together in order to become stronger as a team, so please keep supporting us. And Fear X is going up against Nongshim Red Force in the upcoming match. Nongshim has become even stronger than last year. What is your mindset head heading into that match? I really wish we can start off a winning streak by taking down Nongshim Red Force. And this will be the end of the interview with Closer and back to the space. Thank you. Thank you, Jisun, as always, for that awesome translation. Great to hear from Closer. Interesting that he chose Henna as the POG, the one guy who didn't get any votes, but I guess knowing a little bit more about what's going on in the inner workings in the team, so pretty uh, interesting angle there. Let's take a look at the standings after this match and see where we do stand. We are just, I mean, we you can draw a line right from the left part of that D directly down between the west and the east. And I feel like we have never seen a more defined east side 
and west side than we have seen this season. It is actually insane. Who can cross the line? Hungry mm -hmm. Freaks. The they, huge they line. They defeated KT. Well, I mean, as I said, <laughs> that even, that even the PRX is at top of the Eastern right now. Like, I still see, like, there is a lot big gap between even, like, KT or, like, anyone else, right? So, well, I mean, at least Guangdong, Guangdong Freaks just took down the KT. So, I'm kind of looking forward to see if they can actually make 2-2. And let's see how it goes, you know? Yeah, I mean, let's see. At, at this point in time, I do agree. I, I do think the Quantum Freaks win was a little bit of a fluke. You know, Bull coming up, super overperforming. That was very interesting to watch. And tomorrow is going to be really awesome because we have Saturday Showdown, which is Genji versus DK. Two really strong teams on the west side. Genji looking like maybe our strongest team right now with T1, of course. And DK, you know, trying to punch up with that. But then also Quantum Freaks going up against Nongshim. And Nongshim, they took a rough loss, but they're kind of getting better and better. Quantum Freaks showing off their new stuff. It's going to be a fun day tomorrow. Yeah, Nongshim also taking out DRX with a clean win earlier on last week. So, I mean, I think this this one could go either way. Quantum Freaks bounced back in a big way at the beginning of this week. So, uh, it could be, you know, one of our closest days yet. It's hard to top today, obviously. We had some wild games, but I think tomorrow will also be awesome. Yeah, I mean, for the last, the, the places of the, the playoff that like participated you know, the, from the Eastern team, I think it's going to be really, really close. We still, I don't think, can easily figure out. And I think it's going to be really fun if Guangdong Freaks also take a two wins and B rivalry, you know, like there's a, so many teams that it's going to be 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, it's going to be really fun there in the middle. We'll just have to see how it all does shake out. But we are done here on The Space and at the LCK. Thank you so much for watching. Remember that tomorrow starts two hours earlier, as it always does on the weekends here at the LCK. And we'll see you then. Have a good night.를 시작하고 나서 이제 첫 번째 미드라이너였는데 우승은 다음은 기아입니다. 잘하는 선수여가지고 같이 해서 좋았다 이런 생각했습니다. 큰 변화를 주고 싶다라는 생각이 들었고 그래서 이적하게 됐습니다. 항상 아군이었는데 적군으로 맞는다니까 좀 감회가 새롭고 하지만 크게 의식하지 않고 저희의 플레이 잘해서 이겨보도록 하겠습니다.